God eftermiddag och hjärtligt välkommen till Trackmania World Tour. It's a world tour. We're speaking several languages. Do you want to do okay. your introduction in Danish or are yeah, we going to go for English? Yeah, men välkommen alla samman. Det är fantastiskt att se er. I did not know. You did not tell me he was he did not tell me. I did, we I don't I, I like the element of this, surprise. This bit was not planned, but no. okay, sure. <laughs> there you go. I like the thing about being a streamer and a caster is you can always let the intrusive thoughts win, and mm-hmm. whatever happens will be entertaining. Which is great for the co-caster when he gets absolutely nothing told. Overwhelmed, and you, you just have to wing it, whatever yeah. I give you. So, speaking of wings, speaking of chicken wings, uh, we have some delicious, some great games on the platter today. Yeah, 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 I mean, I agreed. I, we're gonna have to see if these players they're gonna, uh, you know, just take the plate, eat all, eat all the food, you know, get get the bread, well, or if, or if they're gonna send it back <laughs> to the kitchen here. <laughs> what you really don't want to do is drop the platter, but you do want to let these players cook. Look at this list of games we have coming up today: Solary versus Sinners, Casey versus Big, BDS versus G One, and then a double match of today. Yes, That's and that a rarity. And, and and that is because KC could not play any matches the last week. Um, so they actually did play a match. What was it? Friday? They played Friday. They, it was KC versus Sinners. Yeah, and KC did get that win. Actually, they did. They won four one, which also does mean that Sinners uh, lost for a second time, which is unfortunate. But I mean, they have their redemption arc coming up today. They're playing against Solary, as you can see, uh, for the first game of the day, and that's going to be interesting. I mean, you're playing against the defending champions from the last season of Trekmania World Tour. You're already down 2-0. Solary have aced their first two games, so that's going to be very tough. Yeah. We'll see if they can do something there. It is an underdog story for Sinners if they can uh, sneak out a win. Uh, yeah, and then we have uh, KC and Big playing together at six, and that's going to be a very cool match. I think this is one of the most equal matches of the day. I think KC and Big are going to ma- probably go to map seven if, if like my assumptions are correct. And the thing there is, we've seen such a prepared big this season, and we also have the story of KC not being that prepared yeah. with the health issues coming through. So, you know, th- this is like a, I think a battle of the prep, but the skill of the players is very equal, equally matched. Yeah, but I, I mean, maybe KC has some momentum coming in from a victory just a few days ago, and that could True. also uh, play an effect. Then we have BDS and G1 at 7 p.m. Uh, two very, very very good uh, teams. They they did astonishingly great in the last season. BDS came out on second place. Uh, G1 did semifinals, right? Was that not where it was? Yeah, ended up? G1 did lose the semis against Solary, and so, then Solary went to the finals against yes. BDS. So uh, both these teams, incredibly good teams, some of the top teams of the entire season, so that's going to be an amazing game. And uh, finally, we have what? Two matches of the day. It's Into the Breach versus Alliance, and then, without looking at my cheating notes here, BDS versus KC. So KC playing twice today, uh, and the same goes for BDS. They're playing two games today. And I mean, you you gotta assume the second game they play. That's the that's the so the first game they could say that's a warm up game in case they lose. <laughs> ah, that's the warm up for the day, and then they that's come true. back second game, right? I think the the exhausting thing for BDS is they're playing against D1, who's only played seven games so far. Like they've only yeah. played best of sevens, like all the distance. So, but guys, uh, if you're brand new to Trickmania Esports, you watch this channel for a couple of day, and you watch it for me playing RPGs, whatnot, and you have no idea what this is. Or, and for my cameos. And for the Dana cameos. Let's just run you through the format a little bit, what's happened already, so you're up to speed with everyone else, and then you can enjoy this beautiful eSport. So, so far, let's take a look at the standings in the league. They've played two weeks of games, every team except KC, who's only played one. Uh, and the standings is Big Clan and Solary, the top two there, Danik. Yeah, I mean, big clan. Seeing them top two is uh, is incredible it's compared to like. Nice so going into the the stage two, they were actually at the bottom of the of the total leaderboard for the entire World Tour season. Yeah. Uh, so it's great seeing them in the top. Seeing Solary there on second place is kind of expected as well. Mm. They didn't do as well last season during the actual stages, but uh, now they're showing up early. Yeah, and then you have Alliance and G One both having played two games, drawing those. Uh, this one is not fully up to date as Carmine Corp should have a 1 0 scoreline there. And then BDS losing one game, but um, it was a very close game against G1. Uh, and Sinners should have a 0 2 and Into the Breach. Unfortunate start for them, 0 and 2. Yeah, I think bottom. Sinners might be at the bottom with that 0 2 because they lost one more map. Yeah. Um, but either way, like, it's not going to matter too much. Uh, I think. KC would still be number five, either way, if you put that win in, and then just switch the positions of Sinners and Into the Breach. Either way, uh, there's a lot of comeback for ITB today, because they did really well last season. I think they can do really well today. They're going to have a great game today, I think, as well. But Sinners is the one I hope see 
get a win. Yeah, it's it's a tough win, but maybe they can sneak it out. Let's talk about the way you can win a game in the Trackmania esports scene. The format we have, I think, is here to stay. So if you memorize it now, you'll know it forever. Uh, you play best of seven maps. On each map, to win a map, you have to score 10 points. And these are the different ways you can score points. Yeah, you can get first and second place. That's called an ace, where your team just dominates. You get first and second, you get the three total points and your opponents get zero. This is the best thing you can do because you take away all of the points your opponents can get. Yeah, but a victory where you get first and third with your teammate and the opponent sneak in second and fourth, you get two points, they get one, and then a draw where one team gets first and fourth and the other gets two and three, like a sandwich, one, one, yep. you get equal. So you just play rounds repeatedly until a team gets to 10 and then you go to the next map. And soon we're gonna have the first pick and ban between Solary and Sinners. And the maps yep. are very important, which team uh, gets an edge, you know, going into that game. Yeah, because teams obviously have maps they prefer more than others. They might have uh, some sort of strategy coming into what the other team thinks they're they're good at, whatever, you know. So here we have uh, Solary and Sinners on screen. You can see we have Pac and Call Jr. there on the left side, Tween and Kapo on the right side. They all look happy to be here, honestly. They do. Now, I have a very interesting stat about this uh, lineup of players. It's actually a repeat of the 2018 World Cup final. Oh. Back then, it was played in solo, so every player was, you know, for themselves. These were the four best players in the world at the time. And in that final, uh, it was Kappa winning ahead of Tween, actually. So Sinners oh. did beat Pac and, and Carl Jr. in that final four years That's ago. That's cool. But the format changed, the maps have changed since then, and Pac and Carl, I think, have held their standard a bit better than Twin, Tween and Kappa, although they're all formidable. I gotta ask you, though, do you think that that's uh pack's head on his body or do you think that that's another <laughs> body on pack's head these are the questions we are not supposed to ask okay? we're supposed to smile and wave and not talk about how the hot dogs are made okay okay that is correct also there is an <laughs> there is a little bit of an extra announcement uh, which doesn't ex actually have to do with the esport but is very interesting for trackmania as a whole and that is tomorrow virtual big day big day the console release of the game is coming out tomorrow free to play if you got a PlayStation 5, an Xbox One, or the Lunar thing, which I'm not quite sure how it works. I don't know how that works either. But, but either if you way, have a console, you can download the game for free tomorrow. Uh, you can also pay for it if you want and get a yeah. couple of day and stuff, but try it out if you haven't. It's a great game. Uh, there's a reason we all love it and are willing to put yeah. in thousands of hours. It's like, I think tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, CEST. Ooh, okay. So Long tomorrow, early. tomorrow morning is when you should be uh, playing the game and watching it on Twitch. I... Just gotta call my work and say I'm sick, I think. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, tomorrow, 10 a.m.? No, sorry boss, can't make it. <laughs> <This> <laughs> I got is the very, worst very... flu right now, and oh god, yeah. You can tell the screen is tearing apart with how sick we're getting in the studio. But guys, picks and bans are coming up. Let's take a look at the first game. Solary versus Sinners. The expectation is that Sinners are the favorites going into it, but we like... know, oh, sorry, Solary are the okay. favorites going into yeah, it. Was... <laughs> but anything can happen here. If Sinners get a couple of good maps, and if uh, Solary have some crashes like we've seen, mm -hmm. uh, then, you know, things can change. It could. And I mean, Sinners, they are looking to at least win one game, right? Because yeah. they, they really want to not get that 0-7-0. Zero, uh, seven, zero. Yeah. Zero, seven. Like seven losses in a, in a season, it does not look great. So it is it is tough going in against Solary, the winners of last season. But I don't think they're. I don't think they've given up hope. I think they're gonna give oh, it their all. Tween and Kappa have such strong mental fortitude that they're gonna play until the last uh, rounds I've been played. Now we see. Press this button so that the viewers have sound. Oh, that is a great spot. As we're getting the first couple of bands in, Janik, maybe you can talk a little bit about those. Yes, we have Airwalk and Sinuous Band. A fun stat is that Sinuous has not been played a <laughs> single played time. At all. One time, Sinuous was supposed to be played, but the game ended before we got to the match. And that's see. the only time we've had the chance to see it. We see actually a Vortex first pick from Solary, and usually they go for Control. In their first two games, they've played Control first pick, but here they're opting for Vortex. Uh, all the maps have uh, identities to them and characteristics. Mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't heard about them, you're gonna learn soon enough. Like, oh, Vortex is the one with the pipe. Uh, Vortex is the, the one with, one with the all jumps. the moving, moving aspects to it. Yeah, one of my favorite maps, and that looks like it was called Junior and Pack that picked that. Yeah. So now the response. Now, Tween and Kappa tried uh, Speed. Yeah, Speed is one okay. of their better maps. They tried that against KC, 
but unfortunately they crashed too much. They lost that map. It's one of their best. Grip the answer. I think classic Solary here, and they might go for control as their third. Uh, we see breaking though, trying to put Carl and Pack a bit off their, their usual elements, but control likely to be the answer. I think control, they also did really good. Or pool. <laughs> that, yeah, like the, the pool. most simple maps. Just put I, them on the simple map. Um, we're going to have to see what they pick here, but control is a really good one for them. I think off-road pack did really well on as well, if I remember correctly. Mm, true. Oh, and you actually do call that out. Off-road the choice. And now tween and couple get their last pick of pool and control the random. So we will hopefully see all of those maps in this match. A best of seven. Get this some more this Techmania, actually, like in my opinion, looks really good for uh, Solary. I think they got exactly what they wanted. They banned out uh, Sinuous and Airwalk, which is good. So I think they're they're pretty they're they're pretty set. I wonder if that off road pick was because they kind of knew out of the remaining maps, Sinners are likely to favor Pool anyways. So you yeah. just get more of the good stuff. But that will be the pick and ban. We're starting on Vortex. You can see it here in the preview on the stream. It is a uh, very wild map with a lot of elements and tricks to it that we've seen the players come up with. Different philosophies on how it's played. Some players opt for a bug slide through that one part, and I don't know if people have picked it up yet. I don't, yeah, so I think the, the, the low airtime jump is a, it's more consistent, and I think it is just about as fast. So I think that's what we're going to see the players do, but we did see, was it, uh, was it Big that came up with that strat, or was it ITB? I can't quite remember. It, I was, think it was ITB, right? ITB were the first to de de debut it in the league, and they were the only team that had it. But then in the Challenger League, we actually saw Dexter and Scrappy oh. uh, being the second team to really experiment with it. But I think if we're going to see a team adopt yeah, it... Yeah, here we go. It looks like Sinners yeah. <laughs> are adopting it. They went for that wide line on the dirt. Oh, oh but no. they they Okay, so they opt for a wide line on the dirt and then not go for the jump bug slide, which is a, a series of... of Inputs that does not seem like it goes together, but if they if they favor it, that's you know they're the pro players, right? They are the pros. Uh, just to explain the start here, they're driving onto a moving disc because they're not allowed to steer the car for the first uh, segment of the map until they cross the checkpoint. So that's why you see them go to that moving disc, hit the reset, and then they can steer the car. Jumping up this quarter pipe, we are live in the first game of the day. Get some hype in the chat. Maybe a prediction for the team you think you're going to uh, is going to win this game. But then, as Janik mentioned here, you see two different philosophies from the teams where Tween and Kappa go outside on the dirt for more speed into this corner. They also have more speed here, but then they do not go for the bug slide. They just do a low jump, and they kind of end up equal to uh, Carl and Pack. It does look like it's equal, and I think the reason they go wide is because it sets them up easier for the low jump into the reactor boost. But it, it's got to be something that they've practiced. They, they must have figured out this is more consistent for us. That's why we're doing it. But once again, you can see Pac do what Pac does the best and be in the front lines ahead of Call Jr. Trying to risk everything to make sure he gets first place. Call Jr. playing the anchor for the team, trying to secure second, third. That's a fast um, anchor. <laughs> and that is a fast anchor right now. Oh, there goes Pac. But the anchor also keeps the team safe here. Uh, Solar, you might have gotten... Uh, Ace action had it not been for Carl trying to save that identity, the pipe, and he does stay on making this first round a draw. But it's still a great time. Oh. It's a 105x, right? That's what we want to see the players do. Uh, hopefully, 105s are going to be the winning times. But Pack, he was 0.2 ahead, I think. So yeah, great can... time from Pack. You, you guys can see the world record here, live world record on the screen, top left. If you're ever curious, a 105.313 by Mudda. Yeah, and I think th this identity is so uh, visually impressive because you're driving on a pipe, and as if that isn't hard enough, you have a moving wheel that will push you off of it, uh, or try to, and you have to uh, react and answer to that by controlling your car back onto the pipe. So, Tween crashing on the first one here, leaving Kappa in a 1 versus 2 against Carl Pack, but now he has to lead from that oh, no. outside line. And this looks like it might be a... Uh, ace fed to Solary on a silver spoon. They can just be uh, just cruising, cruising to the finish line without any major mistakes. You can see Pack also saving that turn to an incredible extent, letting his teammate get a little bit further ahead. Oh, oh, there's a slight actually, mistake. I don't think it's going to lose. Seconds, yeah, that's not going to lose the full. Okay, yo, <laughs> no, he's, he's still fine. He's still fine. He can save the identity as well. Let's take a look at Carl Jr., how he approached this with a strong lead. Just going to. 
react appropriately to how the pa pipe pushes him. But Pack is respawned again here, actually. And is passed by Kappa, so the ace does not come through. Carl delivering another 105. But uh, Solary definitely could have had more in these first two rounds than what they yeah, got. Yeah, it's never fun throwing away like a, a free ace. But as we've said before, these, these maps are not easy to just get through. Victory. The, the pros make it look easy. You just cruise through the maps. They look like they got it all down and figured out. And of course they do. They have many hours of practice. But that, that doesn't mean that the maps are free still. They're still very, very difficult maps to drive well. And I remember going into the season, we thought this was going to be one of the hardest maps. But then yep. we saw every player acing the pipe uh, yep. almost every time. We were like stunned by the consistency these players were able to get out of what I still think is one of the hardest maps. But uh, th they're making it look easy most of the time. Here again, the outside line. Is this something we're going to see more teams do? They do get more speed, but now they have to release so much yeah. to get that reactor. And so they I'm don't, not sure. They don't do the ramp cut either. Like they, I, I don't know if that's on purpose, but they don't try to go for the lowest airtime possible. That might also be a consistency, but it's nice to see Carl Jr. Yeah, off, he's driving the point sevens and uh, in front of his Ooh. teammate Pack, they're Pack <laughs> almost flying off the, off the pipe as well. We're seeing Carl uh, more active today up front, definitely driving faster than Pack in some of these rounds, which, and I mean, hey, if if Pack is driving slower, you don't have to slow down at all for that. But Carl has found just very steady pace here, and this could be an ace. Pack is holding off against Kappa, and they will take three points there to Sinner's zero in that round. Yeah, six, six to two. two. That's a positive... Uh a positive start for Solary, but it was also expected that, you know, when you first pick a map, that, that team usually tends to win that map, right? Because it is the map you feel the most comfortable with. It's the map that you feel we're going to win this against the opponents. So there is a high likelihood that Solary would have won this map due to them, you know, first picking it. Yeah, and they do have a strong lead. Four points is going to be tough for Sinners to catch. They might need to hope for more mistakes on the pipes. Like we saw Pack clipping a few times. But Carl has not shown any signs of weakness, and he will continue oh. to drive clean up front there. Pack slowing down a little bit, but coming back with a lot of speed. They could look for a second ace here against Sween as he gets a slowdown into the water landing. Now about a one second gap to the two solary players. And this is once again a far enough gap for Pack and Carl Jr. to slow down a little bit. At least try to save. Maybe don't go as tight as you possibly can here. You can see Pack, he actually drives over the little triangle that he could have clipped on, but. Uh, with that being said, Carl Jr. and Pack first and second, oh. looking for oh, Pack. That was a little bit wonky, but he makes it through nonetheless, securing the ace for the team. That's a scary balancing action. Look at the, look at this from uh, Carl, driving a 1055, still flawless, like still a clean sheet on the track, no crashes. Maybe, uh, maybe Vortex is where they've decided to reverse the situation and make Pack uh, an anchor and Chris Carl might feel super confident. And like the, the thing that is easy to forget with the dynamic that Solary has is like how good Carl Jr. really is. It's often easy to get deceived and think Pack is the carry and Carl's just sitting on his back the entire match. Carl is the most winning, the GOAT, the world champion five times of Trackmania, and if he wants to, he can very well take that role himself and carry Pack as he's doing right now on Vortex. Uh, and if he's found the flow on this, which is very much looks like he had passed, then it is going to be very hard to stop him for anyone. And you also got to remember here that Sinners, they cannot afford to get anything but first and second place. They need to oh. overtake Call Jr. now. It does not matter if Call gets second. He just needs any point for the team. So first and second for Call Jr. is fine. Tween and Kaba, they need to overtake him. Yeah. And it is looking difficult. Maybe he makes a mistake, but that's about what they have to hope for here. But Call Jr. once again makes Loss. ease of the identity. And that's going to be map one going to Solary. Carl there winning four out of four possible rounds too. First place every single time, no crashes, every run under 106. That's just really stunning consistency. That's Clutch Jr. as we know him. Solari just wins the track. Solari wins, Solari the, track. Solari wins the track. What do you think of Sinner's chances here now, Janik, on their map pick? Sinner's? Yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> you Solari already played so well, so Sinner's might have a, a good chance on their first pick too, right? Yeah, I mean, true, true, true. I think Sinners obviously will have picked this due to their due to their feeling of, of security on it. It's also a map that we've seen this. This is the second least shown map 
I think, so yeah, far, right? Yeah, speed is very uh, underplayed. And yeah. I don't remember if we've seen Pack and Carl Jr. on it. I don't think we no, have. No, this will be their first so appearance. So it's going to be hard to say wh which of them are going to take it home. I think, uh, obviously, uh, you can never really count Carl and uh, Pack out, but... So uh, yeah, the one thing about this map, which is uh, interesting, is a lot of pro players actually don't like it. Uh, just straight up. They don't like the map because it's a very basic road map. And um, there are these turns here where you drive over this yellow no brakes block. So at this point, you can't hit the brake button. And so you just have to release in turns. And it becomes this very sim racing NASCAR playstyle. And a lot of them don't like it. We like our Trek Mania with our drifts, with our, you know, slide cancels, etc. So. Uh, it's quite basic on the driving aspects, and that makes the rounds very close. But I also think that that's why both of the teams kind of favor it, because it reminds them most of old-school playstyle. Yeah, but then you also have this incredibly precise identity on the map. Uh, the obstacle part at the end here, you drive through a slalom, giving you a bit of an appetizer for what's to come, down the hill here, and then you have to speed through on the inside of every pillar, at almost full speed, Kappa and Tween on their own oh map my looking God. for an ace, but Carl will get in between them and make it a regular victory. But Tween and Kappa showing up here and Pack with another crash. Pack has not gotten off to a great start here. No, today Pack has actually been the one in the back of Solary's team, but that does not mean that Pack by any means is slow. I think it's just Carl Jr. has the consistency. That's why he's the five-time world champion as well, right? He knows how to play maps without making any major mistakes, and that's what keeps him up in that second or third position. Not always on first, but definitely always there to fight for it. And an interesting stat too, last week when Solary played, uh, they first beat Control, and Pac crashed the first three rounds of Control against Yeah, that's EDS. true. But then he kept winning, winning, dominating, winning. So, Pac might be, uh, you know, taking a bit to heat up the oven before he starts cooking, but now it looks like he is prepared to make a dish with Carl here. That is of Michelin quality. Tween and Kappa on their own choice, being left trailing point two behind before that identity, but... Carl oh, I think Carl lost a gear yeah, there. Yeah, it looked like... Um... So some of you guys might not know, but gears are incredibly important in Trackmania. And if you eat the gears in certain turns, it's going to lose a lot of your speed. And that's what happened to Carl Jr. But he is able to get up Ooh. to that second place again. And we might see an ace, but everybody's so close pack to crashed. each other. Pack did a small touch. Kappa trying to overtake Carl Jr. Tween there in the backhand. Carl Jr. maintain the lead, and he does. Kappa getting that second place is going to end up in a draw. Unfortunately, Pack did just a slight, slight touch. Yeah. And that is enough to fall all the way back there in the ending. And the sp you have so little space to work with. Like, you, you drive that slalom enough times in practice, spend several hours on it, the space will still be so slim to work with that crashes can happen in matches. But Carl, even on this map, he hasn't made a single crash yet. The first mistake we saw really was dropping that one gear yeah. in the plastic landing. That's his first mistake of the match. So Sinners are uh, keeping up with Carl, but he is just driving a great match right now. And, and I mean, even though he now. dropped that gear, he got he got second, right? So uh, he almost got third, but due to the identity being very precise, you can risk that identity so much, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. near, I think you can full speed it. I've seen players nearly full speed it. Once if you have full speed that, you yeah. you have so little wiggle room to work with <laughs> yes. though, in terms of the turns. But Mental. Here Kappa we, yeah. has a chance. I mean, we see them once again, really, really driving close to each other, almost in tandem here from the fir from the three players on top. Tween is a little bit be behind. A drag race to the finish line here between the pillars. Oh. Pack once again, crashing oh. up the Kappa has made a small mistake. Tween though, catching up to Carl. Oh, almost have it, but he's crashed out. And will that be Pack sniping it? Will because of the cruise control block that is Solary taking a win, equalizing the scoreline, four to four. Four to four. I mean, that's just how difficult this identity is. I've, I've driven it as well. I have yet to be driving it fast. I will. I always super safe it. You play as a matchmaker and you slow down to like 300 speed and just yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and granny stroll it between the pillars. Well, it's better to slow down a little bit and not touch anything than it is to drive face first into a pillar. But th that's just not a luxury that these players have in like the highest level of esports. They no, don't have <laughs> that luxury of slowing down just a little bit. They have to full send. When you're playing as Carl, who's willing to almost full speed it and drive 104 is consistently here. That's tough. And you know what is even more fascinating is he does that in camera three, where yeah. he cannot see his car's wheels. He just has such a good feeling in that camera of where his car is positioned that he can 
use that space. Yeah, he's very happy that that alternate cam 3 became a thing, because in the start of Trackmania 2020, that was not a camera that was available in the game. Ooh, yeah, you true. were forced to look at your wheels. Look at that line from Tween. He jumped so wide, but the speed is still there for him to fight with Pac, and we hope to see a clean run from Pac now. Has yet to make this identity work. Tween up ahead of him, but Pac now pushing, getting a clean slot Ooh. on the star, and that is a very well-executed identity. And it looks like he no. got beat by Tween on the line, though. Missed that on the Observer, but Tween stealing that one away and Sinners go up into the lead. They can take their own map here. Oh, they definitely can. And I think this is what we want to see from Sinners. This is where Sinners are shining. They have just a few maps that they've been practicing a lot. And this is obviously one of them. We haven't seen Sinners either on this map. So this might be one of those maps where they keep it in the back pocket. They keep it up their sleeve and then throw it out once they face a team that they think we have to use our ace card. And I think this is one of their ace cards. Yeah, this is really a, uh, a strong map for them. Did play it in that Friday match against KC, but they actually lost it uh, with oh, yeah, a yeah, lot no, of mistakes. So uh, here we're seeing a very clean performance so far. Close round again, but we know that Slalom is likely going to decide the round. But uh, if you build up a lead here in this downhill, maybe getting a better gear and the landing, etc., you could have more space to work with. And it looks like Carl again losing a little bit of speed in this section. And now look at Tween, as last time he jumped out very wide here, but still gets a lot of speed to work with from that. That's a tenth that he now has before the final oh, part touches on the inside. Touch. And Solary could ace this. Yeah, they could, but it's definitely not trivial just to drive through this without touching oh, anything. But it does like look they like they it. make it happen. One more right-hander, and that's Solary taking the ace, jumping up to eight points, and now that's pressure on Sinners. Yeah, that's a, a very well punished round from him. Uh, Solary there, when Sinners crash before the entity, they see the splits and they slow down a little bit, but still secure an ace, eight to six. And that's like, uh, that's a thing that people overlook. Um, the ability to just see opportunities and have such an, an overview of what's happening during the match that you can make split second decisions on whether or not to save, to uh, to risk what the, what the approach is. And I think Solary is really good at that. Oh, they have 100% awareness of what the opponents do. They're gonna know that that tween crash is Gonna be shown on the splits and Kappa now one versus two. He actually has to get <laughs> sorry out of both of them. Yeah, but they're, they're driving in tandem once again. They're driving shoulder to shoulder. They are just full on solidarity in the lead. Solary showing how it's done. Sinner's still not out of it yet. Kappa could overtake, and we've seen the identity take a lot of first places away. This has to be heroics, though. He has to get two tenths on two world champions, but he is a world champion himself. Gonna try to push this now. Knows he has to get ahead of both of them. That's gonna be almost mm. ahead of pack, but he crashed out in the attempt, and Solary will go up two to zero in this match. A great time from Carl as well. Close it out, 104.4. Carl Jr. really doing well today. Like, he's shown up. I, I, he might have just been tired of people saying that he was the anchor of the team, and now he's like, today, I'm going to show you guys. Carl's player, like, you, you see one Reddit comment that's like, oh my god, this guy is an idiot, right? Well, who does he think I am? And then he's like, okay, you know what? I'll show you. Yep. I'll Just just for you, I'll drive, like, I'll, I'll be the carry this time. And I'm, I'm, but that also goes to show to every other team that's watching, because of course the other teams, they're practicing as well, but they're also making, uh, you know, they have attention to what's happening in the games. They want to know which teams can do what maps, what new strategies there might be in play. Um, and of course, they're taking a look here at Solary and noticing just how fast Call Jr. can be on some maps. He's not always the one you, uh, you see in the back. He is also a frontliner if he wants to be. He very much so is. We're going on to Grip, and this is a map where Sinners uh, infamously did not have the line in week one when they play the first game here. There's a racing line that saves about three tenths in the middle of the track. And without that, you really don't have a fighting chance against any of the other teams in the league here. So they have put that into their repertoire now, giving them a much better chance against Solary, but it is still hard. This is the turn yeah. we're talking about and Kappa has crashed it between up in the lead ahead of the two Solary players. And he has to maintain that lead to hopefully deny Solary as many points as possible. Call Junior and Pat, it is their map pick though. Solary did pick this map, so you would assume that it's because they've practiced it quite a lot. It is easy to make a mistake here, slide out or touch a wall, but all the players get through it. And now for the identity where you want to drive close to about 190 oh, to 200 tween. speed. 
driving on those two outside wheels just with enough speed to not fall off, but also want to be fast. Tween getting the inside line, not quite enough to overtake, but a valiant effort from Tween. Valiant effort and a great round there. They're driving quite close to the world record, driven by Pack or the league record. Uh, only about 15 hundredths away from that. So great round between the two, three hundredths apart and Solary up in the lead. But this is one of those maps where we're gonna see Pack shine. Oh yeah, no, he is strong on this track, very much so. This is something that suits him. It has all the elements, dirt grass, tech, some full speed, and the identity there with the um, speed management to balance the car is something he's just very good at, it seems. I did like when we saw this map last time where Mudda, he showcased some rhythm in the tapping there in the ending, which gave him such a consistent identity. And I wonder if we're going to see anybody else. Yeah, that's a lot of speed coming in from Pack and Call Jr. Oh, just shooting up in the lead by a tenth there. Easy breakaway from the solar players now driving the same line through the water here oh, a little bit wide from tween having to let off the gas a little bit but that will be a strong potential for an ace coming into the identity and now as you said the tapping rhythm we can kind of see it from tween as well couple getting closer to carl might get in between them to stop an ace from happening but carl with a good end could also take it away and that should be the ace for solary five to one now on the score line and another great time for pass yep. But that's the difference in um, in approaches. Some people will will tap like on a keyboard. I don't think um, I don't think Pack or Call Junior are keyboard players, but Kappa uh, Kappa is right. Kappa mm. is still a Kappa keyboard and player, and Tween keyboard. both are keyboard players. So you you'll see them do this tapping when um, when they do the well any time of the map, but also in the identity. And what I saw from Call Junior is I think he smooth steers. I think he utilizes the fact that a controller has full range of motion of all the, the, the percentages of, of turning that he wants. And I think he smooth steers the ending, and that's what works for him. Does work out. He was able to get so much speed on that last downhill, but look at this. Another scary round here for the sinners as Papas lost a lot of time in the early parts of the map between one versus two. Did lose a little bit of time to Carl Jr. in that last turn, but he also gained a lot in the identity. He caught up all yep. the way by, you know, two tenths, so... And now we enter the identity. Once again, try to look at Ooh. Tween. Tween does these full taps where Carl Jr., he's, his wheels oh. don't really move at all. Why, he... though? There comes Pack into frame. 1v2, is it gonna be another ace or can Tween defend this? He's trying his best, but it's just a little bit too far. And the margins play into Solary's favor. Another ace here, but just by six hundredths of a second. But that just shows the dominance that Solary has on their own uh, map choices, right? Especially a map like Grip, where Pack and Call Jr., both of them are driving so fast. Last time we saw this map, it was Pack that dominated, but Call Jr. has really shown up today. He has 101.4. is so tough to play against. If you know, like, your personal best to say a point two, maybe a point one, but you have to drive point four back to back to back to back to back, or you are getting aced. It's not like you're losing a round, you're, you're literally getting aced every time. That's the level they're playing at here, Pack and Carl. And we oh. see a mistake at least. Sinners are not the only ones crashing out here. Carl showing he is still human, at least partly human. At least partly human. He is a machine, um, but also human at the same time here. We call him the... Uh, Carl GPT. Yep. On the track and pack, pack also touching the inside wall. And that's actually going to be a sweep for Sinners, it if looks like. If they hold it, they should recognize the splits here. And we do see actually slowing down. The speed that they're trying to balance at is right around 190 if they're risking. But here we can see 185. No risks taken. Clean clinical finish from Sinners. And they will get a, a new say in this match. 8-4 to four is a lot more possible than 8-1. to one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's it's... It's at least a nice feeling for Sinners knowing we can ace this, we can take advantage. Like, the second you see uh, a weakness in the armor of Solar, you gotta take advantage, right? You gotta poke through that weakness immediately, and Sinners did that. They noticed uh, that we have the option to do this here, we're gonna slow down in the identity, gonna save it, because we got three seconds to work with. They made it work, they got that ace, but they're not in the clear yet, they gotta ace again. They have to ace once more, they can actually get one regular victory too, so as long as they don't get second and fourth this round they are fine to continue and then we do see a little bit of a gap from pack in the start hadn't gotten the line correctly and looks like he's losing time here but the speed that pack had could snowball he jumps a bit far though and tween into the wall this is now in scary territory yeah solary if they get a uh call junior or pack 
coming up on first place. They just got to get a map victory or a round victory here, and they'll get those two points that they need. So they're trying to log it out. Kappa needs to maintain this first place now to deny Solary their victory. But Carl Jr. is pressuring Pack, also coming in from the back. Kappa does seem to have a good lead. Oh. Is he able to maintain it? It looks like he is. He gets that risky finish done. Oh, and Tween almost snipes Pack. They both did not make the jump up to the risky finish. They got the safe one a little bit further back. 500 difference there, nine to five. They need an ace and then some here. So not easy, but again, we're talking about this mental fortitude. Cup on tween, over 10 years of esports match experience in Trackmania. They know if we just drive faster, we are not out of this. We can deny them, we can keep playing. We're still gonna keep trying. Like they have- Oh, Pack with a small mistake there in the start. An unbreakable will. An unbreakable will. That's a nice, uh, I mean, that's a nice compliment for Sinners, and I think they have it, especially coming back from last season's uh, seven seven losses and coming into the All-Stars All -Stars and getting second place, I think. They yeah, did, they so. only uh, got second to Alliance that tournament, the All-Star tournament, so that's quite the change up already, and we really are hoping for them to have a great season now. Tween and Kappa are both just such uh, great, vibrant players in the community. Right now, they and could keep this map alive if they oh, hold no! off, but yeah, you get fast by Carl. Both of them actually on that first corner of the identity, and Carl is gonna hold this together. Get one point, which is all Solary need to take map three. It looked like Sinners could get that ace two times in a row. They were on the roll. They were just about to get it. But when you're playing against Carl Jr., you're like a single mistake he will take advantage of. Yeah. He will be right there behind you. It's so annoying. Ready to like... pounce the second that you slip up. I imagine playing a couple of day where if you just touch a wall, you're out. Yeah, exactly. That, that's it, how it feels like. You, no opponent is going to make a mistake. It's just you touch a wall and you're out of the game. Okay. That's it's, like, uh, it's like one of those, one of those uh, if you're playing tag, and you're running away from your brother or sister, yeah. and they're right behind you. And if you slow down in any way whatsoever, they're literally there. Yeah. They will They will be there. That's that's how that's how Call Junior plays. And the aces there really just crush sinners. Early on, 8-1 to one score line, but they do get a reset here, and I love the pick breaking. I think if you're going to beat Carl and Pack, you have to put them on a the map where mistakes are the most likely to happen for everyone. You really have to get a high volatility match, and that's what breaking does. This High is volatility is so nice. That's a good way to explain it. This is one of the hardest maps to drive for everyone. So you're just saying like, let's add some chaos to the system and let's see if you can win against us on that. But I think, I, I still think that Carl Jr. has this ability to make sure that he's always in the match. He's always there to fight for it. I mean, thinking about it, in this entire match, I think we've only seen Carl Jr. do game-breaking mistakes maybe twice. Tw two crashes. Oh, Pack on the ice slide. This is exactly what Sinners were hoping for. But yeah, Carl, as you said, might not be shaken up by breaking. Might have actually expected this from Sinners. Because what else are they going to pick? Are they really going to pick my best maps? Didn't think so. So here he goes into oh, potentially the lead. Across the ice. Cup actually holding on to that. And Tween is all into the wall. So this is a one versus one for the first place. And the identity on breaking is that they drive with freewheeling and wet wheels. So they have to slide back and forth here to slow down the car. They went to 350 speed, now 280 here on the last corner to get that trajectory. Couple released a lot, but it's gonna still hold for him. 113.28, a great winning time there. And Tween coming in in third. They are gonna win the first round. I mean, we, we talked about this, right? You you guys might think about uh, Sinners being, oh, they, they always, you know, seem to be just a little bit behind or whatever. Sinners are driving really good paces. And if Sinners indeed was playing in the Challenger League, just one step lower than the Grand League, they would win everything. Yeah, like they're, they're everything. driving paces that is like a second ahead of Challenger League players. So they're still incredibly good. It's just that some of these other teams are also incredibly good. So it makes other insane players just look a little bit more human. Yeah, they do actually get off to a good start here though, and that ice slide that Pack failed is not at all easy, because when you go into this ice slide at the top of the hill here, you cannot really see the exit, and the angle you choose to go in with is kind of locked. You can only steer more, but you can never steer less. So if you ever oversteer, you're kind of in a stuck position. So once again in the ice slide here, it looks like Sinners do get the best of it. This time, uh, Pack getting it good, but Carl losing a lot of speed. It's such a weird turn, that dirt turn, after the downhill on the ice, because in the middle of the turn, your icy wheels get removed, 
and your car starts gripping the dirt a little harder, which can be hard to adjust to. Carl Jr. seems to get the better there of Kappa, and now he's trying to get up to second place, maybe get that ace together with a teammate pack who's far enough in the lead, but three players are driving on top of each other. The cars are right next to each other. Tween oh! makes a huge mistake. Pack also slowing down tremendously. Might get Wait, overtaken. Where's Carl Jr.? Carl Jr. getting first. Kappa overtaking Tween. Pack, or sorry, Kappa overtaking Pack. Pack getting third, and Tween getting fourth. That was a little bit of a messy ending there, Confusion virtual. Confusion in the Observer point of view, but we do see Carl taking the win. That was all over the place. Pack also crashing out, even though it looked like he had the line. But uh, a 3-2-3 three three will be the outcome when the dust settles on that round. And we do see an early mistake from Carl, I think. And also from Kappa and Pack. So three players out in the first. And I think Sinners just love this. They're like, yeah, this is what we wanted. We might crash too, but this is a great chance for us against you. And hope they can take at least one map. That's how you're going to start this comeback. I mean, we are seeing them pretty equal on the map so far. I mean, it's three to three. Both teams have made pretty big mistakes. We've seen Pack on multiple mistakes here. It looks like he get, goes for a super going tight very late. line. That could have less speed than Carl. Oh, Kappa barely holding the outside turn as well. So close to the wall. I would back out of that turn in the least, but he trusts his gut and it's a good and instinct. here they drive over a um cruise control block which locks their student tween making a huge mistake also bouncing on the water Carl jr is now alone in the lead pack might not be too far behind kappa needs to hold this second place they do not want to get ace right now not on their own map choice for the second time and mm. pack makes a huge mistake that could put tween up to second place or third place and make this another round tie it does it does it does it's another draw so Carl driving clean, draw. no mistakes from him, but a draw is secured four to four. I mean, this this is this is good for Sinners as well. Like as long as they're not getting behind, I think they're happy because they have shown that they're able to get times that are fat, like within it, one tenth of the world record. Yeah, the winning so, time from Kappa in that first like the one thirteen point two was amazing, but here a second crash on the start from both him and Pack. That first part is very tricky. You have so many effect blocks going. Your car is in a different as galaxy almost to what it's like to play without any effects so wet yeah, wheels and free wheeling and stuff at it's least all it, out there it, it was one mistake from each team which means that there's now two battles going on Carl Jr. and Tween fighting for that first place and Pack and Kappa fighting for third so we're, we have a, 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 a basically two shows in one right now oh I love that exit from Tween just the right time to go down that slope and still catch the outside dirt gonna put him one tenth ahead of Carl before this drift now the exit speed, speed seems to be about equal, but better trajectory on the ice from Tween. He crashed out here last time. The battle from that third place. Oh is no! Won by Kappa, as Tween makes a mistake, that could be huge to deny the ace from happening. Carl gonna have a one second lead onto the identity. Kappa making sure he slows down enough. And where is Pack? Is he close? Is this even possible? He's probably gonna try to save the identity. Do not, does not want to make a mistake like the last rounds, and he will safely get to the finish. Carl has landed on consistently driving 113.6 here. And, and that's still a great time. I mean, it is a little bit behind the world record, but it's definitely up there to always be contending for third, second, and first if multiple people make mistakes. Now, if you are sitting in the spectator seats and wondering how come he bounced on that water, he just drove into the water like any other time, it is because when you wanna, when you enter water with that much speed the tween went into it with, you want to enter the water in a very, very diagonal angle and he went too straight into the water. If you enter the water in a straight trajectory, your car will bounce out of it. So yeah. he did not go diagonal enough, that's why. It's even a thing that happened in the start, but the players are able to avoid it yeah. most of the time. Here we see Kappa with a one second mistake in the start again. And this is a very tough mental rut to get out of. If you keep making mistakes in the same spot that you haven't done in practice, it becomes this like uh, boss fight you have to do every round. Like, okay, why am I crashing here? What's, what's going wrong? And for Tween, it's like, well, okay, I'll just have to try to make the best of this. Another 1v2, and now he needs that diagonal entry, but he hits the penalty grass. Yeah, that penalty grass is going to slow him down tremendously. Now look at the entrance to the water here. You want to go as diagonal as possible. Did not get the airtime or the bounce out this time. And Carl Jr. and Pack, they're far enough ahead to be able to save it a little bit. They don't Half have to second. push that speed as much as they've done the last couple of rounds. And they're driving in tandem. First and second place coming in Ooh. for Team Solary. And that's going to push them up to nine points. Oh, and the times as well. 113.2 and 0.31 uh, by both. That's just spectacular. 
I mean, that's probably the best round we've seen on this map from a team. Yeah. Um, next to what Alliance did with uh, Solja and Mudda, who were both around point one, I think. So that, that that is a crazy level to grab at. One point remaining for Solary to win this first game in a 4-0 sweep. Last season, they did sweep Sinners 4-0 as well. Could look to repeat it here. To win a couple, though, as we talked about, they are going to play oh. until the last possible second here to defend their and spot. Even though Pack jumped out there, Carl Jr. is still in it to fight for it, and Solary does only need one point. So Tween and Kaba needs to overtake Carl Jr. if they want to have a hope to stay in this match for one more round. They need to ace Solary right now, but Carl Jr. is not giving it away for free. He's definitely fighting to maintain at least that second place, and he's doing a good job of it right now. Kappa has lost a little bit of time to Carl throughout this middle sector, and he now finds himself with half a second to gain. Tween also losing a bit to Carl before the identity setup. Can they get into the water entry diagonally enough? They do. Kappa also making sure that he doesn't slide out there. So he is the closest, but they both have to get past him. First turn of the identity. Carl's gonna get a lot of speed. That's enough to hold off against Sinners. Can he get the last turn right? Looks like Carl has this on lock, and Sinners will be uh, beaten by Solary. 4-0 in game one of four today. 4-0. Oh. And, I mean, it was... So Solary was definitely the uh, team that was favored in this match, but a 4-0 sweep is always uh, difficult to call. It did happen. Solary showing, once again, why they won last season's stage. Uh, they came out on top, of course, and now... The 4-0 uh, sweep, they, this is the third time in a row they're winning as well. Like the third match of this stage, they're oh, yeah, winning. Yeah, Solary are looking great. They're like looking so far. really good this season. I think the only questions you could pose against Solary, uh, being the favorites, is can Carl keep up with the pace? And I think he answered a lot of doubters today with yes, he can. And with how rarely he crashed as well, that was just stunning to watch. It was like you could always rely on him driving not like a third place time, that was like a like a first or a second place time every single round. Yeah, I mean, and that's what what we like to see from Carl Jr. And Pack can always throw in that extra pace if he needs to. He is so good at getting world records on world records. He's so good at pushing it past his own limit. But Carl Jr. will always be there to take the anchor and make sure that hey, I'll get second, I'll get first if anybody else makes a mistake. Uh, and now, I mean, uh, Solary has won against ITB and they've won against BDS and now they've won against Sinners. Like they're taking down teams left and right and especially also some of the harder teams that they failed against last season. Exactly. We're going to take a small break, but this is a big day. There are five total games to be played, so a lot of Trackmania Esports action coming up today. The next game we're going to see is KC versus Big. Big, another team at the top of the scoreboard, mm -hmm. undefeated so far. KC also undefeated because they've only played one game. So True. We're going to see which teams get to remain undefeated in a couple of minutes, and we'll be right back. All right, guys.
Cup Finals. Yeah, that's their ultimate goal is all this leads to the World Cup. You want to have a good seeding going into that and to try to become the best team in the world. Right now, the best team in the league is Solary with three quick wins. Mm -hmm. But Big is trailing right behind. If they get this, they're equal to them after almost half the season has played. And uh, to do that, Janik, what are they going to have to do? We're talking about picks and bans now. So it's soon going to start. Against KC, we don't really know a lot no. yet. Uh, one thing I know is um, we could see Sinews. We could Which would be great. We haven't, we haven't seen Sinuous at all yet in the league. Uh, it's a great map. I, I don't know why it is that it gets so <laughs> avoided, though. Yeah, like the, the only game we almost saw it was Big versus G1. But that, no, was that game? No, I, I think don't it was remember a which game. game it was. But I know, I know, uh, Big doesn't tend to ban it that often, and they also have other good, good picks like Airwalk, where they don't tend to crash a lot. Uh, we've yeah. seen good performances there, so maybe those are. Uh, we get told in the chat here that Big will be the upper seed as well because they're doing really well uh, currently in the this season. In this season, they were on top going into today's matches, right? So obviously now Solary overtook them because they just won a match, but Big can come right back up there. It's going to be hard to win as as dominantly as Solary just did. Um, but at the very least, they can get their third victory in a row. So that means Big has the priority in terms of banning a map and also first picking. Yeah. And for KC, it's going to be a long day. You're playing this game and then they also have one more game later on tonight. So uh, for them, getting a quick win would be good too. As they, oh, absolutely. Uh, they have to yeah, yeah, that's gonna today is gonna be well we think it's stressful just you know casting for this long we obviously have to cast all the games so that's gonna be hard but playing these games is so so draining we've done like a, a small amount of of uh do you remember the the turn not the tournament the little show show match we did uh with spam oh where, yeah the the chase match the chase match it is so draining playing anything that requires this much uh, attention so doing two matches in one day actually has to be so so draining it is France versus Germany. It is Otak and Bren versus Granati and Massa on the opposing side. We will have picks and bans coming through momentarily here as we see what the players have prepared. Going to be the first time we also catch KC in action on the mainstream. And it will be very exciting to see what Bren and Otak can deliver. These are two really strong players. We know Bren tends to like obstacle maps with a lot of elements. I think Vortex is something they might... Yeah. Like through stylistically suits them. Vortex but, is a um, great map for actually a lot of teams, in my opinion. I think it's also because it's a little gimmicky. It makes it makes for a lot of, of opportunities to take advantages of your opponent's mistakes, right? Mm. But but last season, I think uh, Casey really showed to be a team that we're not going to have any like tricky picks and bans. If you leave our best maps open, we're just going to pick them. One, two, three. Yeah. And and they're probably going to do this the same this season if Big will allow it. I've uh, I've actually now no nobody really talks about this. It's, it's frustrating me greatly that this sign it keeps going in and back and forth. <laughs> so uh, people don't really talk about this too much. But the the maps all like they're very difficult. But nobody really talks about the scenery. I think the the map builders this time around did a great job being consistent with the scenery and making the maps just look beautiful. They did indeed. Here we go. Ban phase. We're starting with the first ban. Frosty ban from KC. And Massa and Granati are now going to ban their choice. Will we have Sinuous yeah, open? I was about to say, will they ban Sinuous? It's, it hasn't been played for two full weeks. Give me my dose of Sinuous today, please. Someone, someone dare to choose, uh, to pick the map. So uh, Massa and Granati might, they, I mean, what do they not like? I guess off-road is also a very dangerous map, especially for Granati driving with yeah, that, that is wheel chaos. In, in Cam 3 is not necessarily super fun. Off-road breaking, maybe. There oh, you go. Sinuous band, of course. Schade Schokolade, as they say in German. Uh, Sinuous is taken away. What does that even mean, though? It means like, oh, what a shame. Chocolate in German. Schade Schokolade. Yeah, this mm. is saying, okay? I am I am up to date with my uh, German. Okay, I mean, I don't know, but you just, yeah, sure. <laughs> maybe chat can tell us whether or not that is true, or Virtual just said something horrible. Pull the first choice from the German side, and now Otak will be picking for KC. Pool is a good map for, for Big, so it makes sense. Grip the answer, though. Pool, Massa did really well on, actually, yeah. which is uh, probably why they picked it. They they both... Oh, do you not remember? That control comes in here from Big, also a great map. 
I, Poole was the map where we saw them just driving in tandem together. Yeah, they in, drove the same like, car they, line. They drove exactly. the exact lines. And the same with Vortex. They did well in Vortex as well, but that pit, that got picked by um, KC. By KC. Now, Airwalk is open, and they have been playing really well in that. Only played one game, but it went actually I think the best, quite well. The best pick from KC now would be either Off-Road or... I uh, think speed, speed could be interesting, also, yeah. but they might not favor that uh, because of the precision required in the identity. Like, the entire map almost comes down to just that slalom. Uh, you really are just lying in wait for that, so... Uh, that's why we might not see that. The others are also uh, good choices. They're really taking their time. That 10 seconds left to pick one of these maps here. You I wonder what timer. happens if they just don't pick. I think it just becomes random. Oh, honestly, I just, oh yeah, no, just like two seconds. They have them. three seconds left. They gotta pick, and they're gonna panic pick now. Boom! What's it gonna be? Ah, uh, are we gonna see our first random? Okay, the timer pick? is zero. Now I'm worried about us being disconnected. Nah, we are here. We are present. We no, I'm meaning if the server disconnected because the timer says zero. Yeah, but we do get oh, the picks there. there speed go. and braking. Speed and braking. Okay, so speed was one of those. Uh, it's what. It's one of those maps where you definitely can gain so much there in the identity, and I think that's what we're gonna. That's what we're gonna see them do. Yeah, but pool first pick here. That's gonna be favored heavily for, um, for Berlin International Gaming. I think. Pool. We're gonna see what Bren and Otai can do. I remember. So pool is a map that's based on pool side, which is an old Trickmania competitive map, and I remember Otak actually being one of the better players on that one. Uh, Bren also having great performances. This new pool side or version is a bit different, but statistically looking at it, um, out of the rounds that Big have played on it, 13 rounds, Massa has won four of them, Granadi has won one of them, getting first places, and collectively in those 13 rounds, they've only crashed four times. So Which is really good. Yeah, th their stats on paper line up. They can drive consistently. And we don't know. Do we? We don't know uh, Casey's pace on this, right? Uh, no. So. I mean, they could, for all we know, just dominate now. Get world <laughs> records on world records. <laughs> that would be <laughs> quite uh, demoralizing, I think, for Big to deal with. But let's see what they prepare. But that also means that Big Big chose this map, not because it wa they wanted to counter KC or anything. This was just a map they chose purely because they think we got more pace than mo like any other team. We are live. Game two of the day. Five games today. Big versus KC, get some hype in the chat, get your predictions through. We already talked with production, they put a bunch of channel points on one of the teams uh, to win, and we'll see if their predictions end up to be correct. As we see the first round of pool, very competitive map here. It's all about racing lines, there's no real big gimmicks you have to do, uh, but this, you do have to master yeah. underwater driving and wet wheels. Yeah, wet wheels there, the players, they're trying to land in a drift and then cancel the drift to go for a no drift on the full downhill left-hander. And if you don't do it perfectly, you're gonna slide out again. That's what happened to two of the players, Granadi and Otak. But Bren and Massa, they're fighting for first and second place. As we head into the identity here, you wanna drive underwater, get a good Ooh. slide, then left-hand underwater, go tight to the wall, and then land in another slide here. Oh, Massa did not go for no, the second slide. No, this is such a good line for Massa. He gets so much speed into that last turn. Great execution in the identity. 105. Five, 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 a nice digit as well. So that, so there's two different lines there in, in the ending before the last uh, couple of turns. Massa did not e e land in a drift before before the last turn. Do you think that that's just a new line that he's, because I, I think he's always been drifting. Granati has, has yeah, as well. Wasn't it last week that Massa always drove the line that looked like a mistake, but then yeah, he caught up? I, that or was might that be. Mutter? I I'm, I'm might be mixing the names, but. There's a lot of ways to do that. Either you go wide and you get more speed because you're driving less time underwater, or you go tight, a lot underwater, but you get to the destination quicker with less exit speed. It's a thing the players have to really just drive enough times, try enough things, and find out what works. But what we see here is all the players making it through that first underwater section unscathed, and now we have a very close race. All players are within a tenth of a second before we get to the last uphill here and the identity. 
Yeah, the players are really close this time around. This is the type of race that we love to see. Everybody driving so tight here oh. as we approach the identity. There is the first person going out. Otak, that means Granati and Massa has a real chance of getting this ace down. Bren trying to deny here, but Granati fighting it for the back. He has oh. more exit speed, will be able to come up. Almost making it, but Massa gets that first. Bren, 7,000s behind, and then Granati, 2,400s or 24,000s behind that. So. so close. Bren just barely getting away with the defense there. Did not get first place, but denying an ace is still crucial for KC to stay in uh, distance of big on this map. But that's what you talked about. Like, this map is so close. Like, a lot of the map is just about clean driving, and if everybody does it, they're gonna be tight all the way through the map into the identity. And that goes, to, that just gives us some incredibly tight races. It really does. Uh, the 1600s that Otak lost in the start here are not insignificant, because gaining a tenth and a half on pool from this position is very, very difficult. And already, they are probably sensing that this is an opportunity to ace right now. This is something they have to capitalize on. Going into the uphill, trying to get a wide setup. It looks like Ben is getting closer, but he's lacking speed. And Massa and Granati are once again going to push ahead towards the first underwater part. Getting a wide setup for the drift. Not a lot of wet wheels there. But they dive underwater and once again in tandem, like you talked about. They drive the same line. Ben coming closer, though, but going too oh. wide on that corner. And Granati and Massa are going to get their ace. 105.4 and 0.5 by them, respectively. I mean, they're driving clean rounds here. And as we talked about, like, Big is just so good at driving together. Like, it's you can really tell that they're practicing next to each other. They're sitting one PC apart and just talking, making sure that they recognize which lines are going on. And they're, it's like they're, it's like they're almost driving uh, at the, like... On with the, the, same mi yeah, the minds connected, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like siblings, like two identical twins just being able to, to telepathically connect to, oh, we're going to do this. It's like two artists harmonizing on a beautiful song here. The lines they're driving, but it, it does not happen out of nowhere. These guys have been boot camping for several Ooh. weeks ahead of the league starting. They have been practicing on these practice maps that they built meticulously, looking at every line that they can find on the maps. They came in prepared to the season, and um, they might have just found the best solutions that they could. The most consistent and fast lines together. Here, Masa 1 versus 2. He knows he has to stay ahead. He does have a small but noticeable gap to work with. Bren getting closer. He went too wide on this corner last time. Can he save it this oh. time? It's Masa going wide. Is Otak there to join Bren to get an ace in return and level the score? Up to a 5-7. That to seven. is such an unfortunate slide-out from Massa. And the only reason it happened is because he had, I think he turned to the right a little bit too early and got just a, a minuscule amount of airtime, which made his car just slide out because there's watery wheels. Yeah, wet wheels is so tough to drive with, just like in, in real life, but even more so in this game. The car ever enters an angle and it starts sliding. It's yeah. going to keep sliding. Here we see a big mistake from Massa in, round, uh, in the very first 10 seconds of the race. That's an unfortunate mistake to happen, but I mean, the start is a little bit weird. It's not like a very, very smooth transition, so you can end up hitting it uh, in an awkward way. But that just means that Granati now is on the test to try to deny Carmine Corp as many points. And if he ends up failing that identity or or before then again, then all of a sudden KC might look to, uh, to get Big's map win here. KC could take the lead or at the very least equal the score entirely up to 7-7. Seven, seven. They are pushing for this right now. Seeing that Massa's out of it, they know they're going to put Granati under pressure and hopefully force a mistake from him as he just has to drive very risky lines to keep ahead of the two French players. Bren going out for a wide line in the Ooh. water. He's going to push ahead. Granati losing actually ground to both of them. He has crashed out. The pressure has mounted on the German player and Casey will now slow it down. Nice lines to take an ace and the lead in the match. I mean, this just turned upside down really quickly. What was it? Like, it was, it was seven two to two? Yeah, seven to two. Seven to two, and now it's eight to seven. That's two quick back-to-back -back aces for Carmine Corp. You love to see it. They're fighting back. And I mean, to be fair, it's it's due to some big mistakes from, from Team Big. Yeah, no, collapsing really early on in that round. Uh, it, and it just balls on the pressure, because now they know, oh, we're almost about to throw this map. We were up with five points, and it only goes to ten here. So Carmine Corp need two points, and they need a regular victory 
to secure this one and take it away from Big, which would be a surprise because we saw such great momentum in the early rounds. Here, though, looks like Masa and Renati have been able to stabilize their finding their pace once again, back and, in the rhythm. And you gotta you gotta see this from Big's perspective as well. All they're thinking about is like, let's just get this ace. Let's end this right now. We don't we don't we want any more rounds. Scares. This is getting a little bit too close. Let's push it here in the ending. And right now they are able to do it. All four players are within a tenth of a second going into the identity. Bren trying to push in for first, but Masa has a little bit more speed. Here we see the two different lines coming in. Bren oh, is trying to push Bren. away, but he touches the wall. Can old tag get back up in second? Oh. Or first is so close. Three thousandths of a second. Granati takes it home, though. Massa getting that third place, and it's gonna be nine to nine. <laughs> that could have ended the map just immediately if Otek wasn't there, but he's present to deny nine to nine. And it could have even been Casey with uh, the advantage. It was three thousandths difference, but mm. they still play on. This is resting on a knife side. There's no team is safe here, but you don't want to have all of this battle be for nothing. You want to secure the map now. You cannot let this slip. No, I, I, this is, this is so scary for Big because this is their map choice. This is the map they thought we are gonna win this. This is our momentum map. We will take the first map, and all of a sudden, KC getting two back-to-back -back aces and not giving any any leeway for Big to make any mistakes now. So Masa and Granati, they need to push it here. Granati point two behind, not looking too great, and Masa is now tasked with trying to maintain the lead. And since it's a 9-9 nine to -nine scoreline, just a regular victory is enough for either team. So going into this ending, this could very well be the last round we see Bren leading the charge into the water now. He has some risky lines here. Masa able to keep up. Granati closing the gap as well. All full prey is present before that last turn here. Bren crashed out last round. Will he be able to hold the line? Ooh. Oltec crashed out. Can Bren extend the match and get a draw? Looks like he has it under control. 105.2. What a great two. time, though. Wow. That Sick is all, time. Yeah, that is like point one away from world record as well. We he keeps the match going. They're, they're, they're pushing each other. They're pushing each other, these teams. They're like, okay, if you want to stay in, you'll better drive basically world record. Yeah, two tenths faster than the previous times we've saw seen in the game from Bren there. 10 to 10 overtime, and one more round will be played at least. Fresh start for all the players, but as you said, that was a tough round for Big. They had Granati two tenths down in the early stage of the round, and now it's actually Oltak who's in that fourth position. Yeah, but it's too early to say anything because we've seen so many slight nuances in some of these turns and drifts. A lot of speed. And Granadi and Massa turning that, like, just into a breakaway. That's a lot of speed there coming in. Only Bren is up there fighting for them. Otak is taking the back of the field, but he will be there if anybody makes any mistakes, especially here mm -hmm. on the identity as we head up into the final left-hander before we get into the pool part. Bren has to push this now. The two Germans have more speed before the water part, and they're likely to be ahead after the drift. Now is when he has to make a stand for his team, for his country, for France. Does not want to drop this map after so many points. Very close to the check, but had to release, losing more ground, and Big will get their own map by the skin of their teeth. But Carmine Corp really putting on the pressure. Yeah, that was too close for comfort here for Berlin International Gaming. Masa and Granati taking it home in style, though, with an ace to end it off and they will take the first map win, their own map win. That was tough, but now KC get to enter on their own choice of grip. Before that, a lot of highlights this game. So many close rounds decided just by the thousands of a second. This was this was one of those maps. I think I think Pooh might become one of my favorite maps. To be honest, just because of the tight uh, the tight lines that are, like look at that. Just look at those replays. It is just stunning. incredible to see just how close it is. Now we're going into Grip, which is also an amazing map where we might see some tight uh, some tight games again here because Grip is not the type of map unless you make a mistake in the middle of the map with the um, with the tight right or left hander on the plastic. I think the players are going to be really close together. So the interesting thing on this map is uh, Big have a bit of a mixed performance on it. They've won some rounds, but in, it also crashed about half the rounds, it seems, that they played on it. So uh, this is a very volatile map for them. And Casey might have picked up on that on the stats and thought, okay, let's put you on it and see how you do against us. Oh, Otak getting a lot of airtime there, but able to adapt this line, still make it up to the ice. But it does leave a little bit of a gap for Bren. And now has to play in the defense. 
Yeah, we're heading closer and closer to the identity. First, we got this water section, right-hander, very easy to either slide out or touch a wall, but all the players get through it. And now, once again, the identity where you want to drive between 190 oh. and 200 speed. Massa really balancing there on two wheels. Trying to push oh. a little bit closer. You can see all the way through the turn. Massa driving on two wheels. Bren maintaining the lead, though. Granati trying to push closer. Not quite getting it. It's going to end in a draw, but that's what I meant. This is going to be some tight map. And we need to see better pace from Big here if they're going to take the map. That time from Bren beat all of Big's best times on this map. They have a 0.5 from Granati as their best run. And then Massa with a 0.7 personal best in a league match. So... Uh, yeah, but, once, but, but we don't we don't know what the players are driving offline, right? True, oh, okay, but that's not dropping good. it on the server is a very different story. And Massa crashing out here. Now Bren also Granati. clipping. Yeah, Granati and Otak, the one versus one. Otak got airtime here. Can he reduce it and get a lot more speed towards the ice? That's going to be the case. He's going to catch up towards Granati, not quite closing the gap for the dirt, but still just lying in wait for any slip-ups. Yeah, I errors. think Otak and Bren, especially Otak, is just going to full push it. He's he's going to send it more than Granati will because he they knows that he has 17 seconds. seconds to work with. It doesn't matter if he crashes. So here we might see Otak with an attack here on Granati. Granati is going to try to defend the best he can, and he does do really well. Now, Granati, remember, he's on a steering wheel, so he has all these minuscule nuances that he can that he can utilize on the last left-hander, and he does use it with a 101.58. Uh, great time from Granati, point two away from world record. Great time from him, also keeping up with his best pace on the map and making sure that, you know, he sees what Case can do and then thinks oh my he can do it as well. What is Massa doing? That is so... <laughs> I mean, okay. It looks like a, like a 2000s music video. You know, like when, yeah. they do, they, when they do the car shows and you have like... Uh, oh, those American, the side. American yeah. cars? Super yeah. American 2000s yep. music video. Oh my god. It, it it reminds me of you know what it reminds me of? What? It reminds me of uh the the Trackmania United car. The, the Bay car. Yeah. Yeah, the Bay car and the Desert car tend to Yeah, the Desert bit. car specifically always drives on the on the two wheels when you turn. So yeah, okay. Well that's uh, some old move? school Trackmania for the people that have played Trackmania United, Trackmania Nations. But we are playing Trackmania 2020 here into the esport we go. If you just joined, it is Berlin International Gaming versus Carmine Corp. They're fighting here on stage where Big has taken the first map win and is currently 2-2 two to two on the second map. And watch out for the pace here because Bren is driving some very fast checkpoints. And with a good end from Gennady, this could actually get close to the current league record from Pac as he's gaining about two tenths. This might very well be one of uh, at least the personal best from Gennady. What's the final time here? 0.42 and that is indeed a new Draw. league record from him but not beating Pac's 34. Yeah, PAX 34 is still standing as the world record, but Granati getting a PB, yeah. which is that I, I I believe if you get a PB on in a match, it probably means you have a better PB offline as well. Um, it's so difficult to drive a personal best in such a high stakes situation as this right now. So I, I do think that they have practiced. Well, of course, they've practiced a lot offline, but I think most teams have times that we haven't even seen yet. Like, yeah, I mean, like the offline record on this map is like a point one from Dextra, I think. So that's the, the fastest known offline record. But you drive on the server, you can't take all the risks you can so freely in practice. Granati making a mistake here right after that fast time and muscle as well. Falling half a second behind Otak, his closest opponent, meaning this is a very likely ace for KC to show that we can win our own choice. But they have to balance this car now and not take I too mean, many risks because Mas is going to send this. Oh, Massa is definitely going to send it, but they're point four ahead. They're going to utilize the fact that uh, Big made some huge mistakes. They're going to capitalize on it, and they do indeed. That's going to be an ace for Carmine Corp. Beautifully done. Bren with a 101.6 did not need to risk the ending. That's probably why he lost 0.1.2 there. But that's not an issue because they saw the opportunity uh, for the ace. They slowed down the play because they know they could and they took home the three points. I think the, the scary thing on this map is even if you try to save the end, you still need to push that very last corner with a lot of speed to make the risky finish. Yes. If not, you're going to lose close to a second and that probably was what Masa was hoping for. But yeah, we were seeing some mistakes in the start. The reason is that this is not to be taken for granted. You have to get this ramp cut where you jump off the side of the ramp there, and then you have to land on the back wheel as Granny landed side wheels. That means slow down and another big mistake here from Big. Yeah, Masa tasked to try to 
try to maintain the lead because if he doesn't that's going to be more points for Corman Corp. Corman Corp they're they're pushing up to like the territory where they can close off the map. Now nothing is over yet as we saw last time big was 7 points, uh, KC was on 2 points and they still came back, but it the each and every single point in this situation that KC gets puts so much pressure on Mas Big is here. Slow. Mas is pretty slow into the entity. Otak and Bren both gain time on and Bren passing. And now Otak also coming up on the side of Masa, trying to get past on the last turn here. Can he get more speed than Masa? Doesn't look like it. Bren will take first, and it's a regular win. Masa barely staying ahead there. Yeah, I mean, that was a good performance by Masa, making sure that they at least not didn't give the ace away but eight to four is still a very very harsh position to be in for big they can still come back but they need to ace it out yeah i mean they saw they just saw carmine corp almost beat them from a two to seven score line so it, it's doable but you gotta avoid these mistakes they get the ring there with a pretty good 180 from uh, Massa. but now granati this jump very important that he gets it right gonna land and get grip with the back oh, immediately bren. And it's a bren mistake on this jump in this round now Flipping the rolls, and it's Otak in a one versus two. But he tends to get pretty good speed here. When he doesn't get airtime, tends to gain the sector against his opponents, and it does seem to be the case again. But, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah this is this is really harsh. He went a little bit tighter, so he lost the momentum. He lost the speed, but he's still up there fighting with Gr uh, Granadi and Massa. They're driving once again Ooh. just on top of each other. It's crazy. They're driving the exact same lines. And now three players enter the identity at oh, the same time. Otak that. going for a tighter line, pushes down on an early right-hander. And Granadi and Massa are still right there. Massa trying to push. You can see them on the two Ooh. wheels. Otak maintains the second place. Well played by all three players there in the lead, though. And a fantastic time as well from Granati. 0.401. Uh, I mean, that's the second point four he drops this game, and he had 2.5s earlier as well. The pace is there from Big to take this map, but they gotta stop crashing. They can no longer crash at all, or it's over. No, anything but first and second for Big will will give Carmine Corp the win, right? So they gotta get an they gotta get an ace at the very least now. And that's, at the very least, like, that's the only option they have. Okay, so you also know this. They just got to get a singular point. That means passing one of the German cars, and they are good to go. See, the first jump could be decisive. Masa going low, but still getting the grip. That's going to be a lot of speed. Otak jumping far and also losing a bit of time, but coming back on the quarter pipe. About equal after the first 20 seconds. Now the risky line. All players going for it, of course. The French player is going tighter. Germans getting more speed. Granati and Massa jumping back in frame. Passing Otak, but they have to pass Bren as well. Into the outside dirt. Now Massa was slowing down quite a lot, but actually getting good exit speed. Can he hold that in the water? Oh, oh face plant. That might be the map now for KC. They just got to not fail yet and see for both players. And they yeah, have I think, I think... KC saw that. They're six seconds ahead. They can literally crawl into the finish now. Like there's, backwards. Yeah, they, they could do whatever <laughs> they want. Like, as long as they don't, like, fly off the map three times, they'd be fine. So that's uh, that's well played by KC. And that's just the pressure that, that entered on big side. Like, you didn't have the option to drive any slower than what Granati did, right? So he... The fact that he made a mistake doesn't doesn't attest to the fact that Gradi isn't a, a great player. It's just they were pushed to like beyond their limits, yeah. right? But I would say Big also put a lot of pressure on KC. It was quite close until that one ace they got when both big players made a mistake, jumping up to a six to three score line. And after they secured that, they kind of just built the pressure and, and ran away. Yeah, with yeah, it. yeah. But uh, still a great performance from Big. Now the maps are one to one, and I think this will keep going. I think if I had to predict anything, I think I said Are you said predicting this. a seven game series Yeah, here? this this is also what I said before we even started the cast today. I think KC and Big would, would be the, the, the players, <laughs> would be the teams to go into a seven game series. So I would say on this map, uh, the reason Big chose it is they have very good average pace. Granati and Massa both dipping under uh, one tens quite frequently. So 111. Under 111, they're driving one tens. Masa's average 110.9 here, and even quite close to the world record with a 110.5. That's his best time. But the uh, record actually by Coppa, 110.39. Which is, I, I didn't, uh, didn't they also, did they pick this map today? Yeah. So that's why, right? And we see control here, if it's your first time seeing it. It's not the most played map. It has some very tricky jumps where 
you need to showcase control. I think that's where the name comes from. And then also here, no breaks means all these turns are releases where you just slow down just enough to get a good exit speed. Otak leading this round before the big jumps on the identity. Yeah, this identity we saw Pack fail three times in a row before. It's definitely not an easy identity. Mm. You want to get low airtime and then land on this cone structure, jump once again, low airtime, and then land on the downhill and then into the finish. All the players showcasing exactly how to do it. A 110.4 by Otak. That's a great starting time. Opening with the cannons right away, not leaving anything on the table, just sending them into, uh, you know, this is, this is your pick? Wait, this is your pick? 110.41. Yeah. We came to play, it's a draw, but that is a scary sign for Big. It is, like, it, once again, it pushes Big to drive even faster than they thought they had to, because if you pick a map that you're really good at, you can, you can drive a little bit slower than your PBs and still be on first and second place, but what the French players are saying is that if you pick this map, even if you feel comfortable with it, we're still gonna pressure you to drive uncomfortably fast. Yeah, and that's when mistakes happen. That's when you force your opponents to either risk the world record line or hit the wall, as that's the... The Martins and Track Mania, often the closer you go to walls, the faster you go as well. Massa, though, with a great run of his own right now, yeah, leading everyone fast. by 0.4. Brand getting a good release timing there, but not gonna have the most speed. Granati still staying ahead. Are what? Big gonna be able to ace this with a good identity? They could! Brand crashing out, Otak all on him now. He drove such a fast run last time, but here he has to pass Massa. Massa slow towards the jump but still able to keep that lead. Oh. Otak is gonna tie. And the oh way the tiebreakers work is that because Otak was behind on the last checkpoint, Granati wins the tiebreaker. It's an ace by a thousand of a second. Yeah, they drove, well, they drove the same thousands yep. of a second. Uh, so that's that's incredible. Uh, that's That's, Nice for Granati that he entered the checkpoint first, because then it goes in his favor. But I also want to point out that Massa was driving world record pace throughout most of the map, and he slowed down in the ending because he noticed he was so far ahead. There's no reason to push it. Like uh, these players, they obviously don't just go for ego plays. Like it's cool to have the world record, the live world record, but it's even better to get that ace, and that's what Massa saw. He was 0.4 ahead going into the identity, and then finishing with a 0.6. I mean, that is a fast time. It's a really fast time, and he's driving that start again, but he goes a bit too wide, it looks like, jumping a bit too far on the platform, not getting the exit speed, and so that round, the tighter line from Oltak will pay off. He jumps up into first place, and now we see a very close round as Bren has fallen down to fourth. That means uh, this could be a draw, but I doubt it will be with the identity still to go. Anything can happen. Yeah, just uh, look at the lines here in the identity. The higher they jump, the slower the, the, they will land again, so... They're going to try to risk it here. Granati getting a good jump, but Otek maintaining that lead. Can he do that for one more jump to go here? It Ooh. does look like the... Yeah, okay, Masa almost failing it, but it does Otek, look like... Oh. The world record on the server. Oh my god. One ten three seven eight. your new live world record from Otak. He drove a point for one round one and now drops a point three. He is fast on this map. He is definitely fast on this map. A new live world rec record from the French player. And this, once again, pressures big on their own map choice. They're, you have to drive close to world record to win against us. But I, I swear, Massa was, you know, two times ahead of Otak before he jumped a little too far. He has a great start here with the early lines. You can see he's up there in contention for first. But then the differences that take place is in this downhill. The big players, they try to jump up high and get a lot of speed. But you gotta catch the platform as soon as possible for this to be worth it. But this time, it's gonna be Masa in charge in first place as he exits the bobsleigh about a tenth, I'd say, ahead of the next opponent. And Granati's there to join him. So even though Otak dropped the world record, if he doesn't drive oh! just as fast this time, they're in trouble. But Masa with a mistake. Yeah, now Granati is versus Otak, and Otak has had some great identities, but Granati has been right there up with him, and now they're driving on top of each other here in the end, and Granati going lower than Otak, and that might give him the edge he needs, but Otak is still right there. Nothing is over quite yet, and will Steve? it be Granati or Otak? Granati getting a perfect landing there. Ooh. One tenth away from each other, but still great showing at 10.6 110.6 and a very quick save from us as well he could have respawned that checkpoint on instinct but i think he just clipped the edge and kept driving like climbed yeah. back up with his car which was faster 
in the overall split there. So he didn't lose that much. He secured the regular win. And Big are still keeping this big gap with four points against Carmine Corp, who are kind of running out of space. They need an ace sooner or later. The crazy thing is, though, that I think Otak has insane pace on this map. I mean, obviously he has. He just rode the live world record. But he needs Bren to be up there with him, because otherwise they're, they're not going to get the points anyway. And what Big has going for them is that both Masa and Granati, they're driving really fast on this map. They really are right now. Keeping the pressure. Oh, oh. Masa though, slowing down. Clipping that edge, jumping a little too short. Granati will have a strong lead to work with, but... Masa is in a French sandwich right now, a baguette between <laughs> the two players, Bren and Otak. Now let's see in the ending if they can cook up something in the kitchen. We know that French cuisine is being talked about worldwide. Yep. Yeah, we, we will see if we can let them cook here, but Otak this time is in the Oh, bag. make a mistake oh. though. Bren has gone from the field of view, and Otak. so has Masa. So it's Otak versus Grenadi as the name tags have disappeared, but we do see Otak. Uh, behind Granati there, Granati taking the first place, and who is gonna get this third? Looks like Massa. So a three to nine, uh, four to nine scoreline. Yeah, four to nine scoreline, which means KC has to drop uh, some of these aces now. But you're right. The, I didn't even notice that the name tags kind of disappeared. So uh, maybe we can fix that at some point. But for now, we will. Uh, you can still see who's who. Oh, they're back. L yeah. Luckily, uh, Big has two different car skins, so it's easy to tell the difference between Granati and Massa, but uh, not so much for KC. Dude, I, I like when they drive the same one. They have so many to choose from. They have like a blue one, a green one, a yellow one. Then we just see uh, Brennan Otak with the same. It, it feels cooler when they have the same one, you know? Same yeah. yeah could, oh, oh, hang on. That was an early mistake there from Massa. Losing about 0.4. Four tenths of a second might feel like nothing, but in it's the World lot. Track Mania, how are you coming back from this? Even if you take the, all the risks on the map that are still remaining, you might not catch up to Otak and Bren. It's up to Granati here to fend off these two players for now. Into the no breaks part, though. I Masa mean, has made it to yeah, down to two tenths. He's actually gap. driving really fast. Uh, uh, he, got an, a, a, he got a late, he got a late acceleration there, so he's gonna lose a little bit more time. But now it's up to Granati to make sure that Carman Corp is not coming back for the A. But unfortunately, a huge mistake here. Masa is getting a little bit closer, but he's still 0.3 almost behind. And Bren and Otai both make the last oh. jump of the identity. Masa <laughs> got dangerously close, but that's gonna be an ace for KC at a very very important ace because now they could, if they ace again, win the map. And that's just annoying for Big, right? Yep, it's, it's so, so annoying. annoying. Yeah, we're four to nine. We literally only need a point. And then you put it to seven to nine. And you're kind of feeling like, okay, but so what? We're still going to win. Yes. But if this round doesn't go exactly like planned, then KC could so the, 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 so the thing is, though, that last stage, Big had a lot of these things happen, where they just were like one or two points away from winning the map, and then they lose it, right? But this season, Big has been able to close it out every time. Uh, which felt it felt like they've fixed that problem of exactly. closing out the map. So but hopefully they don't feel the, the, the pressure uh, or the same, you know, uh, situation. Oh, did we see a big mistake? Oh, tack. Wait, is this a... Uh, this, this looks like it could be a reset... I don't, I don't know if that line that he drove there was due to frustration or the fact that uh, something happened. We will find out. I mean, it's it's rare that we see. But either way, it does seem like this map will go to big now, as they only have to beat one player. Yeah. Uh, and so Bren and Granati and Mas are driving this as a formality. I think the map should go to big here, and they do close the map under pressure. The reason I think that it was. Uh like it, it could have been a restart is because it's very, very rare that we see uh, players just give up, like just stop driving. Right? Yeah. So usually that only happens when uh, when there's a, a, a restart of the round or whatever. But I guess Otak might have dropped his controller, honestly, or something. <laughs> Draw, I don't know what happened. Maybe the sweat in the hands, the nerves. Yep. We will see. Oh, it says wait in the bottom left. Yeah. So maybe there was something, but the... Um... The, uh, the the rule is that once the round is started, the round is official, yeah. so... My game just disappears, is what he says. But that might mean we have a uh, technical pause yep. uh, between this map and the next. Yeah, there you go, Bren, the with the uh, technical pause. The and tactical while pause. that is going on, we can take a look at some of the replays that made up the map. 110.4 uh, uh, on the first <laughs> round here. So fast to start us off. Just an instant start uh, to the round. 
And I mean, that wasn't the only fast round he drove. He also got the 0.37 later on. Yeah, we're gonna see that now. This jump right here. We we're so focused on the battle, we didn't even think about it. But yeah, up front, Otak just crushing on pace here. And though they didn't win that map against Big, they might certainly win it against other teams. But we could also just talk about uh, Vortex, as that's the map that we're gonna be playing. As you can see here in the start of Vortex, there's this moving block that the players have to drive up on, then wait, and then turn to the left. They can't turn themselves because there is a no steer block. Yeah. That, that blocks them from, uh, and, and well, I, from steering. I think we talked about that this map stylistically should suit um, Carmine Corp, because Bren has his origins in uh, obstacle maps, like mini RPG maps. Uh, and you see this map being quite that style. You got some pipes you drive on, you got the quarter pipe jumps. You do have that really weird middle part with the bug slide. These are all things I feel suit Bran and yeah. Otak, Serrator players. I think this is, if, if, I've said this many times, but if you are a player that enjoys um, the Royale game mode, then this this map will be your favorite. Like this is such a, a gimmicky map. Uh, but I want well, I want to just quickly uh, hear, what did you call the RPGs? I called it a mini RPG. A, a mini? Yeah. A mini RPG. A mini, yes. So. Because they've been they've been mean to you. They bullied you. So, I, I, mini is a short word of miniature. No, it is not. What do you call if there if there's a small map in the corner? What do you call that? A mini map. What? Yeah, I saw it is on so, the mini map. It's a mini map. Also, it's not miniature. It's miniature. Okay, so how do you spell the infamous Disney character that is uh, Minnie Mouse? Yeah, Minnie. But two ends, M I N N I. So then, naturally, it should be mini. So you're you're okay. Well, this discussion will continue. This later will tonight. not be a mini discussion. This will be a long one. But rounds have started. The players are back. Looks like the issues are resolved. And here we go into vortex. KC are doing the bug slide line, oh, and that means they're going to be gaining uh, time against what bigger are doing at least this first round. So here, I mean, that bug slide line is what you love to see. I, I love to see it. It looks so much more gimmicky. It looks so much more fun. Like it gives an extra twist to the game. And I mean, all the players, they're still driving shoulder to shoulder here. So it's not like it gave them too much, but still, I, I love to see that line. Ren has to lead before the last drift. You want to get so much speed here. Granati has that speed to work with now. And it's just a drag race to the finish line. It's just a long straight. And Granati is slightly faster. Is it going to be enough for a snipe? Bren trying to defend, and he will remain ahead. 0.5 by both the top players. And Otak only a tenth behind that again. Great round by all the players. I like I like this map. This is my favorite map. Oh, um, okay. This is one of my favorite maps here. Have you played? Have you played Royale at all recently? Uh, no, I have not played a lot of Royale. I recently. think I think because uh, once again, if you guys don't know, the console release of the game is gonna come out here tomorrow, and Royale is one of the free to play game modes, so that might actually pop off soon. Yeah, it, I mean, it has a lot of uh, cool tricks in it. Oftentimes, some gimmicks on each map they have to do, like plastic balances and whatnot. Um, and it's quite competitive. You got the Super Real every every morning, uh, afternoon, and evening, right? Yep. So, but look at this lead from Bren. He's executing that bug side line so fast. And this world record, if Bren keeps getting these splits, that's a 36. That's the first 36 we've seen on the checkpoints Ooh. halfway through the race. This is certainly world record pace from Bren if he can keep it up. Go oh, Bren, let's see what he can he can cook up here. Masa is getting dangerously close to him as well, but now we're running into the last right-hander before the identity, and it's gonna be oh, so Bren, hard to overtake, but Masa with the speed. What is that speed? Masa is now in the lead. What time will this be? Bren had to give up that first place, going low on the wall rider. Right? Masa driving into the finish with a 105.41. <laughs> and Bren was almost three times ahead of that. I just want to tell you. That could have been a that point one, yeah. That was a ridiculous run uh, in the start from Bren. So that bug side line, it is working out. We saw Into the Breach debut it in week one yep. of the Grand League. Uh, and KC are one of the first teams that we've seen copy them or pick it up. Maybe they had it themselves. We don't know. But it's very fun to see more teams do it. If, if you look at... Yeah? No, yeah, I, mean, I just want to say if people were confused about how Masa got all that speed, it's because the last section just before the identity is a slight drift. And the less you drift on there, the more risky it is, but the more momentum, the more exit speed you get out of it. And that's what Masa just chose to risk, and it worked out great for him. You just look at this from the perspective of Big, it looks so hilarious, the way Casey are just flying through that checkpoint, catching the reactor and the bugs at the same time, and then stabilizing the car, but... It's working out. We see a very close battle up front between Bren who did it and Granati who just drove 
regular racing lines, but I'm coming through with more speed. And then that drift, as you said, it's very important to get all the space you can for that slide. Bren missed it slightly, leaving an opportunity for Muscle, but look at the exit speed this time. He should have first place on lock if he can dodge the obstacles. Two are done and one left to go. He gets that one as well. Bren might beat the world record with those splits, to be honest with you. What's the time? Point 21. Oh. And Bren finally gets the top spot on the leaderboard and a draw for his team. Which is great because, I mean, when you think about it, the last two maps, uh, Otak beat world record on previous map. Bren beats world record on this map. I mean, we're seeing a very fast KC today. They're so fast, but they have to harmonize. They have to play together and uh, actually like get the, the, the fast times together. Because if Bren drops a world record and Otak's crashed, it doesn't really give you money. No, many points. that's one point, right? And it's one point for both teams at that point. So, so it's very important that they can they can get these rounds together. That's what Big are doing better than them currently. As we see a big mistake though, Masa crashing out, and maybe this is the round that can make it happen. What I think is crazy about that box light line is it looks like it's not supposed to be consistent, but they do it perfectly every time. Like that's that's so fun. Dude, Granati dropping some fast checkpoints without the box slide. 37-1 here. It's very, very fast without using it. And now he's looking to keep it up in the obstacle jumps. That last drift though. It's where Otak's looking to see if he can make something happen, but Granati has probably decent, enough speed. A for decent this. amount of speed. He did go a little bit tighter than he could have, but still a great amount of speed. That's going to be a fast time as well. Not quite well record, I think. New. No. Point uh, seven, but draw. still, still a great showing by Granati. And you don't need to drive world record if you notice that you're point three, point four ahead. It's okay to slow down. Um, it's not about having the most world records. It's about the consistency of your driving. It is cool to have world records, though. And okay, cool, I cool didn't say it wasn't, matter. I, I didn't say it wasn't cool. I said it's, but it's cooler to play like in a way where you know you're gonna win. Ah, before the fans, for the clips. Like think about the highlight moments. Okay, winning might well, be I a mean, one big highlight, but a world record clip does pretty well on uh, my YouTube channel. I'm just saying, <laughs> <laughs> if Fine. we could farm a couple today, that would be great for the upload schedule. Thank you very much. But uh, here, once again, we see the bug slide line. It's just such a fun line coming out. Masa and Granati, they're not out of it yet. Granati jumping up to oh, third place. Otak. We have a slide out from Otak. And now, big Masa must have touched something there because he lost so much Ooh. speed. Bren almost <laughs> flying out. He has a lot more speed than Granati, though. We're going into the final two, left and then a right hander before the identity. Bren jumping up to first place, but Granati could still overtake here with a good slide. And it does not look like he gets the speed. He actually released a little bit, and Bren is now alone in the lead no mistakes to show off and that's gonna be what looks like a tie another draw here just putting the match higher and higher tension as we go along here six to six whichever team can get off to an advantage now puts himself very close to that 10 mark and could potentially take the map like big here if they take vortex uh, that would be massive for them right they have a good chance of doing so it would be big for big to get uh, this map absolutely I like I, I, it's 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 hard to cast a team nope. that has a regular word in it. Yep. Like, can we just get a, a a team that's called like? Well, what you could do with your mini map, you could call you could go big for big or something, and then uh, and then that would make sense. In I your could language. pronounce it French, and I could say big. Wha. Did the French just put extra words in, or what? Yeah, yeah you always big end wha? every word with u e, like wa, big wa. Really? Okay. We see Granadwa with the lead right now, but Otaka. <laughs> is coming back into the round with <laughs> the pipe looking like he can make a comeback happen but it's gonna be tough as we will see the uh, identity Janik. yeah we're getting close to the identity once again it's gonna come down to this last drift who's gonna get the most speed out of it and granati trying to push it but i think he had to do a small release oh, once again but they're so close to each other who has the most speed i think granati uh... <laughs> can push it it's gonna be down to the who's gonna get the best slide into the finish Granati gets the overtake. That is such a close round between Granati and Otak. Masa getting third, so that's gonna be the two points for Big, one point for KC, eight to seven. This is close. They put him in the lead there, Granati. His team now just two points away. Carmine Corp does not want to let this slip away. They have to defend what they can. As they're going up against off-road, I believe, the next choice from Big, and that's gonna be a tough map. If you're driving world record pace on a map, you might as well try to win it. And they get a good start here, but now they have to nail the bug slide. They can't fail it. And it is the hardest line to do on this map. Jumping wide here, carrying the speed 
and then flying to the checkpoint to land in that bug slide. Looks like they get a good angle. That's going to be a lot of speed for Otak. They're not even close, but Bren and Otak have gotten off to a good start. But they have not fended off the big players. They are very much so in contention. Oh! And that crash from Otak means Bren has to get first. He has to get past both of them now in the tail end of the map. Yeah, he really, like, yeah, because if he doesn't get first, that's going to be big winning the map here. And it is Casey's Whoa, map choice. Comeback, so he's getting speed. closer. He needs this turn to Push. be the fastest turn. He's not going to get enough speed. Granati is going to pull away now. He's going to hope for a mistake there from Granati. Granati does not give up. And that's going to be a perfect identity. Granati getting first place. And that is indeed big getting this map number four. That was so clutch from Granati, dropping a point for when he needed to. 8 to 10 from Big. The world records don't matter on both the previous maps from KC, as Big just keeps consistently driving fast and winning the map. And, but, and, and that's what goes to show. It's definitely all about the team effort. Like, one player cannot carry the team. You need to have a team effort to get this down. Here we are going to be looking at these um, replays once again. We see the bug slide lines uh, coming out. I mean, it's just amazing to see. Yeah, and that record from Bran, I think that's going to stand for a little bit at least. It's shaving off a tenth of a second. But who knows what other teams might have picked up that line. Again, this is a big day. We got five total games of Trackmania. This is only the second game. So we get to see every team in action, and maybe someone else has, has picked up that line as well. So Big actually has the opportunity to five or four and one Ooh. against KC. This is this is Big's map choice, right? If I'm, yeah, correction if I'm not on the, the map. We're not playing offer. We're playing Airwalk. Yeah, this is and Big map. Yeah, it's a great map for Big. They picked it. The reason they picked it is last time it was played, Massa actually won four of the five rounds. They were very quick with it. Do we have a tactical timeout or? Oh no, it just got made. Okay, good. Uh, so we're we're now into the first round here. You're gonna see these bumper blocks. When the players drive over them, uh, it's just gonna shoot the car forwards in in sort of a jumping fashion. Uh, it is it is a little bit of a weird block, but the players they have gotten it down to a consistency. And this is where we've seen Granati and Massa really shine on this map. This is why I'm saying that Big has the opportunity to go for a four-one uh, score scoreline against KC, which would be amazing. Honestly. Yeah, and a three-zero start to their season would be, I think, what. Very few people had predicted. A lot of people have them near the bottom of their tier lists going in because of, well, the last season didn't really go that great, but the synergy we're seeing and the consistency has done them so well so far. Airwalk is a pretty consistent map, but it has some tricky spots, oh. like dropping the gear in that drift, getting an unpredictable line, Bren clipping out, and now the identity. If you haven't seen this before, first they bumper across these two jumps, and then there's one massive bumper jump in the ending where they have to catch a mid-air platform. Looks impossible when you see it, but you have to land in the corner. And Otak is looking like he got a bit closer, but jumping further, and it will be the ace for Big. I mean, off. Granati almost going too far, uh, but he, he he did drop down. He had to release quite a lot in the ending. That slowed him down, but that, that identity is not trivial. It's definitely difficult landing exactly on those bumper blocks. Massa and Granati, they do seem to have it down into a consistent way of doing it. So they're going to start the, the map off with an ace, putting a lot of pressure on KC. Yeah, that is not what you want for KC here. They have to mount a defense on this. They can't afford to lose the map. And the only way forward is by driving 0.5 which is only two tenths off the record. Masa and Granati both show they can do that last time they played it. And with even more practice, I predict they can go even faster. So, scary situation if you're rooting for the French squad. But they did do really well last season. They were actually the only team last season to beat BDS, making them go under, uh, dropping the undefeated streak. Yeah, from BDS yeah, in the regular season. They went 6-1, so. but that's still a really good, that really good showing for BDS last season. Now we might see Solary do it this season, but Big could also be the people who. Ooh. Okay, I mean, the there's gear. a slight, slight mistake. Yeah, that's that gear you were talking about. Mas unfortunately uh, eating it right there, but Granati is still up there fighting with Otag in this baguette of French players, as you said. Uh, he might be able to push it here in the ending. He has a really good identity, so we see them jump Ooh, once, jump Otak twice. Goes. And then a final jump into the finish. Is Otak. he overtaking? Oh, it looks like they jumped parallel, but you saw Otak turn this car sideways. So the nose of his car will touch the finish line sooner that way. And I think yep. that's how he won the round. Just angling the car towards, it sounds very simple, but that's what he did. 
And the thing about that is that sometimes matches do come down to the you know hundreds of a second, thousands of a second. So that minuscule little uh, extra thing could be what decides a round for him. As you just said, it could be what just happened. It's uh, kind of like uh, when you see sprinters, they would like push their head forwards at the end of the sprint to yeah. get an extra hundredth. That's kind of the similar thing that Otak just did there. But it does give him a very shaky jump because he has to full steer mm. left going into that jump to get it. If he's just a little bit off the timing, it's a jump into Narnia. Like, push. he's not making it. They push their head forwards? Yeah. Like the a Naruto sprinters. run? Like, uh, yeah. Like, you said, like, like, on the finish line, will push his head forward. He will go full on anime style on the on the finish. Yeah, like, you, you dive into it. That's sick. Well, I mean, that might be what we're seeing here from, from KC. Uh, they're also driving really well right now. Granati once again in a French baguette sandwich. But Masa, this time around, is right there up with them. And Big has a really good identity. It seems like they're super consistent. We've seen mistakes uh, on every round so far from KC here on the identity. Just look at so this difference of angle. Oh, this time we see exactly Otak what I missing. talked about. Going too wide, Masa going too fast, and it's going to be Granati. Ooh. Somehow sniping that away from Bren by nine thousandths of a second. I mean, coming down to the thousands on this map is kind of crazy, <laughs> but Masa, he's turtling into the finish. He does not mind it at all. I want us to at some point have a, a photo finish tool that just takes a capture of the exact moment the win across the finish line yeah. to look at where the cars are because that round, it legitimately looked like Renati was behind. We need a, yeah, we, we need an extra PC just to spectate the finish line oh. so that that replay can be played. <laughs> That is uh, when Trickmania becomes a massive esport. You can be a part of that. Tell your friends about it. Tell them this is happening. It's a lot of esports on Sundays, but this is one you don't want to miss as it is some of the best entertainment out there. These players are putting on. I do truly want to say that I think Trickmania is one of the best esports that exists. It has constant action and the players, they true. it's underrated just how much time and effort these players are putting into these maps. So Ooh, if you drift. like Trickmania, please do go ahead and get your family and friends to uh, to enjoy the entertainment as well with us here. As we see Casey almost getting sweeped four to one by Erling International Gaming. Yeah, and Mossa just completely crushed the French players in that one drift, gaining about two tons. But here, Otak is going to hit his sideways line. Mossa is going to go for his consistent line. But look at this, Otak is going to gain about three tons in the identity with that. Um, oh, Granati overtaking Bren, so it's still gonna just be a draw, which Big will take any day of the week right now because they're just getting closer and closer, and now they can they can ace it to, to close out this map as well, and indeed the entire match. On to the next round. We haven't seen any mistakes in the start yet. Sometimes if you hit that first bumper a little bit off the ideal angle, it can slow you down, but the players have been able to avoid that. So the rounds have been very fun to watch. Close races all the way through. And we see, again, and we can then fully appreciate the differences of what the approaches the players take. When you see them side by side here, you can see Casey going a bit wider than big. We just want the inside line. But I want you to pay attention to Massa in this next drift. The gear dropping drift. Sometimes he misses the line, but when he doesn't, he gains a ton of time. It's a very sharp trajectory here in this uh, next line. Yeah, let's take a look here. He goes, he sets up wide, gets an inside apex. Right here. Going oh. fully inside. Does he get the gear? He keeps it. And he is going to get closer, but last time he completely crushed the rest of the field with that. Granati is going to gain on Brad. They could ace right now and close the game if they keep it together in the identity. They have the lead by about two tenths to the nearest opponent. Can they get the jumps right? Masa and Granati going side by side into oh. it. They appear again on the bumper okay. and they do land it. Masa though, wide, but oh. it's enough to win the game. Big taking down Carmine Corp 4-1. That's a great showing here from Burling International Gaming, taking down Carmine Corp with an outstanding performance. Even though KC got multiple world records in the previous maps, Big showed that, but we have the consistency within the team. We have the full team effort. We're always gonna be first, second, first, third, and that's what gonna that's what's gonna give them the points in the long run. And they are undefeated so far. They keep up with Solary, 3-0 and to start the season for Big. Uh, just about equals all the wins they had the entire last season. So just formidable from them to show up so strong. And I don't think a lot of people had expected it, but I think everyone loves to see it. Oh, absolutely. Like, uh, and I think now Big has gone through some of the some of the harder harder uh, teams to face already. I mean, they still have to face Solary. <laughs> okay, they still, <laughs> they have, still to have to face Solary. Solary, Solary um, is the big opponent. But they, they, they defeated ITB. They've defeated G1. 
They've defeated now uh, KC. This, these are some big names that they've taken down already. There's one team as well that a lot of people, I think, have on their mind when they think of the strongest teams. It's BDS, and they are the ones playing up next. The next game, BDS versus G1. We can perhaps show the full schedule of today so you can get uh, an overview of what's left to come. We still have three more games. Three more games. This is a long, <laughs> this is a long, long day. eSport day today. So we have BDS versus G1 coming up here very shortly. Then ITB versus Alliance. And then KC is going to play their second map of the day. And BDS is also going to play their second map of the day here at 9. So yeah, two matches of the day to catch up with some issues that happened last week. Some rescheduled matches. So tons of action left to go. We'll take a quick break though and catch our breath. But... When we return, it's going to be more and more Trackmania. So really hope you uh, enjoyed so far. Grab a snack, grab some dinner maybe. It's around yeah. that time. And uh, we'll see you guys again very soon. Don't go anywhere. Hello and welcome back to the Trackmania World Tour. Stage 2, 2023. And we are now in week 3. It is uh, game 3. Week 3, game 3. And what a banger this is going to be. Two m amazing That's teams right. that are going to battle it out. We just saw, if you if you just came in, if you just came in uh, during the break, we saw KC and Big just play a game. And Big won quite, a, quite overwhelmingly with a 4-1 lead. So amazing performance from Big. And now we're going to see two other teams that are amazing. That's going to be BDS and G1. And this is also going to be something that I think could go to a map 7. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, I think this day is just getting better and better. BDS and G1, two of the best teams last year, uh, last year, last season, and uh, especially BDS. I mean, they won the regular season going 6-1, to one, only dropping one game to KC, and they did beat G1 that last time in a best of seven, so this could really go the distance. I think this is going to go the distance. If there's any game today that's going to go to a map seven, I think this is the one. Uh, here you can see the players, Alfie and Aurel for team BDS. They got some pretty good accolades on their team and they've been driving last season. They, they ended up on second place for the entire stage. So definitely not a team to take lightly. Yeah, and in the start of the season, I mean, they did do pretty well, but they did drop that uh, best of seven to Solary. That's yes. the one they lost. So, they, But the thing is that they... Uh, they won against Solary two times before then. Mm -hmm. Like out of three games, they won twice. They just lost the finals, which is unfortunate. That's true. Now G1, they are two youngsters from France, only 18 and 20. Very fast pace from both of them. Glenn has some world records in the league of his own. And Binks has some really good personal bests. But so far in today, we've seen that world records might not be all that matters. Consistency is also key. And oh, then you've got players like Aurel, and never crashes really, and Offie, on maps like Vortex, just never crashes either. So, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, I've always said, we, we talked about this uh, last week when it was uh, Alliance that was about to be playing, where whether it's going to be consistency or pace or like world record pace that's going to give it. We just saw Big having the team consistency, uh, being able to drive together for most of the rounds, and that gave them the victory over... Um, Sorry, over KC, who, even though they drove multiple world records, weren't able to quite inch out that victory. We're going to have Picks and Mans coming up shortly. Now, Danik, do you have to predict BDS and G1? Who do you think wins? Because chat it seems to be favoring BDS. Uh, I think that that's a great call based on their performance last season. But you never know, because based on the performance last season, you would also assume that Big wasn't going to win. Yeah. But they just won three times in a row. So I think I'm going to I'm gonna go on a limb and say G1 is going to win this day. You're going to say G1? Yeah. I am. Oh, I was planning on being the guy to say G1 after you said BDS. But I will also say G1. I think if Binks has a good day today, then they're going to win. Because G1, they won their game last week. And it was much in part due to Gwen always covering for Binks when he crashed. Yeah. Uh, round after round, Gwen, Gwen was able to keep that first place. Deny points or deny aces and secure wins. And if Gwen arrives like that and Binks fixes up the mistakes, then I think they will win. But two minutes left until we start this pick and ban. I say we get ourselves on the server and get hyped for yes. game three out of also, five today. I, I, I mean, I don't think we can say this enough while we still have the two minutes to say. Uh, write down, well, don't write it down on your calendar because it's happening tomorrow. The game is releasing on console uh, for free. You can download it if you got uh, PlayStation, uh, PlayStation 5. I don't, I don't know if it's on 4, maybe. Uh, and on Xbox, the new Xbox. So go ahead and, and get that done. Honestly, um, even if you have the game on a PC already, sometimes it's just nice to sit on the couch. Oh, yeah, and, and playing game. it in the living room. Yeah, playing it in the living room. Uh, you know, uh, I, I think I would do that. Yeah. 1v1 your dad. See if he can beat you 
on gold medals. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, and that's not gonna happen. My my, I, I used to Is play. Is your dad a gamer? Well, I used to play Mario Kart with him, but I think there's a pretty decent difference between playing Trackmania and Mario Kart. I, I, I'm and my. But I mean, challenge your siblings. That's what I would do. Ooh, that's Sibling. a good call. Or your or your friends. Yeah, invite them over. Like, hey, I mean, let's uh, <laughs> let's play our game or y'all. You can even play together. I think you have split screen. Split screen uh, I Royale? think so. Yes, that'd be, that'd be but but to me, it's mostly about the fact that you can sit on the couch and enjoy some some gameplay uh, instead of having to go up and well for me. Uh, sit at, and, at the PC, right? I, I, there's a big difference. But let's jump in to what we see here, which uh, is the picks and bans. Yeah, see anything um, right now on the black screen, so we will call it out. Oh, for there you go, there you go, there you go. So uh, we have Speed and Sinuous ban. Now, can they Sinuous stop? Can been... they stop banning it? It hasn't been played for three full weeks, Janik. I'm starting a riot. Well, what you could do is you could just play it yourself, but that's fine. Okay, I guess I could just try to qualify for the top league. Yeah, honestly, why why aren't you just in the tournament and pick it instead? Because the tournament needs a caster, and that's where I'm oh, shining. Yeah. But pool first picked by Gwen and Binks makes a lot of sense. Vortex, the answer from BDS. We also saw them dominate that map and control from G1. So the reason these two picks are coming through for G1 is that Gwen is a monster on those two tracks. Offy is a monster on Vortex, so th th that's the dynamic here. It's gonna probably go both teams dominating their first picks. So now that, it's a bit that, more open, though. Now I think, do you go breaking. Maybe? I think BDS. Uh, well, I mean, I we haven't seen them play as much as the others. Uh, I think they should go based on their skill set. Yeah, some, something is yeah, the answer. Something that's consistent that they can do. And I think Binks and Gwen are gonna favor off road. It's just such a such a French map. I feel like this completes their pick and ban really well. Airwalk and Grip are still up, which are two maps they've shown to prefer as well. But against Offy, Offy was very good on Grip, so I'm scared of that if I'm G1 here. Uh, oh, I'm trying to think very hard about which maps we've seen G1 shine on, but G1 has lost uh, against Big. They won against Alliance, but it was, it's was it been so close. Like every single time we've seen G1 play, they've gone to map seven and they haven't been like dominant at all. Airwalk, are they hoping that, yeah, Grip will be the sixth pick there? Airwalk is interesting. I didn't expect that, but I like they can Airwalk, make it work. Though. It's a really good, and off-road pick randomly, that's also a fine map. We might, so what, what I just said uh, holds true that G1 has never not gone to a map seven so far. Yeah. So if they- <laughs> They've played long games. Yeah, but that also means that we haven't seen them dominate on anything really. Uh, so it, it is kind of difficult for me to to um, kind of foresee what is going to happen on these maps. Because well, I think it could go either way. There's one player I want you to pay attention to in this very first map, and that is Gwen. Gwen on pool, out of 13 rounds he's played, he has gotten first place in nine of them. So nine first places out of 13 possible, and only one crash on the map so far. That is a, quite a clean record. Yep. Like, he will consistently drive... 105.2, uh, and he even holds the world record with a 105.1. So watch out for Gwen here. He is the guy to beat. And if uh, Binks can join him, this could be gamers first sweeping map one here. I, th I think that there's definitely a good chance for them to do so. But I also want to say that we saw Big and KC play this map earlier today. And even though Big has a great track record on it, the map is really consistent. So it might still be some very, very tight rounds. I think that's what Pool is going to show us. It's going to show us maps or rounds that are down to the 10th, even hundreds of a second. And to also give you guys the stats that we do have for BDS on this map so far. You have uh, Offy with a 105.6 average so far, and Aurel with a 106.7 average. So Aurel has had quite a lot of crashes on this, and uh, not really the fastest pace, but yeah, it's Aurel, been a week and a lot can happen in practice. Aurel has also never won a round on this map. So, I mean, maybe today is the time that he can do so. He is in the bag right now, but that's still a long map to go. Not even oh, halfway. Oh, that again. being said, that's a pretty big crash. And now Afi is tasked to try to avoid gamers first to get that ace. I mean, getting first place and making it a draw, that would be great. But anything other than an ace is important. I can already tell you, Afi's going to have to improve his personal best driven on the servers, a 105.3 to keep up with the two young French players because they are a team that goes for one stat and maxes it out, and that is pace. They just want the fastest times. They want these aces, oh. but Gwen stumbling by himself off into that obstacle now leaving Binks alone in first and he's almost getting challenged by Offy here. Offy having to back out of that turn though to not hit the wall meaning Binks takes the round victory but it will only be a draw as Gwen falls down into fourth.
Yeah, that's a, that's a tough mistake there from Gwen. He had a little bit too much speed, didn't get the right-hander early enough. Uh, if you full send that right-hander, you're going you're gonna to drift, right? So he had to uh, go a little bit slowly, but that sent him right into one of those blocks, uh, face first, planted. So. And you might also think, why go that wide towards that obstacle? You have a lot of space on the right. The reason is you want to avoid going underwater for as much as you can. The less underwater you go, the more speed you get. That's what Gwen was trying to do yep. by going all the way close to that one. So it is, it is you know, risk-reward, and G1 is definitely one of those high-risk, high-reward type teams. Yeah, I mean, there was an interview from Solary where they're talking about their semi-final match last season against G1, and they go, like, to each other. Pack, if they keep driving like this, there's nothing we can do. If they drop WebEx on this map, we can't compete. But... If you see them crash, that's where you got to pick your opportunity. Here again, the pace is absurd from Gwen and Binks, driving side by side, 200s apart after the entire map left with the identity now to go. Binks keeping that first place as Gwen has slid out. Can he hold on to it? The last turn, going to go for it early, not going to get a lot of speed. And it looks like he will hold on to it. And with Afia with a mistake here, going to get passed by Gwen, and that's an ace. That Out is an ace. I thought that was going to be a draw. I mean, that's really bad because Team BDS, they need to capitalize on the small mistakes that G1 does. What G1, So I think the play style against G1 is if they drive uh, their, their maximum, you're not going to win. But you're just not going to win. You're just not going to win. But they also do quite a lot of mistakes because the lines that G1 drive, they're going for basically world record or bust, right? Yep. So once they make those mistakes, you need to oh, capitalize whoa, on it. For example, yeah, right here. And this is where BDS just needs to capitalize. They cannot. They cannot throw these rounds away. But they have gotten past the one world record goes. They need to get past both of them. Binks is still there. And he dropped a 105-33, beating Offie's best match time. Oh. And Offie just crashed out, trying to push to stay ahead of him. Now Arel, the first place defender, as Gwen will also pass Offie here. And that means this is now in G1's favor again. Binks is slowly but surely catching up, but Ooh. that's an outside touch. Arel will have a lot more breathing room now, a lot more space to work with. And this could just result in a draw. All players know their task here is to not lose further time, at least. I don't think Biggs is going to push for this. I think Arel is going to get to keep his first place here. And have it be a draw. Binks getting closer, though, and Gwen getting even closer. Great ending by him, but yes, a draw is on the board. Yeah, I think that's that's good for BDS. Now, unfortunately, Afia did make that mistake. Orel winning uh, a round, though, which is great. His first or, uh, round uh, win on the map? Yeah, yeah, his first round win on the map. Great for his stats. That is, uh, I think that's 10, 10 rounds on the map, but he's now one run, one, 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 one. One, one, yes. Yeah. <laughs> English can be a very tricky language with all its small or might you say mini differences between oh words. Oh my lord. But alas, we go into the next round here. Five to two Jake Gamers first on their own choice. And they're looking to keep that stat up right now with first and second place in the early parts of the round. I mean, G1 looks like they they have this map on lock, honestly. It's just they cannot do these major mistakes that we've seen them do on actually most of the rounds so far. They just have the pace that is unrivaled if they get through the the map without a mistake. Here again, two tents. Off into the wall. That's going to be a bigger lead now as Arel was in fourth. Now coming into third, but still, he has to somehow close this gap or he is getting aced. This is going to be tough into the water part. Gwen not making a mistake here. Taking first place from Big temporarily. Going wide there, so close to the outside corner. Still picking up the checkpoint on the outside, and that is going to be the ace locked in. Great times as well. 105.3, 105.4, and an ace. This is very tough yeah, to play against. This is a solid performance from Gwen and Binks. Jumping up to eight points now. BDS has to get two separate aces of their own back to back honestly and that's gonna not and, like that's and, that's pressure and so here's where i feel you could improve the g1 model by just oh Aurel. oh that's tough that's tough in such an important round Uffy forced to get first here but if you take the team gamers first and you have these players risk like there's no tomorrow in the first couple rounds on the map maybe get a couple aces and then when you have this position you gotta change your style you no longer need to sprint you just need yeah. to jog at a controlled pace and get two more points like yeah as long as they don't get aced they're gonna win like there's there's no universe where if they just get first or second as long as they're not bottom four they will win this map right or so bottom, you, you, like, you three need four. to recognize the, okay we have a, a tremendous lead here even if i don't pass off of this round from binks yeah it's still one more point gained and one left to go so 
if if Binks is uh, is doing what you're saying, which he should oh, be. Oh, but they can actually close the map right now. They Glenn could. is passing Aurel. Glenn is passed Aurel, so if Binks gets passed off you, this is the map right here. Going into the water turn, he gets more speed, but oh, almost into the corner. Still enough, though. And Binks, with that, will take the map together with Glenn. That round, they saw an opportunity. They went for it. And they close out map one in style. They close out map one early. And, and if you see an option to close down the map, you probably should, because you never know. Last last time, Big versus KC, we saw KC come back from a 2-7 deficit. So uh, it is possible. So closing out the map, definitely a valid option. It's nice to see G1 with such a demanding start here. Good job uh, as we see some of these replays. Yeah, it really was a big highlight reel, but this ace going from 5-2 to two to 8-2 to two is so crushing. Like, BDS, they can't really do much after that ace took place. But now we go into Vortex. We talked about Pool being a map to look out for Gwen on. This map, pay attention to Afi. I'm going to give you some of his stats. This is quite absurd. He's only played six rounds on it. He's won four of them. And his average is a 105.559. The world record is a 0 0.2. But before today, it was a 0 0.3. So his average is within two tenths of the world record. Six so rounds, no crashes, four wins. Like, he is... Very fast on this map. Let's see if any of them has adopted this bug slide line that we've been talking about so much. We did see it earlier Light today. Oh, well, wow. no, never mind. Oh, no, they're all going tight. So it does not look like it's quite there. They, they probably will be going for the low air time. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gwen going very wide. Also flying to Narnia. So he is going to be out of it this, this time, which gives BDS a great opportunity to start off the map with a lot of points here. Yeah, and again, you see that guy in first? Uffy, you're probably gonna see him in first a lot of times in this map, unless G1 are able to uh, keep up. I don't think they have the pace on the stats before this map, so they're gonna have to show something we haven't seen yet. Uffy with a lot of speed. Aurel almost able to get an ace here if he passes Binks, but he has less speed, so oh. he needs something. He crashes out. That could be a draw now. Offy's gonna secure first. Did Gwen get the identity right? Is he passed Aurel? No. Actually, oh, he is. is. Aurel has reset once again, and that's gonna give them a draw. Now, this is this is one of those uh, times where BDS, they should have capitalized on the fact that one of the G1 players, they were eight seconds behind. Now, the identity is not trivial. You definitely need to um, complete it in a... I mean, it's one of the most... It's one of the most consistent identities we've seen so far, but it is definitely not easy. It is not at all, and I mean, the thing is, you have to always respond to how that moving block on the pipe pushes you, yep. and if you miss that adjustment by just a little bit, flick for a tenth of a second extra or opposite, that could cost you greatly, and Aurel has missed the first flick here on the first pipe. Looks like one second behind the others, so Uffy, though he is menacing on this map, he has to play against two of the fastest players in the league, and Gwen has a better start than him. This time he oh, touches. Oh, Afi with a touch. Ooh, Gwen and Binks now could potentially ace. They are going to be aware of the splits and the situation here. And the only thing that really can stop them is the pipe. Yes, I mean, they are one and a half seconds ahead. They should be able to take this down. And an ace for G1 on Team BDS's map pick would be huge. Here, they set up the drift. Now, all they have to do is drive over this pipe without getting flung out here by the moving parts. And it does look like both the G1 players do that beautifully and head into the finish. That's going to be an ace for G1. Nicely secured. A 105.7 as well. Somewhat fast from Gwen, even when he didn't have to. Showing some signs of pace when he needs to in the next rounds and that probably puts further pressure on Afi. It does. I mean, Afi could definitely drive faster than a 0.7 though, but he uh, he now knows that oh. he oh, binks with a huge mistake. That's a full-on respawn. Gwen is going to be alone in oh, the oh, Rel falling off. Wait, does that give Binks the option to overtake? It, it does. Yeah, it did. Oh, and that's actually quite disastrous for BDS because imagine a scenario where none of them failed to start. This could be an ace for them right back but here, the best they could probably settle for is a draw as uh, Afi's just going to try to hold on to first and Gwen even though he crashes here, he still has six seconds to work with. Yeah, nah, th this is this is probably what looks to be a decent oh. <laughs> Okay, there's, there's a lot of mistakes coming in this round. Afi is going to be all alone in the lead. He knows this. He knows that he can probably relax a little bit. He still has to get over the identity without making a mistake, and we've seen him make mistakes before on this identity, but um, if he if he saves it a little bit, he sees the, he sees the, uh, the difference here in time, the delta down to second place, so 
I think Ooh, he's gonna hold it. You know yeah. the pipe's gonna push you in a certain direction. You counter that movement and you get across. Offy also gonna drop right around a point seven of his own, point six actually. So one up in Gwen a little bit on the pace there, but a draw comes through. But a now, two to five though. Two, yeah, two to five. A bit surprising. Just to touch on that crash you saw from Binks, you might be wondering, God, what an idiot! Why didn't he steer and avoid yeah. the checkpoint? Uh, the entire start is no steering. You can't really see it, but they don't. They're, they're not able to steer until they cross the checkpoint. So they use this moving disc. If you leave it too early, though, then you cannot steer the car away from the checkpoint. You are just headed for a crash. You can't avoid. It. But all the players, they do do so, uh, you know, perfectly here on this round. Gwen getting the lowest amount of airtime. So the, the higher you jump, uh, the slower you're gonna be because you don't land earlier. You need that. You need to accelerate as soon as possible. Gwen and Afi got that the best, and now Aurel is fighting here oh. for the last. Gwen straight into the checkpoint again, and Binks is now tasked to try to make sure that BDS doesn't get this ace and equalize the scoreline. The Afi checkpoint here is mental, Janik. 30.5, 37.02 without the uh, bug slide line. It's a crazy split, and we saw that world record earlier today from Bren. It could be challenged here from Afi. He has similar checkpoints. Just needs to get really good speed in that last drift to beat it. But even a decent drift will hold the lead against Binks here. Looks like he's slightly slower than Binks, but this will be enough speed and he will oh. bounce the car. And here, actually, pay attention because oh. suddenly Aurel has passed both Gwen and Binks, and that's an ace. 0.45 from and Afi as well. That is so important for BDS. Jumping back up to 5-5, equalizing the scoreline. They're now back in the game on their own map choice. And this is, like, now they can't afford to make any big mistakes again, but it must be such a breath of relief to, to get back up there. Yeah, like, Vortex is supposed to be their stronghold map. This is where they're saying, like, we're playing our best card. You can't beat us here. We're going to take one quick point on the scoreboard. But... They, they almost, like, didn't have it here. Now they're equal on fighting ground, but 2 to 5 looked very dim for a while. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But now they're back. They are back, and they are going to show us what they oh, have in store for G1. For okay, Orel overtaking Binks, though. Gwen and Afi fighting shoulder <laughs> to shoulder. One <laughs> they're one car in the bobsleigh. Like, same line, Ooh. but Afi got a slow down on the water landing. Gwen pushing ahead. Binks right there, but he slid out. Oh, he slid out. And so it is first and fourth. Second and third, it's a drawing position right now. And decent pace from Gwen up front, but really, I think he's just gonna recognize trying to save the pipe. That's I mean, what he You, you would hope so, but the, again, the pipe is not trivial. He can fall off, so let's take a look at him. Will he drive over here clean? He did do so. He's gonna maintain that lead. First place goes to Gwen, Afi and Aurel on a clean second, driving in tandem there. Uh, one hundreds away from each other, and Binks there two seconds behind, but a draw coming in six to six. Yeah, and uh, BDS might have hoped to make more of that, but off the unfortunately getting that slow down in the water, else they could have taken the lead on the match now. Pretty sure he had the pace to do so. But six to six, this is all oh, Gwen Ooh. off the side, getting pushed, not ready for the movement to counter it. And that means another opportunity here in favor of BDS. This is something they have to take advantage of. So hopefully Aurel or Afi, they will not be doing any major mistakes. Getting first or second would be huge. Afi going for this low jump once again. Getting that backward landing, getting more speed than Binks. Pushing ahead now. Also reducing airtime there. More speed into the bobsleigh then. Can he control the landing though? Getting that stable car and then not sliding out. Beautifully done from Afi. He will now be extending ahead. And Aurel even is not too far away from Binks to challenge that second place, but Looks like Binks is getting closer and closer to Afi. He's coming close. Ooh. It's only a car length. More speed on the drift could deny this opportunity for BDS. It's about equal on the speed, and it might be decided by the racing lines, by the small differences here in the ending. Binks very shaky, oh, flying no. off. Aurel passing him an ace for BDS is inbound. Nine to six now. That is such a huge ace for Team BDS. Nine to six. G1 has to ace them back now, but they've made quite a lot of mistakes here on this map, even before the identity. So they need to clean up that mess to come back now. Nine, like this is a lot of pressure to G1, but it is also Team BDS's map choice. It is the map that they said, we're gonna take this quick point. And they're showing us uh, just that they are able to do that. But I, I think, oh, oh no. no, the face plan. I was just about to comment on the fact that G1 has to be the most annoying team to face on this spot because they have the pace to always ace you if they survive a clean run. But here, Gwen crashing out in the start. They're going to see that plus nine. And BDS here are very likely to take their own map.
plus 13 now. He's done something else again. So Alfie and Orel, all they have to do is get one of the players into the finish without losing 17 seconds now. It looks like they have realized the situation is going to be a BDS map win here. Just closing it out of Mali. So we will see uh, the two teams take their own maps first. And now we go to Control next, Jalik. And Control is another one of these Gwen maps that he wins most of the rounds he plays on it, and he really doesn't crash. And if uh, Binx hopefully. is there with him, that is uh, scary. <laughs> But when it comes to pace like that, G1 might be one of the best teams to, to send some of those very, very fast times. But I, I do think that if BDS can do like they did here and capitalize on the mistakes that might come in from G1, then they're, they're definitely not out of the map. Yeah, but I mean, it was very, very well fought from both the players. Aurel had a lot of mistakes early and Offi mm -hmm. was able to defend. But I think G1 made more mistakes uh, in the same rounds, right? Where they got aced. So... There you go. Map number two goes to Team BDS. 12-2-6 here. We're going to uh, check out some of these replays while we can talk about what is going to happen now here on Control. We will be seeing Control soon, but here you can see the gifted ace that G1 got to start the game. Going up to that 5-2 lead before, importantly, BDS were able to answer back after that mistake from Binks on the pipe. Afi and Aurel passed them, equalized the score, and then took the lead in the game. 1-1. Scores reset on control, and uh, we'll see what BDS can do. G1, they're an open book on this map, but a pretty fast book. Well, yeah, but you also gotta gotta look at the fact that uh, Binks has, well, Binks and Gwen has eight rounds, and Binks has crashed six of them so far. Yeah, uh, Binks he, has crashed six, Gwen has crashed zero. Yeah, so Binks has the slowest median time on this map out of every player uh, in the league, so. He's, he's on first now, though, but it, it is uh, it is the warm-up round, so... Yeah, you, but, but you, the, the thing is, the last time we saw this, it was one of the last maps against Alliance, I believe. And it was a situation where Binks crashed out almost every round, but then Gwen was first mm -hmm. almost every round to deny yeah. him. So here we go into this week's match on this map. Uh, and we will probably see a similar story that, you know, Gwen is going to try to drive fast, try to be that first place carry for the team. And he just hopes that Binks is not going to crash. That's going to give them the most points. But well, that's the thing. Binks, got, Binks was on first during the warm-up. And if uh, my gameplay has anything to say for it, every time I do good on a warm-up, I'm immediately crashing out on the first round afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> the scare, the curse of the good warm-up. Oh, oh and there you go. There it is. Janik. It's not my fault. It's the warm-up. I didn't do anything. Uh, he didn't deserve that, okay? He could have blessed anyone else. <laughs> Reverse blessed, rather, as we see yeah. Binks unfortunately crashing out the round after a good warm-up. Wow. Now, will we see the script follow its intended path with Gwen winning the round? I don't know. Aurel and Alfie are both close before the control jumps. Yeah, here we go. Everybody oh, really Gwen crashed. Oh, that's a Gwen with a mistake. That and that ace? might be an ace for Team BDS if they can get this final jump. It does look like both of them are getting over the hump there. And that's going to be Aurel on first, Afi there on second. 3,000 separating the two players. And uh, G1 slowly getting into the finish afterwards. That's a great start for BDS. And Gwen's first mistake on the map as well so far this season. And uh, that is going to be seven out of nine uh, mistakes coming in for Binks. <laughs> okay, dude, you do, at this point we stop counting. You don't have to keep the count of the, the Binks mistakes. Well, I mean, the guy is uh, the guy's trying his best here. It's a tough map. We both tried it. Hopefully, but it, but it is a, like the reason I mentioned it is also because it is it is fun, not fun, but. You know, what they're thinking is that Gwen has incredible pace on this map, so he can carry the map. But if you don't have both your teammates getting into the finish line in approximately the oh. same time... Hello? Um, lag? Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely lag. Not because Caster is playing with the keyboard. Um, that, it, that it won't work anyway. That's true. Uh, the, the formula only works if Binx is there to join Gwen. Offy, though, able to keep up with Gwen. So we'll see who wins this top battle as they have... Got gained about four tenths of a second against the other two players. Gwen getting more exit speed there out of that. No drift block, and that's going to get him up into first by over a car length before the jump. But here he missed last time, going too low. This time he's on the clear on the first jump, gaining even more time to off. He can't land that second jump. The pace is also very quick. Arel passing Binks there in that battle. Who's going to get the third place battle? Gwen winning the round, and Binks is there to join him in third. 
And that's what we like to see. Bing's not making a single, well, not making any huge mistakes in that. And that is a 110.4. Uh, that's one tenth off of the live world record. So they are definitely driving fast. Yeah, and before today with uh, with Osak dropping the record, it was uh, 39, I think. So uh, very, very close to the top times we've seen in the league. As expected, Gwen in control, very fast, but off he kept up with him all the way till those jumps. Now, if you are just joining us, we are watching Team BDS versus Gamers First. This is map number three. Each of the teams have won one map. It is on D1's map choice, and Team BDS is currently in the lead. They are, but the prospects for D1 are looking good here. They got through one, and they can build off of the momentum with Binks not crashing there. Improving the stats a little bit, 7 Ooh. out of 10. And Offy might get a crash on this tally here. At least a mistake. Able to keep it clean though, away from the walls. But the two G1 players are going over a second ahead now. And they can probably look to save they these jumps. They just need to do, yeah, these two save jumps. If they jump high, they're going to lose like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 off of their, you know, uh, I time that, yeah, they, that they could have gotten. But it is safe, and they are far enough ahead to, to do that. Yeah. This is look a safe end, but look at the pace still. Vix is going to win this round with a 0.6 safe. That's a nice safe. Um, like if that's your safe time, your actual pace that round is probably close to the record. And now G1 is back up in the lead, overtaking BDS. BDS had a great start to the map, but they but that's because they capitalized on some mistakes, mm. including what Binks did. So now gamers first. They they're you know pulling up their pants and uh, sitting down at the edge of their seat, trying to focus. Gamer positions are engaged. Surely, I've seen firsthand, together with you at the uh, Arctic Gaming Experience, we had a good view of Binks when he was playing, and he has this laser focus that yeah. if he gets that mode, it is just a treat to watch. Uh, someone fully entranced in the game, just one with the car in every move of this map, and right now, it looks like he's doing it, but look at this lead from Gwen. I am scared for those splits. I don't know the splits, but I just know, feeling-wise, it seems very fast. Watch out for those two young French players who are now, once again, without EDS seemingly making mistakes over half a second ahead. Yeah, this is the problem fighting against G1 on this map. It is that if they just drive the pace that they can, you you if you don't drive close to world record pace, you're not going to be up there with them. And that's what we're going to see right now. We're going to see it's Gwen again, and Binks. They have the option to save the last jump. And Gwen did jump pretty high there in the ending. Binks as well. But it's still a 0 .6, 0 .7, uh, for Gwen and Binks. That's With quite the safe ending yeah, yeah, once yeah. again. I mean, it's a treat to watch. They get two aces in a row. And what looked pretty dire is now looking very promising for them to take uh, their second map. They need a regular victory. Just one regular victory for gamers first to take home this map. BDS needs to get this ace down at the at the very least one ace, and it's gonna happen this round. And you might be looking at this thinking, but how does Gwen gain every single time? What's he doing? What he's trying to do is often just risk your lines on his opponents, like landing so early and then getting all of that exit speed. And now on this downhill, maybe daring to go closer to the edges, closer to the trees here, and then trying to get a very early lighting on the platform. Just to oh, oh, touching the back wheel, but there the car lifts off, and it's actually Aurel up in first, landing perfectly in that bobsleigh curve, getting a lot of exit speed, and he's on similar splits to those of Gwen and Binks last round, so not to be scoffed out here, BDS have reversed the roles, Binks could maybe catch up to Offy, this is a gap that is manageable with good jumps, and he's actually creeping closer, yeah. little by little. It is not all over yet. Binks is going to go for these low jumps, trying to see if he can get up to Afi. Not getting it on the first jump. He is getting closer, though. He might be able to get it on the second jump if he really risks it. Afi also going really low. That's a good jump. Not quite enough to overtake, though, and that's going to be an ace for BDS. Oh, they answer right back. They answer, and they go up to 8 to 7 now. Very much so in contention for this map win. Oh, they are, and if they get another ace now, I mean, that's going to be the, the map for BDS, and it will be huge, because once again, it is G1's map pick, and it is a map that we know that Gwen and Binks have great paces on, especially Gwen with great consistency. So if they see Gwen make any slight mistake, they need to capitalize on that round immediately. And they have such a daring next pick of breaking, where Gwen and Binks are fast, but it's the one of the hardest maps, so the consistency factor could be what they're playing to get there but if they win this going into breaking they have a massive advantage i would say but here once again the obnoxiousness of playing against v1 is showing as this time gwen does not make a mistake Aurel made a small mistake in the start and he's now the closest to denying 
their uh, victory by four tenths of a second, and he has to get past both. He has to get past both of them, because right now, Gamers First is in that ace position, so Aurel has to push it. There's nothing to lose. He just has to full send. He did start accelerating a little bit late, and that might actually give Gamers First a little bit more breathing room. We're going to have to see some incredibly risky ending jumps. It's two tenths to Gwen. It's two tenths of a second he has to catch, but that's not enough. He has to catch to Binks, and he lost speed on that landing. G1 with one more jump. Both players making it across the quarter pipe. They're going to take this map with a 110.5 and a 110.61. They, they, they were pushed to the limit here by BDS, but they still end up on top. But it was a nice tight map, honestly. Like, it could have gone either way in the ending. BDS could have gotten a, another ace, but it, it did end up going to uh, favor the gamers first people, and that is also their map pick, so they're very but happy they, about they that. They started off getting aced with that round from BDS, and it looked like BDS had a really good chance, but then two aces in a row, up to eight to four. 8 to 7 after BDS aced and finally the win. But Janik, let's talk about breaking. This is a map I categorize as one of these Gwen mime, like very weird pace based maps, but very mistake heavy. And BDS are picking it into G1. I think this is a good map to pick into G1 because G1 has incredible pace, but what they also have is they have these risky lines. And this map is a map that, I mean, as much as it, it, it you know, gives you a, a, a great lead if you go risky, it is so hard. Like, they, like if you if you have a tendency to crash, chances are you're going to crash on this map. Yeah, we saw it in the earlier game where Sinners picked it towards Solary and almost snuck out with a win on that one. But uh, here we're going to see very close rounds as uh, Gwen has the world record on the map 103, uh, 11303 rather, and he was driving 113 lowest most rounds. But Uffy and Aurel are looking to the same. Aurel is out of this round. Uffy though on great checkpoint splits here coming into the last part of the map. But that's what we we're talking about. This map is so easy to make a mistake on. It's so easy to crash out, slide out, bounce out, uh, oh, get in the water. Talking Apparently about it. touched a checkpoint as well. And now Gwen and Binks are looking to get this ace here on the first round of map four, which is BDS's map pick here on breaking. But it is also a G1 stronghold map. This does suit them stylistically. They're going to slow down enough. They're going to make sure they get this. No throw. Oh. Hang on. Gwen going too fast in that last corner, and he will be passed by Aurel. Thanks also draw. Oh, never mind. Oh he my god, two. Gwen. It's a draw. Slowing down too much, trying to make sure he gets the turn, and that ends up being, uh, you know, the curse of him getting overtaken. It's actually going to be a draw. What an, uh, I mean, that's uh, not what I expected. And just to uh, explain what's actually going on here, they have engine off and they have wet tires. You cannot release the acceleration because, I mean, the engines turn off, right? So what you have to do to slow down is drift back and forth and slow down to an appropriate speed. The number you have to hit is around 350, but even then, you still have to get the timing of the turn right. And if you miss it, you are just headed for disaster. Yep. And you you lose if you if you try to save it by... by uh Breaking a little bit more, you lose a lot of speed because it's in the engine off, right? So you yeah. can't accelerate either. So it's this balance about, you know, risk reward. How much do I wanna keep the speed? Uh, I'm gonna lose a lot more speed if I touch a wall. And G1, they're very good at this risk versus reward, but they usually have a tendency to go full risk. Mm. And they are in the lead though. They haven't failed it quite yet. They've been in the lead twice in a row going into this final identity. Yeah, and again, great splits up front. Gwen gonna go for this line where he slows down and then he aims towards the left of the plank right at the end to get a sharper apex. Just optimizing everything he can. Offy trying to pass Binks, but crashes Ooh. out. But Aurel is able to get past him. And now I think there's two respawns, but Offy respawns sooner. So he will be getting that. It's another draw. But same fast winning pace up front. Honestly, I mean, a G1 should have capitalized on this. Uh, they, like... It's unfortunate that we see so many mistakes in the ending because the ending can be safe. The ending is one of the easier endings to save. Uh, you just need to, to, you know, take away enough of your speed to be able to do the turn, right? But these players, they don't. Oh. Oh, and that's what I talked about—the risk reward. If you if you slow down too much, you're gonna you're gonna get overtaken just because of speed. But if you don't slow out slow down enough, you're gonna hit that wall and have to respawn. And now we need to see clutch pace from Arel, his best record that he's driven on the servers is a 113.58 for 
from last week, and that is not going to beat the point three of the French players. They could very well be getting ace here unless RL steps it up one notch and tries to match them. Goes for a very tight inside line there, but that's going to push him wide, and he has oh, less speed. Gwen. Gwen clipping that pillar, though, means RL is up to second, but half a second still to catch towards Binks. And Gwen remains third, so this could be a winning round for D1. It could, and then that means that they can start breakawaying on, on those points. Oh, but another Binks, mistake. I mean, they're Arrell not- is in first now. They're not taking advantage of these huge mistakes from Team BDS. Right, let's say, let's see if uh, Aurel can maintain this lead. I think he can. He understands that there was a big mistake, so he just needs this one oh, right hand. Oh, that's a, a little wider than you want it to be. Um, if you were trying to save it, but he does get that first. It's gonna be another draw. I mean, is that three draws in a row? It is, and I don't think either of these rounds should have been a draw. I think uh, they should have been probably winning rounds for G1. They should. Like, G1 has... From has the position they have, they should have gotten not... more points, but BDS is still equal, and they're holding on. And now they need to get a round together, Aurel and Afi, where they both avoid these mistakes, where they both don't crash. Because if, if they are seeing what we're seeing here, they're seeing... Okay, Gwen and Binks, they have one guy, fast guy, but together they're not driving that fast. We can beat these guys. I think this, this if they've been trading maps back and forth, they, they've always been winning their own map choice. Yeah. But now this is the chance for G1 to break away and take away a map from BDS. This is definitely where they could do it because BDS, BDS is making a lot of mistakes compared to them picking this map. And gamers first, they just need to take advantage of it. Just, they just need to capitalize on some of these rounds. But unfortunately, they've made mistakes on all of the same rounds. Yeah, it's tough though. It really shows that breaking is chaos. This map, if you pick it, you are picking into volatility where you kind of, you know, don't know which way the chips are going to land. But right now, this round, all four players have made it through. This is going to be a close battle. All the players know that this is one we have to win because we are all driving clean within one tenth of a second before the identity. How fast do you dare to go? Do you slow down to 355 and try to push the turn? Do you go to oh. 345, try to save it? Gwen is pushing with a lot of speed up ahead. He's going to go wide, but he still has to set up for the second one. Offy and Aurel are catching up to Binks, but they go wide. Aurel having less speed, but Offy passing at least one to deny the ace. All three up there within eight hundredths of a second and fast times. This, is, this was a great round. This was a great round. We see all of the players getting through the entirety of the map without any huge mistakes. Point one separating the top three players. This is what we like to see this is what we want to see more of that was very clean uh, not something we uh it was a bit of a luxury for being breaking yeah but here we enter a, another round i think i think bds they're getting a little bit worried that g1 might definitely take this because that is just so beautiful the uh the the, the car when it's flying on reactor booster can actually slide and it can have yeah. full grip and they are smooth steering there to make sure that the car has yep. full grip on the water while flying if that makes any sense at all, but it's it's a very precise movement they're making happen. We've seen mistakes here multiple times. If you end up drifting too far to the left, you're going to hit that hole, uh, and you have to counter that by drifting even harder, and you're going to lose a lot of speed. Afi and Aurel trying to maintain this first and second position, but Gwen is trying to Ooh. inch up here on first, and he does do so, overtaking both of the Great BDS race. players, and now all of the floor, four players, they get into the identity approximately at the same time. Binks Gwen is in the pushing. lead. Binks trying to push, trying to get this ace down. Afi needs to deny. He gets such a good right-handed turn, oh! and he might overtake. He almost overtakes for first. <gasps> Binks gets that first position. Gwen on third. G1 gets the round victory again, but my god, that was a good push from Afi. And what a change this this map took from crashing heaven to these two amazing rounds. Binks there able to defend when Gwen lost a bit of speed in that last turn. Afi also valiantly fought to deny any ace from happening. We are seeing a mix up. These players are now warmed up, I feel like, and playing this map at a world class level. And then this no slide, you can see it here again. The car keeps full grip, it doesn't slide out, and it accelerates more throughout that entire turn. Yeah, I mean, is there um, is there a way where you could slide and it's faster because you do the turn tighter in the like from yes, the beginning? Yes, some players go very tight with a slide, yeah. but they have less speed up the hill and you get a worse setup, worse gear. So I think overall the the no slide line pays off uh, as we're seeing the players do it here. Offy onto the outside, great splits from him. Again, this is challenging that world record split. If you get a great ending from here on out, he has two G1 players within two tenths of a second. 
Chasing him down. Gwen got a lot of speed through the section last time. He's doing it here again. Catching up to Offy. His lead is shrinking. Both of them now gonna try to attack this turn. The wide setup from Gwen, getting Ooh. more speed, almost oh crashing, my but God. has just enough room to make it through, slowing down here appropriately. Offy's being passed oh, no! by both the ace, and G1 takes BDS's map to go up to three to one in the match so far. Amazing time by and both of them. And that is the breakaway in map points that we were waiting for. G they've been trading maps back and forth, winning their own map pick, but G1 finally taking a map away from BDS and putting themselves onto match point. Yeah, but oh my god, they had a lot of stabs at this, and sometimes it looked like they almost stumbled in their own shoelaces because they had so many opportunities in the first three rounds where BDS just barely held on. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they could have gotten this map done earlier if they didn't end up um, going draws in the first three rounds due to those mistakes that ended up coming from both the teams. It was a little bit of a wonky start, but great showing at the ending. The last three rounds were just uh, world record pace rounds. Yeah, now we're seeing a, a new uh, <laughs> issue as the map we're on was banned by BDS. <laughs> so oh. we are going to get that skipped, I think. Oh, I mean, um, small technical issues. We're not going to be playing speed. Uh, imagine, yeah. imagine the surprise you ban a map and you see it come back and it's just like, huh, you Whoops. thought you could ban yeah. me? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, but I, I guess I don't actually know how they set up the... Uh, I mean, is it a server admin that picks the maps after they I, after the ban screen? I, I, I don't, don't know, actually know how it works. They, they're, it's been smooth so far. The map we're supposed to see is Airwalk, picked by G1. And yeah. since it's G1's pick, they could try to close it out here. They're also really fast on Airwalk. They are, and they might not want to see Offy and Arel on grip because they were very consistent there. So an idea that I have right now, since we have a little bit of time to talk about uh, whatever, right? Is that if they have this pick ban system already in the game and it's automated, do you think that they could implement that in matchmaking? Ooh, you want picks and bans in matchmaking? I want to be able to ban specific maps out of the map Which pool. map, Jalik? Which map hurt you? <laughs> uh, well, specifically... It's okay, you can talk to me. You can talk to chat yeah, now. We in, can... in, in, okay, so during this, uh, during this specific... During this specific season, I don't actually know what I would like to ban. Maybe, maybe I would ban, um, oh, oh, map 18. Map 18? So regular campaign map? Yeah, re regular campaign maps is what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm on the tier of ranked above that. Well, I am as well, but I would still love for the regular campaign maps to be the regular. I, I, okay, I get him the silver so, yellow, that might be a can, big problem. Can I ask chat about this? So I want I want the matchmaking to just be on the campaign maps. I want two matchmaking queues. You can queue up for the regular campaign maps until you reach master. And then a second queue opens up that will be the eSport queue. That you can queue mm. up and play in if you want to get Team WT points or if you want to qualify for regionals. But I feel like regular matchmaking should be consistent and on the campaign maps. I feel like they tried that, but it the, the things that you quickly realize, or at least I realized, is just how difficult these like Mania World Tour maps. They even have versions of the maps that they call the E-maps, E for easy, yep. but they are anything but easy. There is easier, I yeah. would say. I, I think like a, a better name would be something like... Um, simplified something that makes me feel a bit better about my skill level uh yeah i i just think that right now once you uh once you reach gold you get a full new set of 10 maps that you've never played before all are which harder than every single one of the black maps and all of which are being practiced uh and to an extreme extent by a lot of players so you effectively hit a wall where once you reach gold you have to spent like 25 to 50 hours practicing maps you've never practiced before that have no effect on the campaign rank or anything and uh just just to play more ranked i i no, i now hear now hear me out on this what if what if david next tmdl season yeah instead of having world tour maps instead of having black maps the last five maps of the campaign are just world tour maps uh I mean, I still think that's too big of a gap in in like for, for from red maps to world tour maps. Um, I think people are gonna complain world tour that they're simplified? not. I don't think people. Are, I, I think people are gonna complain about the fact that they can't get author times of world tour maps. Oh, well, the I don't know if the author map needs to be difficult though. Well, no, the map is difficult enough in itself. Okay, that's true. Okay, right. Uh, like, wouldn't wouldn't a campaign with like an airwalk in it be exciting though? Well, it would. I think what they could do is they could. Um, 
Uh, it, it, it couldn't be a speed, okay? It could be an air walk, I think. I, 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 yeah, but, but, but I, I, don't, I don't mind the fact that if they add more maps to the campaign, instead of it just being 25, then after you've gotten author on all 25, you, it, unlock. you, you, you unlock the TMGL campaign. Oh. Um, and then you have to get those, and maybe you get a skin if you the get super authors. super campaign, I like yeah, that. Yeah. And Let's maybe you see. get a skin if you, if, you, if you complete all those maps okay. on, on author. But either way, I still think that those maps are a little bit too um, hard for for consistent matchmaking. I like, like I'm the type of player like, okay, I might get a lot of hate for this, but sometimes I I don't mind playing a 20 second white map as a matchmaking match because sometimes it's nice to just get a fast map that oh okay all this map is about is is about precision and some speed drifting and if you're good at that then you're good at that nice you can you can rise in ranks because you're good at small maps but you can also rise in ranks if you're good at the two minute long 21 map right like it like people have different skill skill um sets skill sets and i don't mind everything being represented in the campaign not everything has to be super difficult mixed maps yeah, I mean the thing is you don't you don't need to size shame a map, a 20 second map can still be a good map, still be yeah. good rounds. And uh, the difficulty as well. I mean the easier the map it's, is. It's not the, the length of the map show. that determines how good a map is. It's also about uh, you know, how you play it. Uh, so would you call yourself a short king? Uh, in terms of Trackmania maps? Like a lol, the lol yeah, okay. king, right? <laughs> the short king? Okay, technically yes, I would say I prefer shorter maps. Right. Um and but I, I don't know if I would call myself a short king. I feel like, I mean, we're almost equally tall. I know we don't necessarily look incredibly tall on camera, but I feel like we have a, a regular <laughs> sized person that we're, we're in, inhabiting because we're people. We're a real, very real people. We're very real people. We understand humans. We are actually so human right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. For real? <laughs> <laughs> on God. <laughs> enough horsing around, guys. Enough joking. We have successfully skipped to airwalk and we will take you through that one the current situation if you're joining in is that bds are playing against g1 the score is uh one to three in favor of g1 so uh with one more map here and their own choice they could close the game now airwalk is also one of these very fun gimmicky maps where you bounce on these bouncing blocks you'll see them right here in the start they bounce once jump over and bounce on another one Sometimes it looks like all of them, they're, they're, they land with only half their car on the second bouncing block, which sometimes results in getting a, a small penalty or yeah, something. Yeah, you get a slowdown if you, yeah. if you land in a bad, bad spot, but it's the tightest line. And the thing you have to remember is even if the car just touches it once, and if it touches it clean, it will get that bounce yes. no matter what. So uh, this was picked by G1. They played quite well on it in the All-Stars tournament and also uh, in week one, I believe, with... Uh, Gwen and Biggs dropping some 108.5s. It's right around the pace they drive. The world record 108.3. So, quite close to that. Um, so, we'll have to see if they do this. Uh, we, we saw a strat by, I think it was KC. Where yeah, they, Yeah, where they put their car sideways during the identity to touch the finish line. Just, the, you know, a few hundreds faster. Oh, Warrell on the inside, committing for the turn a bit early. And now we go into that tricky tech slide where you drop a gear if you're not cautious and you want to build speed on the downhill. Binks hitting the corner on the exit of it, leaving it to a one versus one. Gwen versus Uffy, the two main speedsters, I would say, on either team. And now we get to see them battle it out on the air walk. This is the identity. You jump onto a bumper and then you bump to this bumper Whoa. and then to the finish. Now Gwen disappeared, so he made a mistake. That's Offy winning the round. Is Binks there? Aurel actually took the ace for the team as both G1 players missed that bumper in the sky. This bumper in the sky. Um, is that a song? Uh, Castle in the sky. Oh, Lucy in the sky. Oh, that one too. With diamonds. I'll remember that. That's a good song. Yeah. Solid great, song. Great songs about the sky. That's we also air. have uh, Moonwalk instead of Airwalk. No, that's a not true. a song. Maybe it is. So I, I, no, Moon Man. Moon Man. Um, either way, that was a, a small sidetrack. We saw Team BDS get this ace in the start, which is really good because this is gamers' first map pick, and they need to win this. If if G1 wins any map from now on, they've taken home the series. Yeah. So they they do build a strong score already, and they, as we have talked about, and I feel like we don't want to repeat ourselves too much, they take advantage of when G1 crash. This is what they need to do. They need to keep that consistency up and hope to see some crashes because V1 are fully willing to risk corners whether you're there or not. They are pushing yes. for, for I'm surprised that both the G1 players they missed the identity though. 
That's surprising to me. Because it, okay, so this identity is kind of deceiving. It looks very difficult to get those jumps, but the bumpers kind of always push you in the right direction if you line yeah. up. And so, and the thing is, they they picked the map, so you would assume that they they've practiced the identity to an extent where they the, can do it the consistently. What the players are trying to do is jump, turn a bit left, and then release at the right time so that you land exactly on this. Now it could be oh, 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 that ball. <laughs> passing off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Get sent to the wrong finish line. There's he nothing just over there. Full, like that was a, okay. I don't know what to call that. He he must have touched right in between two bouncers and it just double bounced him into the left or so. I don't know what happened. Now, the interesting thing there, you can't actually get a bumper where you get a double bounce set forwards. And that's also a very fast outcome. We've seen some, uh, some clips of that from Granati, but yeah, very yeah. unfortunate. Landing in a bad spot there. And it's two aces in a row from BDS. I mean, jokes I'm, aside, this is very good for them. That's great for them, but it is also so unfortunate for G1 to get that double bounce to the left. I mean, I don't think he would have won the round, but at least they could have avoided an ace. But it is what happens sometimes you... Uh, oh, oh my That is very oh. close to the corners. They could have clipped easily. Aurel in the back, though. Yeah, that's a very risky approach. Offie's still holding first here. G1, they just have to think, okay, we got ace twice, but this is our choice. We still have the pace here. Let's deliver. That's what they're going for. Gwen getting a good line there, avoiding yeah. the corner as well. In the downhill, now a lot of speed, but you don't want to be too fast Ooh. here. You can't actually be too fast for this. Gwen jumping on the side of the bumper there, and Binks has hit the pillar. So off he versus Gwen up front. Aurel lying in wait as we go into the first bumper right now. Don't miss this time Try here, Gwen. Oh. Off he oh. missed it, and Gwen looks like he's going to get that jump right, and is Binks there to back him up? Yes, yes. indeed. Okay. So they get some points. Um, uh, that is an important mistake uh, from Afi there if you are a G1 fan. So definitely well played from Gwen. I was worried that he was going to fail there in the ending. It was very close. Also, he had a lot of speed going into that middle bumper in the middle of the... Yeah, that was that was margins right there. We see a 108.4 as well, so quite close to the record. Um, well done by Gwen. And now the next round. All four players in contention. Looks like Binks made a mistake for a second, but he is still... But you did, you did notice that Gwen went for the exact same line that Masa went for with the inside drift yep. that saves like 0.1 or something if you get it with the gear. But I think the, the, the risk you're playing there, so the car goes up to the fifth gear when you're fast enough, which they will be uh, after this dirt uphill. And when you're in gear five, you can downshift to fourth if you lose too much speed. And you're going into a drift where you just want to stay right above that threshold. Yep. And that's right here. Five. If so you they gear down up. here, you are gonna crash. Yep. Because you're not expecting it. So, <laughs> well, you're expecting it, but you're, you you know it can happen, but you're setting up for a line where if it happens, you're crashing. Yeah. Right? Um, you're setting up for a line that works perfectly if you full steer with this much speed. Yep. But if you gear down, you lose that speed. Uh, Fierce crash, 2v1 on the end. See, Bing's going quite far left. He's at the very oh! corner, misses it. Aurel going high. Gwen getting the round win and almost the oh, world that's record. Also a great but time by Alfie's Gwen. Alfie's there to get the draw. I want to see what Gwen does in the identity because do you notice that he flies straight into the finish? Like he doesn't hit the roof or anything. Yeah, he gets a very he clean He gets a trajectory. very clean straight into the finish. So I think it's a matter of losing just enough speed that the bumper will send you with a perfect full speed trajectory to the finish. Yeah, Some players the case. will not release enough and then the car goes too high, so they have to slow down. But yeah, uh, very tough there for G1. That's a position they're hoping to get a lot more than an ace from. And now 8-3 to three on their choice. BDS closing in one point after another here towards that 10 mark. Yeah, G1 needs to show us some of those aces that they have in their pocket because uh, that's what they need to get back into team, get back up to team BDS. And if they win this map, this is the map uh, choice of G1. And if they win their own map choice, they take home the entire match. And that's what they're, they're looking to close it out as fast as possible because next map will be Team BDS's map pick, right? And then it might be a best of seven. Then we might go to map seven at that point. Well, the BDS pick is off-road, so not a map that G1 are unfamiliar mm. with. The Binks having to release Gwen avoiding the pillar. Looks like Offy will be jumping up to third, and he will indeed. Now the Adams that you saw Gwen had a good line in the last round. Will he get that this time? Landing very oh. much so on the bumper. Too far on the outside. There was still enough to win the round. Yeah. And they do close the gap a little bit here, but they Aurel, can't drop a single point now. Aurel made a mistake in the ending, uh, and he could have gotten first, Victory. but did not quite hit the bumper the way he wanted to. So G1 getting a little bit closer, but now it's... BDS. It's... Uh, 
It's ace or nothing. It's ace or bust. Yeah. They have to get five points without dropping a single one to win the map. That's not at all easy. And the pace from BDS, the fastest we've seen, I think is right around a 0.5, 0.6 so far. Now, both Gwen and Binks can drive that, but a lot of crashes has come through, especially in that second to last bumper yep. between the pillars. That's the Yeah, we've seen part multiple. One. Yeah. And the identity. I mean, hey. That's where uh, they course. got base fights. But the, mi the crux in the middle of the map is definitely that bouncer. Um, we've not seen them actually cra crash with the uh, with the gear here after this turn. You can hear the gear happening on the downhill right here. Boom, Do there's the gear. Do you think the reason that G1 are not getting past the bouncer, Yannick, is because they're too young? They don't get let in? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Looks like they are doing all right now. The bouncer, though, is there, but he will let them pass. Aurel is just going to try to stay in second to deny G1 from having any chance oh. to come back. The I mean, they could get it. They Gwen could. on the corner. Oh, so Binks close. on the corner as well, and they will and ace. And they do get that ace. Yeah, we got to eight points. And what a time. Gwen with a 108-22. New world record in the clutch round. Nine to eight. They have a fighting chance. And we, we knew that Gwen was definitely capable of getting that record because he's been driving consistently fast. But jumping up here now, Team BDS is sweating. Now they're sweating because Gwen and Bings drove fantastic times, both of them that round. Yeah. So, and going from six to zero to nine to eight, I'd yep. much rather be the team with eight points there with the yeah, momentum. Yeah, because of momentum, yeah. Because you're stressing, you're thinking, we are almost letting this lead slip here. But they only need a single point. Yeah, they just need to not be third and fourth. Yeah. And even if they lose this round, if they get uh, second and fourth, they will then still we go into draw. overtime. Yeah. yeah. So, very important round. All the players know it. G1, if they win this round, they win the entire game. BDS can put it to a map six, though. Aurel! Oh, my God! Oh, we Afi have a mistake! Had a mistake on the Afi. inside. Afi clipping the inside. And now Aurel has he to try to see if he can at least second. get second. At least get second place. But the guy behind him is the fastest one of the G1 players on this map. Gwen, who just dropped the world record and has probably a lot of... Um, momentum going into this round is going to get a good drift. Can they get past the pillars? Looks like Binks going a little bit far on the right side. Oh, Binks touching! The pillar, and, and now Aurel can indeed get that second place, but can he get first? That's going to be Gwen. He's he's jumping a couple. If One, Aurel gets second. first, BDS win the map. If Aurel oh, gets first, BDS win the map, it. and they will win it! What was that second bounce? What happened? Just like Binks earlier, Gwen gets sent off to the right side this oh, yeah, time. Yeah, no, that was that was the the wrong side to the bouncer's not is it's not pointing in that direction. Well, if you're 18, the bouncer tends to not let you pass, and here we see it. BDS have run away with a win on airwalk. Not something I would predict. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> bouncers are insane. That, I mean we, I mean, who hired these guys? That is Oh my god. So, I mean, we want to say that the bounces, I mean, everything in Trackmania is consistent, right? It's, yeah, so, so, so it's a deterministic game, so if you do the same inputs, you will get the same outputs, even if it doesn't look like it. But sometimes the, the inputs are so minuscule and different that it, it's not humanly replicable. Yeah, like you can land on a sub pixel off that bumper and get a different outcome. Like that's the, the, the problem for the players. Visually, it looks the same. They can do the same setup they've done in practice, but it could also just decide to, you know, fling you to the side if you hit two at the same time. Yes, I mean, yeah, but that, that, but why the wrong side though? I, I really don't know, I couldn't, couldn't tell you. But we are on grip right now. This is BDS's choice. Offy very consistently fast here. Low 101.5.4s. But Aurel has already made a mistake, so Afi is alone here. His teammate oh, has left and him. the split from Gwen is nasty on that checkpoint. Very fast round to start us off here. He dropped the world record on Airwalk. This is getting up. Oh, up, 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 no. Up, 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 up. Very close to the world record on grip, but he flies off the track. Oh, Afi slides no. off. So Binks is now alone. Gwen might be able to overtake because Afi lost so much speed oh. there. But he touches. He's far enough ahead for it to it's not matter. It's fine. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Binks can still take the lead. You, uh, so effectively, if you crash there, um, the the max speed you get in the next turn is still only two, <laughs> 200, right? So it's not the biggest issue, but like that's still um, that's still scary. My God, Gwen is experimenting with some very risky lines here. Everybody crashed that round. Yep, except for Binks. Uh, well, I mean, he touched, but it, it's not like it it did too big of a of a difference. It's still fine. 
still all right, but very shaky start. The, the, the pace, though. The pace has to be commented on. Glenn, in that start, I think, did just about everything perfect. Yeah. No, no, no. That was, it was great. The first half was great. And then everybody started to make weird mistakes. But it happens. There is also a lot on the line right now. Ooh. Gwen did not lose speed there. Uh, very, very lucky that he didn't get an acceleration Afi penalty. Did. Afi did just touch, uh, just kiss the corner there. Enough for the game to say, nope, we're going to take your speed. Yep, the acceleration penalty from hitting a wall. And that means this car will be about one second behind the others. But Arel is at least in first this round. Here, the water turn, the problem for Gwen is that he steered too aggressively going into it, and then he float up to the surface and also into the sky. Araldo still in first, two tenths down to the G1 players, but we saw Gwen risk earlier on, and he might be feeling a Ooh. chance. Not anymore after that crash, and I think Binks is just gonna accept that this is a draw. Him and his teammate going into second and third there, and they will just take that. I, uh, I do wanna apologize to you, Virtual, though, because I noticed that I've opened windows and doors in the room not really caring about the fact that you have a pollen allergy <laughs> no i i uh, i'm holding on here guys you might hear me coughing I'm, I'm, and breathing and whatever i'm looking I'm, at virtual and he's struggling uh allergic to pollen for the entire summer it's gonna be not poland some people thought i said that i love poland Dobrarobota, if you're from poland in chat but um or that have you seen the polish people have just decided one twitch emote is ours they spammed that oh, red yeah. guy, B Blood Trail, I think it's called. The, the Meat Boy guy. Yeah, just the thumbs up in the chat. Like, yeah. They've just claimed that entire Twitch emote as their own. I don't know how they did it. Yeah, I have no clue. But for now, we're going to see Aurel in the lead, followed very closely by Ben and Gwinks. Uh, Gw ben and Gwinks? <laughs> <Gwinks. laughs> Gwen and Binks. I am sorry. Uh, it has been a long day, and it will continue to be so. We still have multiple maps or matches to see here after this one, so I stay tuned. I remember when we had uh, a player called Cap in the league, as well as Pack. Yeah. And casting those two together was almost impossible. We will see a very close round here oh, and a potential oh. ace. Binks going a bit too wide, though, and it's a regular victory with Gwen taking first, Arel second, Binks in third, and Afi with that mistake coming in in fourth. I mean, still a victory here for Gamers First, so it's going to put them ahead. And any point they will take that gets them ahead of BDS is an important point. It is BDS's map pick, but it does seem like the teams are very, very similar right now in terms of how many crashes and pace. So it could go any any team's way. It is BDS's choice, as you said. So BDS right now keeping up. They are at least not down 6-0 on their own map. I think that... Uh, it's just about as bad as it could go in the first two rounds, but could we go to seven? G1 have gone to seven maps on all of their games so far. Uh, or both, rather. And yeah, on both of their games, but still, they would love to not go to map seven for one game because the longer you play... Also, BDS... Oh. Oh. BDS are playing a second B game. BDS are playing a second game, and they're already so far into this game. It's going to be a long day for BDS as well. We see uh, two mistakes here coming in on... Round number four, but Binks and Afi, they are driving clean so far. Binks point two ahead, so he can oh, afford not that to do that, ace, that though. Ace, that can be an ace, that can be an ace. Glenn is currently just barely able to keep up with Aurel before the ending. Afi has first place on lock, it seems, but Gwen is going to risk that ending. The lines he was experimenting with works to the fan here, and they go up to a five to five. I think, is that not one of the only times we see people fly out like that on the side yeah, yeah. it's quite rare it's, it really doesn't happen a lot but you see different preferences in that turn too so the higher up the cone you drive the, the slower, slower you have to go yeah so some players will opt to go all the way at the bottom but then you're also oh, what was that ooh, that was an inside touch from Gwen, and he's not gonna make the jump up to the ring we've seen this a few times from others and it costs you a full respawn Four yeah seconds. that is a lot of time loss so binks is now uh, on the task to try to deny Team BDS as many points as possible. Hopefully he can get up to first place, but he's going to fight it out. There's a lot of pressure on Binks' shoulders right now. And Team BDS, they see that four-second deficit, which means that they can afford to make a mistake and still be in front of Gwen. Great pace from Afi up front, too. He's finally fighting the rhythm on this map. Had some mistakes earlier, but right now he is really just keeping it clean. No! no! I promise I did not use any of my casting powers here, but Binks will have the lead in this round and we might see some more Trickmania if this results in a draw. Binks keeping up 
That pays, but Aurel on the outside, mm. more speed as we talked about. Can he get that flick on the end? He will not, and Binks takes first this round. Aurel in second, Offy has about 10 seconds to work with, so he will take third. And I've told you this, it's not like we're cursing anybody, we're just blessing the other team. We would never want to curse a, a team in particular. No, we only bless. Only blesses, blesses on blesses. Blesses on blesses on blesses. Draw. Yep, exactly, thank you. And I might sneeze soon, so if I could get a bless you in chat when that happens, that would be great. This allergy <laughs> thing is really sneezes just... sneezes a minute or two in advance, that's fine. No, yeah, no, it's like, it's been it's been an ongoing thing. I mean, <laughs> we'll see how long I, I can keep going without the sneeze. But into the next round, no mistakes, Janik. No mistakes uh, in the start, at least, so that's great. But, but I don't think we're... no mistakes. And the entire round? Okay. Yeah, this one, it says they're going to drive really fast, all four players, and it's going to be close. Here on track six, round six. Okay, yeah, I mean, we're yeah. gonna have to see here. No Out mistakes so six. far. Let's Alfie go. in the lead. Does do a little bit harsher of a drift, so the other players might get just mm. a few hundreds closer. Jesus but. pace, by the way. I'm just keeping a moment to notice here on the world record from Pack 101.34. Alfie looking to break it, but he has a little bit less speed on the water part. Gwen getting close onto the identity, though. He's going to be put under pressure, and he might be going very fast here onto the two side wheels early on. Gwen getting closer still. Last turn off the map. Can Gwen push with that sideline? Risky! Oh. Gwen ahead. Sorry, Alfie ahead of Gwen. 101.4 there, but a very fast start to the round. I mean, that was, that was uh, follow the script, two players driving within a point two of world record. So definitely a great- Yeah, Ar Aurel and Binks might not have had the latest copy because they were supposed to be driving faster that yeah. way. Yeah, no, uh, let, let's, blame, let's blame the producers on that one. <laughs> blame the players, <laughs> why are you not doing as we say? <laughs> but uh, that means- are, I mean, the players are putting up a fantastic match, so. That, so eight to seven right now. BDS just needs a first and a third. They need a round victory. G1 could close it out with an ace. So any mistake right now is crucial. Like it's huge if but we see a mistake, but Gwen and Binks, clean start. Yeah, great start by both of them. Aurel is far behind in terms of grip, the map. You don't really see that many big mistakes here. Point four is gonna be tough for him to catch and off even points are behind and trailing a bit behind Biggs is gonna be tough. The ace could come through and end the game on the spot. G1, if they are one identity away from taking the series against BDS, against the regular season winners of last Split, can they do it? Last turn here, Gwen keeping the lead by a lot. Binks though, oh. is being caught up too, but off he jumps and out. And they get it! G1 have taken down BDS and a new record from Gwen in the clutch round. Wow, what a statement to send. Not only are we gonna ace you, but we're gonna do so with a world record on Ooh. top. Taking home the fourth map, G1, the victory over BDS, four to two, and that's gonna be it for this match. What a great showing. Great from G1. I think a lot of people had BDS predicted, at least in the chat, rip to your channel points. But uh, G1 came through. They had a lot of crashes, but they made up for it by driving very fast in the rounds they didn't crash and getting aces. I mean, that's just great. Like, they uh, they lost the map to BDS, they lost the map pick to BDS, but then they took BDS's map pick right afterwards. G great showing, it, but it also shows that the, uh, the teams, even though they think they can win a map, like, I'm gonna pick this map, both teams have the option to win. Right? Like, it's not like they oh, are, yeah. it's not like they're dominant. Win. Yeah, it's not like they're dominant. It's it's just who gets the most consistent great times. I think what we saw from G1 on pool though was quite insane. And then also oh, yeah. control. That, that was two very good maps for them. Vortex as well for BDS looked quite clean, except for the mistakes. Uh, and I think uh, they played a great game regardless. But guys, that was the third game today. We have two more games coming yes. up, two matches of the day. So uh, it's a special day. If I'm not mistaken, the next match is going to be ITB versus Alliance. Correct. Which is going to be a great match. And then we have KC versus BDS after that. So still a lot of Trackmania to be played today. But for now, we're going to take a small break and then be right back. So don't go anywhere. It's going to be Alliance versus ITB. And I'm going to sneeze. I'll see you guys soon. <laughs> Mania World Tour. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to see you. Bless you in chat as well if you sneezed, if you have allergies. It is pretty problematic, but we're going from allergies to alliance and into the breach, Janik. One versus one. I'm going to keep talking while you have your last bite here of your food so you can join my okay, conversation. I, 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 I mean, what people What's have to understand on? is we have, we have five minutes to do everything that a human would do other, other than being like on point for an hour straight, okay? Mm -hmm. So 
So I'm I'm running around the house. I'm busy flaming you in chat as well. Yeah, you had so. time for that, right? And then you come <laughs> up here and you're not even ready. So I'm ready to tell you guys about this game. Into the Beach versus Alliance. It's going to be a banger game. You got Mime and Mudda, two of the World Cup finalists from last year. Alcon and Soldier as well. Great players, upcoming players in the league. And Into the Breach, I feel I've gotten a pretty unlucky start. They're 0 and 2 right now, but if you look at the overall scoreboard, they lost to the two top teams, yeah. Big and Solary. So they've been playing two Titans this season so far. And But Alliance does have a great track record as well. They did lose against G1, but that was on map 7. So it could have gone either way. So Alliance is definitely still on a great trajectory. And I think they're they're third in the uh, in the overall rankings right now. So they're also going to jump into this match on first seed, which gives them priority picking as well of the maps. That is true. They have first seed and Mudda has had stunning individual performances. I would claim him maybe to even be the MVP of the first two weeks, although mm -hmm. uh, different players have gotten the MVP status of the different game days. He has had miraculous performances. We're talking winning four out of five rounds on different maps with no crashes. Eight out of 12 on Frosty, one crash. He has grip, five out of nine wins, one crash. Like, he has had stunning performances on these maps. But Soldier's been there to back him up too. Oh, yeah. Both of them have been amazing players. I think Mudda has gotten multiple world records, at least one world record as well, uh, that is still standing as well. But Into the Breach, they are definitely not, like you can't take them out of the match just because they've had a bad season. Uh, they they are one of the best teams in the entire league. They did really well last league as well. They're in the middle of the pack in terms of TMWT points right now. But Mime and Elcon, they, I think they have a solid chance of taking down Alliance today. So this is going to come down to pick some ends again. We have that coming up soon. Um, <clears throat> into the Breach, they're a tricky team. I feel like they thrive under gimmicks, under the bug slides, under yeah, the new dude. school stuff. You get a 360 and there's something to really shake so up. So you think they're going to pick Vortex is what you're saying? Yeah, okay. Vortex is, at this point, they have to prove that bug slide line works. Okay. They just have to. Uh, Mudda had the Vortex for a while without it, but they have to pick Vortex. I think I think one of the things that ITB is good at as well is picking maps that they feel like others don't excel at. Yeah. Which means that ITB, in my mind, could be one of the teams picking Sinuous. I want it. It's right? been three weeks. Can we see this last map? People don't even know. No, we we haven't like. even casted it yet. I, I, don't, I don't know what a match on Sinews looks like. I think it was only first even picked in the Challenger League uh, a few days ago. Mm. So the first two weeks of Challenger League didn't even oh, have it either. There we go. Maps are being picked and being banned here. First map ban is from Elcon and uh, Mime. They Coming. ban Grip. And now we will have Alliance's ban and against Into the Breach, maybe something like Off-Road is something you want to take away. Yep, that one goes away. There you go, you called it. So, I mean, that that does mean Sinuous is open. Sinuous is open, but like, there are so many maybe more suitable I mean, Mudda would be good at Sinuous as I, well. I think, speed, yeah. Right? Oh. oh, there it's you go. Oh, it's first pick. Boom, boom. Let's get some hype in the chat. Sinuous is on the board. This is a map that suits so it's so interesting, right? Because you have Mudda, who is one of the world's best full speed players on Alliance's side, mm -hmm. but then you have Elcon, yep. one of the world's best full speed players on Into the Breach's side. You got Control, the second choice from um, Into the Breach, I and breaking be, yeah. the answer. Um, okay, so we're gonna see Vortex, I think. Vortex, Frosty will be picked by uh, Mudda, I think. Yeah, Alliance, Alliance will pick certainly. Frosty. Vortex will be picked by ITB, I think. And then it's whether Speed or Airwalk gets picked. So there you go, there comes Vortex from ITB. I think Frosty is going to be the answer coming in from Alliance's side. They could try something like Airwalk, where Mudda's had really good performances too, but I feel like Frosty is the, is the more natural choice to well, go the thing, for. The thing is, though, that I think Airwalk will be picked regardless by ITB. So I think Frosty is the pick, oh, it's maybe. It's also gone a bit under the radar here, but Pool is open. Pool, uh, and, and we're not talking about speed because we are assuming no team is really uh preferencing into speed here yeah but we're gonna we're gonna see what's being picked here they're they're talking That's about it there's seconds five left. seconds yeah five seconds left now so i mean they gotta pick they gotta pick it out well, i'm excited though i'm already excited like can we just get this I mean, over is that and timer videos? is that timer just for show what i feel it's, it's, it's timer it's, fake it's yeah it's a fake timer it's hit zero two times now and nothing has happened maybe we just get like a flash in a pan just the last three laps at the same time <laughs> It could happen here. Oh, we do have the pick. It's Airwalk. Airwalk the choice. And now Elcon getting to choose the map for Into the Breach. Yep. 
I see mm, That's a tough actually. choice here. Do you favor like Frosty Mudda is so good at, but they do they still do pick, pick it. pick it. Okay, and then Pool is the random one. So speed, speed like is. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people uh, prefer speed. I think uh, Sinners might be the only yeah. team that really want that map, but. Everybody, we gotta talk about this because we don't get to talk about Sinews too often. Let's roll the preview of Sinews and take a look at the map. It's a very speed heavy map. I have hunted the E version of the map, so I know quite a lot of intricacies mm. about it. There was a wall bang on the map in an early iteration that is now removed, but you still have uh, high speed, three speed slides, or S4Ds yep. as they're called. And then you also have a very tricky ice part in the middle of the map. Did you say S4Ds? S4Ds. Okay, so these speed slides are different than the regular speed slides you might encounter in Cub of the Day. These speed slides are triggered manually by pressing the brake button. Yeah, an S4D is a SD, a speed drift, but with a four in between it. I, I don't know where the name comes from. It's one of the worst trick names in the entire game, but you tap okay. break to start a speed slide again. Shots fired. Why, why are you so angry at S4D? S4D. It's a cool name. S4D and Zoop are the... Are, I, I have beef. I have beef with letters, Janik. That's my life. <laughs> I have ran out of things to care about, so I gotta yep. rename tricks in yep. the game. Okay, okay. I mean, I'm glad. What Didn't you call ice sliding something else in the start? I tried to call it the slippery slide. The slippery slide, okay? So <laughs> let's not talk about who is but making feel, bad names. I feel Hover Boost is one of the better names that I've come up with. But guys, let's enjoy this while it lasts. The first round played on Sinuous in the Grand League. Uh, it took until week three to see this match. But now we see it. Elkon versus Mudda. Elkon having to release on this first slide. And here, Mudda's going to tap break to get that speed slide. You can tell by the skid marks overlapping behind his car. Getting up to 520 speed there is really, really strong. Here, you have to do a wide jump. It used to be a wall bang, but now it's just a regular turn. And Mime is fighting Mudda here. They're going to jump over as much as they can if that's snow while getting into an ice slide. Good angle. And now you want a 360. Beautiful. To get another ice slide here for the exit. And then we got more full speed coming up. And what's known as a hunter wall ride. It's a wall ride that curves into a sideways platform. And look at the speed Mana's able to gain here towards Mime. Able to get a bit closer. But Mime actually holding this first round down. Four into the breach. 10207. And uh I think that is a very good time to start us off. Almost the yep. world record. Almost the world record here. So what I what I like about this map is that it is so speedy and it just favors Mudda and, and Elcon for that matter. You're so right. Both of those players are incredible at, at full speed. But also the identity. Uh, we have the scoreboard into the Breach versus Alliance at the top of the screen. So it makes the identity a little bit harder to see. Maybe we should try to get that in Cam 2. Uh, just so we can we can see where the players are actually aiming for. But here you can see the S4, you can see Mime went for a very tight line and Mudda went wider and the speed coming through is oh just my God. dominating to catch back up. But then we see something the Into the Beach players are doing. They're drifting that one turn rather than the release. Alcon going wide here, looks like he's losing time but coming back with speed. And now into the tricky ice part. Alcon also, it must be said, like Alcon and Mudda are like copies of one another. They thrive on ice and full speed. And he, oh, almost touching the attack point. Getting a good line there, though. Now into the full speed section. Mudda has more entry speed. Oh, that's a Gonna nice a entry. Line, yeah. But wait, it's not over yet. Alcon, the speed here, the setup, maybe towards the checkpoint. Up the hill, up the slalom. Driving on these small planks. Mudda, though, what almost breaking that Dexter yeah. record. And a victory for Alliance. One hundreds away from the record. Very well played by Mudda. I think we might see the record get broken. You, you would hope, right? Like this map, it hasn't been played in any match yet. We only have the offline leaderboard and the Challenge League matches to go by. And I think that record is from the offline leaderboard. So best match time for sure. Best match time for sure. But uh, these players, they, of course, we. this is the first time we're seeing, if you just joined in, this is the first time we're seeing Sinuous. It is Into the Breach versus Alliance. It's the first map pick, picked by Alliance. Currently, it's a 3-3 three to -three situation, but Mudda and Solja on P1 and P3 at the moment. Mudda with a great start to the round. Yeah, the biggest surprise to me so far is that drift from Into the Breach. It cannot be a big difference maker, but something they are uh, opting to do. Down to the 360s, we saw something from Mudda, and I'm wondering if it's about on purpose. Going very high on this ice bowl. Looks like he's doing it again. You can see everyone else goes lower. 
but maybe this gives him more speed. He's about two times ahead. He's about to be further ahead, because that's a lot of speed going towards the wall ride. Soldier almost there to ace with his teammate, but Alcon has a very good lineup this hill. Oh. Might have more speed than Soldier coming up, and we'll pass him just and barely. And there you go. A 101.8, a new record from Mudda. It only took three rounds. Yeah, and makes I mean, quick work of that. Makes quick work of it. I'm yeah. scared to even think what his what his personal best might be on this. I, I don't know, but with all the tricks you have to do in a map like this, I'm assuming you could go a lot further. Alliance though takes the lead on the map. They do. Four to five. As we head into round number four. Now wide setup from Elcon here. It looks like something he wants. 520 speed there. We'll get him a bit closer. And then this auto slide. Just one brake tap, and then just letting the car drift naturally into the turn. But Mara is still ahead. Inside approach, having to back out a little bit of it. Mime up to first place now before the ice. But here we again see the different lines. We see Mara opting for a very wide turn on the bowl. Getting the 360 it looks so good when they make so good work. It's not easy to do a 360 that perfectly, especially when the checkpoint is, is placed like it is. It's so easy to, to touch. But Mime this time is in the lead. Mudda trying that to see if he can get good close. For Mime. It has been so clean so far. Alcon almost passing Mudda as well, but he holds Oh off. my god. 101.67. Mudda actually beating his record from the previous round, but Mime, 0.6. That's pretty clean. Giving the production team uh, some work and keeping to having to... Yeah, they're just going to have to be typing the yeah. entire game here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Can already pre-type the next one. Probably 0.5 or something. <laughs> I don't know, but... Uh, the uh, the only way you get to see this map is by having the best players on it. Because players like Carl Jr. and Pac, they will just auto-ban this every match of the season so far. They have banned Sinews every time. I think it's also like, it's a, it's a good ban if you're not into these very, very uh, momentum-based maps, right? Yeah, it's high speed, it's ice 360s, yeah. speed slides, like it's uh, very new school in, in all senses of the word. Um, Elkhan and Mime though, again a good start. Soldier has not had the greatest impact so far, but this could be where he needs to shine with Mudda. They need to get past at least one guy here to not lose that equal scoreline in the match. They're about to get aced here with... Oh, oh my. Oh, my making a mistake there. Looks like it will save Alliance from a potential big point hit as uh, Elcon is driving a clean run up front. That's going to be a good time too. Point seven from point him. Seven. We're consistently just seeing the old world record being beaten now. Yeah. Um, but that's just because we haven't seen this map being played in the uh, team. Yeah, I think now you talked about Carl Jr. and Pac and Solary. Yeah. Last season, uh, last stage, they they banned the same map on all on all of their matches, and they said they just hadn't played the map. Yeah, they and just I didn't, think this they is just the same one map. I this think is the one. they saw this map and they're like, "We're just not gonna touch it." Yeah. No, We're not we gonna spend time. So I don't think they've even touched the map. I haven't opened it. It's like, uh, I mean, they're really good at technical maps with drifting and stuff, but full speed and ice, it's like, uh, we could just not, you know? Yeah. Have we thought about it? We could just not play it. We see the difference, like, that, that slide paid off this time. Interesting. Mata going wide, getting a lot of speed for the downhill. This is tough to control. This landing in the downhill, and then also getting on the snow. Well, setting up for the ice slide in time. Quite a tricky section. Soul just made a mistake. Mata in third. Alert Ooh. right now for could... Alliance. They could get aced and into the breach could take the map. Right this round, good speed from both of them extending ahead. Mudda needs a miracle ending right now. He needs to gain point two. But Mime and Elkhorn are driving synergy up the hill. They're not going to lose that lead and they take Sinuous for the first time with great times. 101.7. And this was Alliance's map pick, right? So yep. they instantly take... Sick pace coming into the chat from Mudda as well. I think they, uh, since this map hasn't been played, obviously they didn't know what the paces of the different teams are. And I think um, Alliance just thought that they had better. They had really good pace. Yeah, like Mudda was insane on this. But, right? uh, but apparently uh, ITB were ready for it. It might, it might have been something ITB honestly wanted to pick as well. Yeah, it could be that they were like, yeah, but it's Mudda. He's going to pick it, right? Yeah. And then well, I mean, duke it out. Yeah, right? And... and Honestly, it might have been ITB's first pick, and they just saw Alliance like, oh, okay, oh, I, yeah, okay, no, sure, yeah. sure. I guess we pick oh, something well, else yeah, then. Yeah, please, please do. I mean, be my guest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, the uh, great, great starting map for Into the Breach. Oh, that Take made me happy. Didn't didn't you guys like that chat? That was good. That was a good map. I still wouldn't rate it as my favorite, but it's a good map. 
we've seen a lot of rounds on grip and pool and the, the drop. Like, that, that changed things up a little bit. I like that. It did. I like the 360 ice ice turn, um, but we see a lot of those in uh, freeze. What's that? Frosty? Frosty, yeah. yeah. Frosty has a lot of... Oh, and Mara with a mistake here on control. Talking about going into this game, Mara is one of the players that makes the least mistakes. He's had the most consistent performance. Yep. But the pace right now being put on by Into the Breach is kind of making him have to take some risks to keep up. And they're continuing that streak into control. The splits here once again fast, dropping a 42 on that checkpoint from Mime. Yeah, this is going to be actually fast, on pace. Actually, to uh, potentially like the, it's going to be an ace most likely with the mistakes, but four seconds down to Soldier. So Elcon even has a lot of time to work with. Mime just but has to get these final. Mime does I, I think Mime is going to go for safing. Yeah, that's a safe. Mm, um, I don't know, Janik. This could be close to that record pace. He has the splits for it. Last jump. If he gets this clean. One ten point what mime point five. five. Okay, I did see like he is he is jumping pretty high in the ending. Wait, Elcon made a mis it's a draw. Oh, Elcon made nine seconds of mistakes towards oh, the ending. Oh, that is unfortunate. We didn't e we didn't even catch that. Um, we were so so lost in the pace sauce. Yeah, 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 yeah. On the, in the pace sauce. In the in the pace sauce, we got the, too caught up in the with pasta. the Mexican currency. In the pace. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so oh, sorry. Oh, that was no, that was unironically a good one because I didn't even think of that. But alas, we go into the next round here. It's a draw, and the draw is fine. We get to see more Trekmania. Five games being played today. This is game four, and it's uh, oh, Elcon, huge mistake. Now Alliance, they see this dent in the armor. They're gonna poke it. That you know, you gotta make use of situations like this, right? Yeah, and Into the Breach are losing a little bit of the momentum from the, the first map win here. Mine being uh, kept up with by Alliance. They are in relative, uh, close range, and the pace is quite a lot slower than last time, so not needing to risk that much to keep up with Mine, but still a clean run, though. Still an opportunity to keep that first place, but he needs he, some clean jumps. Yeah, he could make this a draw. Soldier is Ooh, right there with him. Soldier nice going for low a jump. super low jump. That was very risky, but look how far ahead that puts him. Mime does have a little bit more speed, so he's getting closer, but oh. still point one. I don't, Soldier uh, has it. Soldier has okay. it. So it's, it's really hard to determine which line there would be fastest, mostly because like our Spectre cam isn't the perfect, uh, you know, you can't overlook every single detail when you're just looking at one car. But what Soldier did is that he slowed down a lot in the air to accelerate halfway through the jump and then get a very low jump. What Mime did was jump a little bit higher, have more speed through the most of the jump, but also having to land a little bit later. Uh, it's it's hard to see what exactly is fastest or not, but Soldier did maintain that lead and he, he made up about 0.2 almost in the ending just by getting a better identity. And it's so important for Alliance that Soldier is playing these rounds and not crashing because uh, usually it's Mura making sure that no, no, no crashes are happening. But in these rounds, he's made a lot of mistakes already and Soldier has been there to defend, keeping the scoreline yep. much more level than it might have otherwise been. It's good to see Soldier being first as well. Yeah, it's great. Mura is not the only great player, but he does get a lot of the spotlight with the pace he's driving. Uh, now, oh, what a landing into that bobsleigh. Beautiful exit as well. He can push for a lot of speed through this. Extend this lead against Alcon. Mine looks like he made a mistake on the back there, and that is going to be a second. Armada is on great pace here. Uh, he should be able to maintain a lead on Elcon at least up until the identity. Elcon needs to go for some risky lines here if he wants Ooh, to try to secure this That draw. is low. Yeah, that is a low. really low. But you can see he also got Ooh. up next to him now. Now only one car length separating the two players. Oh Come my on, God. Really Elcon, low what a risk. There's no shot. What a beautiful identity from Elcon. 110.68, but a great risk there in the end. That is perfection in the last two jumps. Two low jumps, pixel perfect next to the ledges, and he lands with enough speed yep. to carry. Like that was that really, really that good. is the risk we're talking about you can take here in the uh in the identity of control, but it's also super risky. Like it is so easy to not get the uh the landing down. It's so easy to clip one of the bobsleigh blocks. Also making up for the missed ace earlier. They had a good lead and a potential ace. That one fell to the wayside, but here denying the ace from Alliance when my made a mistake, so Elcom with a really tight line, he could have touched that corner, just kissed it a little bit because that would give you the penalty, but he did avoid it. Jump. Ooh, good landing from Elcon. Soldier went really wide there. 
not getting full grip with the cone structure here. Alcon having a diagonal approach. No, oh, I think Mata touched the wall. He did indeed. And the two into the reach players go up into first and second now. Looking for the ace, and maybe Mada is the one who has to get those Alcon jumps to defend here. The Reach could, with this, take a big lead in the map. And no, oh, never no. mind. Alcon, the risk shows that it is indeed. Oh, risky. double up on the mistakes. This is tough now. Mine crashed while taking the checkpoint. Might not make the jump. This could be oh, an ace. Oh, Soldier might come down. back up now. Where's Soldier? Soldier coming through no for the ace. Shot. Mime, okay, Mime did everything he could, but once you crash while taking the checkpoint, respawning is not gonna save yep. you, right? He had to work with a very slow jump and almost got across, but it is the ace for Alliance. Now Alliance up to seven points, seven, seven to three. three. We have seen a comeback here earlier today. I think KC versus Big was seven to two and still came back. Uh, didn't win the map, but came back to like a eight to nine, I think. Yeah, it so, went to overtime. Yeah, like, yeah it was overtime. So, so it's, Into the Breach definitely not out yet, but they have to start. Uh, Pulling up the pace a little bit because Mata and Soldier, they are not going to give up this map easily. Ooh, that was a mistake already. Oh, Two mistakes. No. Even Mime barely staying on the track. But uh, Soldier now up in first quite clearly. But this is where he made a mistake last time. Going a little too high on this grip. Keeps full ground contact now. Two times down to Alcon and Mata will go up next to Alcon here before this icy wheel turn. You get a little bit more turn radius and you actually are able to clear that at full speed, done properly. But here, he's sandwiched between the two Alliance players and he needs to pull out some great jumps once again to the fact Yeah, we have seen Alcon do some amazing jumps here in the ending, going oh super low God. once again he's here. He's gonna do it twice. Solja has a stronger lead than Mata did, but is Alcon gonna get past here? Might Mata get past him? That's not gonna happen. The speed is in Alcon's favor, but the result remains Alliance up to nine to four. Nine to four. So we're looking at uh, two aces for Into the Breach to uh, get back here. And I mean, it's not impossible, but any any mistake from ITB now will give Alliance the map. Victory. It will. They had some really stunning pace in round one with Mime. But after that, he's made a few mistakes now. And you can see it on the scoreline. Alliance very close to locking this one in. And that would be the players uh, winning each other's maps. It would, yep. This is uh, for those who just joined. This is Alliance's map pick. ITB won first map, uh, which was um, Sinuous picked by Alliance. And now Alliance are looking to win into the Breach's map pick control here. So they could be uh, trading maps, but that's fine. They don't mind that. To be honest, both teams uh, are looking like, into the Breach looked really strong on Sinuous. So it's okay, but in hero control, Alliance clearly more consistent than the Into the Breach players so far. Now, no point loss can be had. Alcon needs oh, to stabilize no. this. It's going to be a shaky one. He's losing time. And as long as the Alliance players are ahead of Alcon, they will be taking this map. They just need one person to not... Uh, one person to be first, second, and that's going to be it, right? Yeah. So they're, they're, they're going to be fine. Mata is far ahead in the lead. Soldier oh, jumping in there. I think Mime made a mistake oh. as well, so they're going to be acing uh, The pace from Mata, though? Is kind of fast. Is that a good uh, point four? Point four is still a still solid time. Still a really time. sick time. It was like, is, is he gonna just get the record now? I don't know. Okay, Alliance take the map one to one. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these uh, some of these replays. replays. Well, Dude, we gotta see the Alcon jumps again. We gotta see the Alcon jumps see it again. Right they here. were amazing. He was two tenths behind, and then after the first jump, he caught up a tenth fully, and then on the second one just. So low near that wall, able to get a clean landing as well. Beautiful. But then Alliance getting the aces due to ITB making mistakes here. Yeah, this was um, the mime. Pro like he just barely didn't have the speed. Even with the bounce, yeah. it was so close. But I mean, imagine he lands that clean, right? That would be. Then he would have gotten it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So now we're heading on to breaking. This is Alliance's second map pick. They were so good here the first time they played it. Mada winning four out of the five rounds he played on it. And his pace, his average pace is 113.1, which is just yep. incredible. Mada is good here. And he, um, this is one of the maps we've talked about earlier that is very volatile, as Virtual says. It's very easy to make huge mistakes. It's very easy to, to touch a wall, slide out. 
uh, jump in a hole. So we're gonna have to see if Alli Alliance, I feel like is known for being consistent, you know? Like they know when to slow down, they know when, when to make, uh, make big plays. And Elcon has already made a pretty huge mistake. So they're gonna try to pressure Mime to force him into driving faster than he's comfortable with. Their mod are getting so much speed. That Mime. outside line, wow. my god, what a overtake. Just getting so much more speed on that sector. Also setting up wider here to push even further ahead on that cruise control. And now Soldier will join him, an ace is possible. Mime now needs a really good identity. R don't uh, even think about pushing for fast pace. You have to push all in here to catch up the soldier. Oh, so oh, yeah, he's back. He might be up. Get, it, get up next to him. He has to push here the ending, though. So much speed. Oh. All the speed. He gets it, but soldier also gets a beautiful turn. And that's going to be an ace coming in from Alliance on their own map pick. Beautifully done. And Mada with a 113.5. And Mada has, in, in matches on the server, never crashed on this map. That's another 113.5. He hasn't crashed a single time. That is so impressive coming in from Mudda. Just clean, flawless on this map so far. And Mudda's a player that we talked about. He he doesn't play the warm-ups. Like no, he just sits and waits, yeah. right? You get 10 to 20 seconds to just drive the first couple of turns on the map again, make sure everyone loads in properly. He never plays it to keep like... Because when he practices, he just does full runs of the map every time. Uh, and he wants to keep that rhythm that he has. And he's doing that right now. That, that rhythm still stays. Alcon once again trailing a little bit in the start. But this ice slide is one of the hardest parts of the map. Getting the exit here right yep. to go down so this sharp downhill and then getting the entry for that outside dirt. Very tricky. So even though Elko must be behind, he's catching up. But look at this. The Alliance players have done it perfectly. They have. And without crashing, and you were right, Mada and Soldier consistently driving through the map without any major mistakes. Mada taking up a lot of that penalty that ice. be the first mistake, but it's not really a crash. It's not though. a crash. It's just a little bit slower, Sold but he can first. still push himself back up there if he gets a good ride. Oh, that there is, is a crash coming in from Mada. And a crash and a from Elcon as well. Was that through the checkpoint? I think it might have oh, been. Oh, and as well. Eight. No shot. Elcon is there. Elcon is Mata, there. Mata respawned again. Yes, Mata. so close. This battle for that third place will go to Mime by three hundredths of a second. I think Mata respawned twice. Uh, I think he could have gotten second place. Very close. And it's in a draw. Soldier also able to drop a mid-113. And Alliance are looking very strong on this map. This was their second choice. But honestly, if they picked this against someone like Solary, I think they would win the map. The, the, at the oh, yeah. the teams are currently. Absolutely. But Alliance looking to be a, a heavy favor here on breaking the third track. Definitely understandable why they picked this map. Such a fast start from Mudda. Just all in push. So high up there. Don't think he wanted to go that high. But able to control it. Able to... Navigate through those dirt bumps and get up to first again before the ice slide. Now here we see some different exits. We see uh, some players favor going very late, but really the ideal trajectory is what you're seeing right there from Mudda. Barely past the side of that hole. Not able to get all the way on the outside, but Soldier was, and he's going to fly past one into the breach player, almost two into that downhill. But it's great pace being displayed up front. Mudda might have this on lock now and do another crashless run and a fast run at that. The splits are... Quite impressive here, Jadik. Soldier is right there, trying to get that ace together with his teammate here. Elcon and Mime are right next oh. to him, though. It's three players within one tenth of a second. Can Soldier overtake here in the ending? Final right hander. He gets it beautifully, Ooh. and I think that's gonna be the ace for Alliance. And look at this time: one thirteen eleven from Mudda. Really nice. An ace for Alliance. Seven to one. Seven to one, what a statement. ITB are looking to fall behind right now and Alliance are gonna get that momentum. They are, I mean, I mean, and I don't know how Alcon and Mime are feeling about this. If you're getting obliterated on a map and you knew your opponent was gonna pick it and you knew they were fast and you see exactly the pace you might have expected, then maybe it's not the biggest deal in the world. Maybe you can just think, okay, we have our map coming up after, that's our fighting chance, because so far, we haven't seen a lot of 113s from the Into the Beach side, so yep. maybe they're just like, okay, if 113.5 is the bar, then we're not going to jump over it. We're just not. I mean, that's the thing, right? You cannot let uh, a mental issue, like a mental barrier start to, to develop. Just because your opponent's team are driving fast on a map, just because they won twice in a row or won on your map pick, there is the worst thing that can happen oh. is that you start to tilt and soldier not getting the lose slide. Time here. He's going to be about two seconds behind. Opportunity arises for Into the Breach. Can they capture this 
moment and try to get past Mudda. He had a perfect ending last time, just about slowing down to 350 on that first one, but Minus is keeping up. And now the second one, 280 speed roundabout is what you want. He sets up wide, gets a lot of extra speed, but he's somehow just losing time to Mudda there. Mudda with a great end, 113.3, and it's a draw. It is a draw, but Alliance will take draws any day. If they can just continue to do that, they're still going to win. Even if they take losses, like round yeah. losses, they're still going to win the map. are eventually going to bleed out yep. with the they current don't, score as, line. as you say, they don't have enough HP to keep uh, playing like that. They got to get an ace in. And I don't think Alliance is going to give up an ace that easily, especially not with Mudda on the team. Yeah, the problem is Mudda is driving so fast. And then that one round that Mudda crashed, his first crash on the map, by the way, Soldier drove a 130.6. Yeah, exactly. Like gaining... Gaining points against a t team like that is just so, so ridiculous. There's not a lot to do. You gotta hope for some miracles to happen. Uh, maybe multiple crashes, or you just gotta be uh, Gwen, I guess. Yeah, Gwen and Binks against yeah. Meta and Soldier on this? That's a spectacle. And we did actually get to see them play already this season. Uh, but that's like the two top teams on this map, I imagine, stylistically. But look at mine. Let's not uh, scoff over this. Mime on this map in the start consistently keeping up with and here crushing Mudda and Solja. He's beating them by two, three tenths of a second and he's actually on Rodiger pace up front. Even though Elkins crashed, he has to hold this. Mudda's oh. coming closer, dancing oh left my God. right, getting that move into the checkpoint perfectly. Mime, no, 700, no. Mudda clipping off. Mime getting the last turn, trying to get close to the fence as much speed as he can. Manage and it's a 113.3 for him and with that respawn from Mudda, Elkon, he doesn't have what speed. Is he's too slow, he didn't get up the Till and that means Mudda gets third. I mean, whether or not, I, I, it sucks for ITB. Alliance doesn't really care if it's a if it's a draw or if it's a loss because they get that one point um, that they're looking for, and they just need one more. The, the one thing I would feel for Into the Beach there is if they if they get the victory and they go up to four to nine, they can double ace. But here they have to ace, ace, and then you know. Yeah, that's true. Ooh, that's when true. a crash in the start from Alcon. I think that kind of seals the deal that puts the nail in the coffin. Ooh, Elcon is three, it's three, four seconds behind now. Yeah, the speed as well. Oh, oh hang on. Mara, though, which, I mean, it doesn't make it impossible. A soldier could make a mistake now. I guess, but even with that mistake, Janik, Mara seems to still be oh, two made, seconds yeah, ahead. Elcon made of another Elcon, mistake. So, uh, an unlikely scenario, but let's, let's never call it too soon. I, yeah, no, no, nothing is, is over, but... Do you, do you reckon if we combine our caster curse forces, we could actually make this happen? No, our caster bless for, forces. Sorry, rather, yeah. For ITV. Reverse bless forces. Uh, yeah. No, not reverse. That's a curse as well. Co-caster here does not know how blesses and curses work, but that is fine because we're seeing Mime on a very solid first place. 0.3 of a second ahead of Soldier, but Soldier and Mudder, they need to be on third and fourth for ITB to have any more chances on this map, and it does not look like that's gonna oh. happen. He's gonna uh, drive into the railing. So actually, uh, Mara and Solja are gonna end it off with an ace. <laughs> yeah, cleaning up the stats a little bit, keeping that streak going. Still though, great, great showing from, uh, I think Into the Reach would beat a lot of teams on this, but just the, the, the level you have to drive out to beat Alliance on this is quite insane. Uh, yeah, I think Alliance yeah. will beat Sorry, Into Prob the Breach would beat a lot of teams. Rather, uh, Alliance will beat well, Alliance, no, I think they would, <laughs> against G1, it's like a 50-50 who's gonna yeah, win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I think, ITB was definitely also faster, like, no doubt about that, but they were just pushed beyond what they were comfortable driving because of Alliance's consistency and their pace. Now, we're gonna jump into Vortex. I'm excited about this. I'm so excited about this. It's two different philosophies. We see Mara going for a seesaw in the start. Just, uh, well, you can't see, we're playing Reapers. He's just dancing on this moving block. But Vortex, I associate this map in my brain with Into the Breach because of their line in week one where they go for a bug slide. Mara played that uh, this map recently. Oh, welcome. And uh, got a really good time, a 105.3. And he did not use their line, but Mime is probably going to use it here. He Going is. wide on this turn so that he can get a lot of speed into this turn. And with that speed, he's going to jump through the track point, land in a bug slide up the hill, and then carry on. You can see oh, he caught up to Mudda and that. also kept a lot of speed here. But it Mudda was, no, it was faster. He, he got up closer to Mudda. But uh, Alliance will take use uh, and try to benefit from the fact that Elkon made a mistake in the start, they really need to. So, 
This could be points for Alliance of Mudder maintains this lead. Mime is going to try to see if he can push. He's also going to try to see if he can push here in the final right-hander. This could determine whether or not he overtakes Mudder. If he gets enough speed out of this, he actually ends up sliding twice. So it takes away a little bit more of the speed. So they're equal, I think. But Mudder is ahead, and he's not going to give up this. Oh! oh. Hang on, soldier! Oh, okay, a bit too far. Right? He was 0.6. It could have maybe happened. Do you think Mudder that's faster, ahead. going down as late as possible? So I saw Bren do this in the KC match. Mm -hmm. He went very late up and said, okay, I don't need the speed because the finish line is pretty close. Look to gain like a few hundreds, maybe. But yeah, no, that was very close. I, it was so fa satisfying as well to see just how similar the move needs to be on the pipe to get yeah. through. Okay, so Elkon getting through the start there without a mistake. So we see all four players. And now we will see both into the breach players. Then go for this wild line. You can see it from the perspective of the Alliance players. Looks like their opponents are just not playing the map as it's meant to be played. But then flying through Mime, backing out of the bug slide there last second, maybe realizing it wouldn't work and will take a quite big time loss because of that but leaves Alcon up in first, using that line, point one checkpoint, and the pace is there. Yeah, Alcon just needs to drive through this smoothly. He is in a pretty demanding lead, about a car length ahead of Mata, but Mata is pushing as far as hard as he can, and they're now shoulder Ooh. to shoulder here. They will be driving tandem into the finish. All oh, the speed, oh, Alcon back. Mata pushing so hard, getting the overtake, and now he has the advantage. Will Elcom be able to overtake here Late in the ball, final right? left-hander? He might with a good speed slide, not quite enough, and Mata overtaking Elcon in the ending. Mata keeping it clean on this. That is such a close race there, though. They both had about the same drift trajectory. Uh, Elcom was like, oh, I'm not sure I'm going to release. And Mata was like, yeah, full speed it. Victory. And that's what we're talking about. Sometimes it's like those five speed that you get. From, oh, yeah. That, that's that's actually a big difference. The full commit there yeah. is what won them the round. So we go into round number three. Alliance up four to two. They've won the last two rounds here. So as long as it goes like this, Alliance might even take another map from ITB. Yeah, and Danica, I have another stat for you. Mudas actually never crashed on this map either. In now nine rounds of play, no big crashes cost him over two seconds. You can see just how far behind Elkon and Mime are. Oh, but then, wow, this and, is scary now. And that's the thing about that bug slide line. It is risky. Oh, 100%. They're, they're one of the only teams going for it. We only saw it adapted by K. Oh, C, no. And talking about Mata's clean sheet, about his non-mistake run on this map, too. It will, again, result in him crashing. Not my fault, though. But <laughs> impressive to drive this nine rounds in a row on World of Pace without crashing. Mime versus oh, Soul Soldier. Yeah. Mm, it's going to be in I favor think, of Mime. I think, they're, I think Soldier has, like, one or two more speed than Mime, but it's, I don't know if it's enough. He needs to get a good line in the ending, not getting the speed there, and Mime will maintain the lead. Uh, so ITB will get the two points, one point for Alliance. But wow, that round in the start, just after the bug slide, it looked like they were getting aced. And into the looks getting out of that with a win is quite fortunate. They really, uh, with that result, is the only way they stayed in this map. Because if you yep. drop down five points of a difference, it's very uh, you hard. You can see just how important the, the start is. Elkhorn losing 0.2, maybe even 0.3 Might now. Might be 0.3, yeah, on the checkpoint. It's going to be, yeah, 0.3 to the closest opponent. Now we go into this. About equal beforehand. Can Mime, with this outside line, catch up to Mudda going for the inside? Looks like Mime has made a mistake, actually. So no, Elkhorn, though, will be getting slightly closer, but... But look at that. Look at that, though. Elkhorn was 0.4 behind the first oh, place. But yeah, okay, so... The speed is hard to manage yep. as well, and now they are in a dire spot, Danik. Now Soldier and Mudda just has to drive consistently into the finish. They're almost a second ahead of Mime, the... the uh, fastest player of ITB for this round. So they have a lot of wiggle room to work with. Let's see if they can get through this pipe version or section of the identity without making any huge mistakes. It does look like both of them are doing it clean. And then one more turn into the finish. That's going to be an ace for Alliance, jumping up to eight points. This would be massive. They won their opponent's map pick earlier, but here they could do it again and take a very strong 3-1 to lead on the map. Just needs one more regular victory now and into the breach are basically looking for an ace at some point. That was a big mistake from Soldier crashing the checkpoint. But Mudda is still in there, and we've only seen Mudda crash once on this map, not just today, but in total. So 
Um, definitely not going to give up an ace to into the breach easily. And he's also in the lead here. But if you take a look at the checkpoint times, they're going to be about 0.2 behind Mota now. But if they get this... Looks like they finally have it down, but it's still not enough to pass him. Oh no, they did not get it super clean either, so they're going to maintain that 0.2.1 deficit here. They're going to get a lot of speed into this right-hander. That is where Elkhorn ended up getting a slide because he had so much speed. Mutta is still kind of far ahead, multiple car lengths, about 0.2, so Elkhorn and Mime has a lot on their oh, plate to get up the there. The checkpoint from Mutta as well is the reason they can't keep up with it. The Australian is driving close to his old world record pace. No longer the record, but around 0.3, 0.4 on the track. A really clean run here coming through from Mata. And are the Into the Breach players going to survive? Looks like Elkins respawn, and they only need the regular victory. That is Solja taking the map with his team. And a nice 0.420 from Mata. He's going to drop the Blazed in chat, yeah. just like last oh, week. Oh, he drops the Blazed in chat. And of course he does. Well played, Mata. And that's going to be map... Four, victory by Alliance. That's going to put Alliance up to match point in terms of maps. So they only need to win one more map. And this map that is coming up right now is Alliance's map pick. But you can tell how close it is. It's just a few hundreds in some rounds that really make or break the result. But ultimately, that one ace, though, from Alliance really pushed them too far ahead. We should catch up. And now we're going to be looking at um, Alliance's map pick, which is Airwalk. We've seen this earlier today as well. We've seen some very unfortunate bounces earlier today on Airwalk where the, the bouncing blocks that you see here on the start, they also are featured in the middle and the end of the map. Uh, shoot players in a little bit of unpredictable direction sometimes. So I just, I just wonder when I see a map like this, as you said with the unpredictability of the end, if Mada's figured it out because Mada is probably the player who is most meticulous about his practice yeah and we look for all kinds of setups all kinds of like oh if i have this exact speed going in i press left at this time and i release when i see myself passing that tree on the left like just whatever the setup might be he will try to find something that works every time he values the consistency so much for an ending like that and maybe he's going to keep that up i think he is but you are right he's very meticulous in all his training he's going a little bit wide there on the apex for that drift but my want to do that to make sure he keeps the gear. Solja in the lead though, Elkham right behind. All of the players get through this middle crux of the map. So we're going to have to see. It's probably going to come down to this identity here. Elkhorn overtaking Soldier here for a moment. Mara is right behind. It's going to be so oh! difficult. Mara getting slung backwards. Elkhorn, oh, Soldier <laughs> flying out of nowhere, getting the overtake. Me spitting on my co because I'm yelling so loud. Damn, that is... Uh, uh, an impressive, impressive overtaking the ending from Soldier. Looked like Mara just jumped too low there, so it was not really the block's fault, but the setup did not go the way he envisioned. But Soldier, what an ending. Just a few hundreds out of both with a clean jump into that finish. If you haven't seen this map before and you're wondering what is going on, how are the cars flying, they're jumping onto bumper blocks. The second the car touches it, it will bump in the direction that you are moving. Uh, at the same time, and also the yeah. uh, push by the arrows, the way the arrow is pointing, so. Yeah, I mean, and they are a little bit unpredictable. We did see Mutta, he touched the corner of it and just got full blasted in the wrong direction. So it is um, not always as easy as it looks, but if, if you do the mechanic as intended, you should be flying straight into the finish, and Solja did it really well and got the snipe for first. Did, and now into the next round, Mime has a really strong lead. Fastest, some of the fastest splits we have seen as well on the map. Going a little bit wider though. Uh, able to avoid the pillar up to the last check win here. Mutta with a better drift. Also more speed perhaps in the setup. Going to release later than Mime. Getting a lower Ooh. jump because of that. And that might be Mutta winning the round. Where is... Oh, Mime getting further to the left there and getting the overtake in the ending. But uh, yeah, you could not see him. He was out of frame. M Mime getting a much... Uh, tighter trajectory. Yeah. Mara jumping further with more speed, still not paying off. Two to two on Airwalk. But every point that Alliance gets puts them closer to closing out this match. So it is a lot more pressure on ITB's shoulders than there are on, uh, or than there is on Alliance's shoulders at the moment. So any point going to Alliance is a, is a lot of pressure on ITB. Yeah, but they have really, I think, uh, with that time for Mime, the 108.3, that's some of the fastest we have seen. Uh, next to Gwen, you know, dropping the point two. So if they can keep delivering that, this is uh, going to be a map, a 
it's gonna be troublesome for Alliance to win, even though they picked it. And we're this late into the picking phase that you've gotten your favorite maps out. Like, this is clearly not their favorite. And Mime and Elkhorn are very competitive on it. So we're gonna go into this jump once again, see if they can all get the middle. They will be getting the middle here. Elkhorn is in the back. Modern Soldier dri dri driving next to each other as a team and Mime in front. Who's going to get the identity the best? Elkhorn overtaking up to second place for a brief moment, but is that going to hold? Are they going to get that Ooh. ace down almost? Mudder overtaking for first five thousandths of a second and Soldier on third. You can tell how much jumping to the left matters because it looks like Mime was ages behind Mudder there, but still he touches the finish line yep. sooner. And then you can maybe add that OTAC movement by going fully sideways left to maybe touch the finish line a few hundreds faster. But the question is if the bouncer block takes into account what your, how your car is facing. Most likely, and there's probably all kinds of signs behind that. Maybe that's also how some of these weird bounces started happening last game. But three to four is the scoreline, Alliance up in the lead. Alliance getting closer to locking this map down. Once again, if you just joined, Alliance is on match point, which means that if they win this map, they are going to win the series against Into the Breach. So ITB definitely on a high pressure situation. You can see just how high Ooh. Elkhorn goes in the apex of that jump or that turn. Maybe he wants more speed to ensure gear five. Mada getting it and Elkhorn also, but trailing by a little bit. All players, though, within just a tenth here before the add-ons see once more. This is going to be chaos. Try to peel your eyes to the screen to keep up with what's happening. Who gets the best jumps? We're seeing the Alliance players release later most of the time. Elkhorn going very wide here. Looks like he will not be winning it. Might be Mada, might be Mime. Mada Ooh. taking it by seven hundredths and extending Alliance's lead. Six to four. They're getting closer and closer to being in that dangerous seven-point lead where they can ace it to get the victory. So this is uh, this is looking a little bit harsh for, for Into the Breach. Also remember, it is Alliance's map pick, so it makes sense that they're also performing great on it, but that does not mean ITB cannot put up a great fight. It has a lot of elements that I would think suit Into the Breach, the plastic, the grass. This is some of uh, Into the Breach's strongest elements is driving on slippery surfaces. Whenever there's a couple of the day map with grass or plastic, I immediately think, oh God, this is gonna be an Elcon win, but here, in the arrow walk, we also have that identity, the tricky jump across the sky. And so far, Mara and Soldier have been nailing it almost every time. And that has to be very tough to play against. Here, though, the wide setup from Elkhorn to get gear five. Mine oh. jumping out. Now an ace would be detrimental to Into the Breach's chances. They have to deny that. But Elkhorn is almost getting past here by Mara. They all get the jump between the pillars. And the identity remains Elkhorn. Can't... Cannot miss this jump. Is he going to get a good setup here? Soldier still about 0.1 ahead, but he lands close on the arrow. Ooh. Just jump wide though. Mudda with a more inside trajectory. Oh. He gets first, but Soldier's missed it. Oh, they. And, oh, that is unfortunate that Soldier and missed, missed it. And missed it again? Soldier could get second place. Still, he's going to miss it again, almost, but he touched the corner. That is going to be enough to get into the finish. Mime trying to get up to third place. Not quite. I mean, they're, point, they're within point four of each other, it's even though both 13. of them are 13 seconds behind. That was such an important fight for that first place, but five to eight, and that means an ace from Into the Breach is necessary at some point here. Yeah, they, they, can, they, can, they can sustain one, one bad round. Is, but one damage is what they can sustain, yeah, yeah. but... They um they have to spit out an ace ASAP. See if they can do that right now. I mean that was a good opportunity to get that ace with one mistake and well a great time for Moto though. A point five is not easy for both your players to beat. Gonna go wide here for Elcon, gonna not get that drift yeah, as well in the downhill. And this is tough now. Mime at least needs to get first. But Elcon may be able to get back there, maybe with this wider set up this speed he cannot jump out here Does oh get that the is gear. a tight line i think he lost it oh he did lose it actually yeah. so he lost the gear that's gonna put him a little bit further back we don't see a hard breakaway from the alliance players though and mime is still in the lead so or at least second place so he can still overtake soldier in the end but it's gonna be down to this, this final jump this could be alliance taking home the victory modern first soldier second. first and second mime trying to jump far inside to the left but it does look like it is gonna be an 
Mine with the overtake with three thousands of a second. I almost called the wrong situation. And that's gonna keep ITB in the match for at least one more round. <laughs> that is that is surviving by a hair. Like it does not get closer to the game ending. And annoyingly for Alliance, they still have to play one more round here. Mime saying it's not over till it's over. Let's see what we can make of one more opportunity. Elkan was quite far behind in that previous round. This time he's ahead of Soldier, but he he needs to get past Mara as well. Gets a little bit more speed perhaps for this jump, but also has some more difficult landing to control. That looks flat though, but it is going to shake a little bit, and he is going to lose very important tenths here to Mara. Mara now. He can be the one to close the game, just needs to get those jumps right. Solja might be able to pass Elkan as well, but so long as this gap here, this four tenth of a second gap remains, Mara has all the power in his hands to end the game on the spot. Yes, if Elkan does not gain half a second on Mara, which is very difficult to do, then it's going to be Alliance's map to win now, and indeed the whole series against Into the Breach is going to go to Alliance. It's going to be here that's going to decide it. The identity. Will Mudda make a mistake? Will it open Elkan the door? Wide. He's going to miss. Oh, Elkan oh. does not miss. What is this ending? <laughs> a nice side flip. A nice attempt. A nice series here. But Alliance take it 4-1 to one against Into the Breach. What a wicked ending. I mean, if you got to lose, you might as well lose with style, right? That was a risky approach. Elko went all in for that. But it is a 4-1 alliance. They keep their uh, their good streak. They did lose that one game yes. in a seven-game series. But still 2-1 two, two to one in terms of uh, victories right now. That's, that's really good for alliance. And that's also going to put uh, ITB even further down. That's three losses in a row for ITB. But what I feel for ITB is they played like the the three what are, three of the strongest teams right now. Yep. Like they played Big and Solary, who are both three and zero so far yeah. in the league. And now Alliance went two to one. Like they have had some tough opponents. Yes, but maybe they can find something more in the second half of the season. I, I, but well, you, you gotta hope that they're able to do that, right? But you can also say the same for Big. Big are fighting some of the toughest opponents in the start as well, but they're winning three matches in a row so it is tough for itb the start of this season isn't what they exactly have been looking for but they can still fight back strong put in a little bit more practice into next week's matches maybe or uh you know i don't know what what are, what are they fighting next week they they're gonna be fighting uh sinners sinners next week that is an important game for both teams for both teams because board. both teams have lost three matches now indeed uh guys that was match of the day but because today's a special day we have a second match of the day. KC versus BDS is going to be coming right up. It's going to be the last game of the day. Long day here in, in the cast, but I'm yep. enjoying it so far. So let's rest up, get some energy. Five minute break, and we'll be back for the final Trackmania game. We'll, we'll see, see you guys you. in a little bit. Five minutes. We have arrived at the final destination of today. The final game, KC versus BDS. They get to play for the second time today to catch up on the schedule since they didn't play last week. And this game is really just a battle of the French-speaking players. You got Brennan Otak versus Alfie NRL. It's going to be a great game. And I don't know if I have any specific prediction. Now, BDS did play earlier today. KC also did. Uh, both of them lost. Uh, True. So they're both coming into this game on a loss, hoping to close out the day with a victory, of course. Uh, do you have any prediction on what's going to happen? Well, I, we saw some, some highlights from BDS. We saw Vortex being a good map for them. Expected breaking as well was actually a pretty good map for them, mm -hmm. but some shakiness there. Uh, Brandon Otak, I feel, played pretty standard KC. They went for grip, they went for... Uh, did they play... I don't know if they played speed, but... Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all mixed up. There's yeah, a lot of games going on mush, today, so it's understandable. It's good. The players are going to be feeling the same, you know? Playing oh. two games in a day is yep. exhausting. Like... Uh, the amount of focus and concentration you take. You, you could argue that VDS did play for longer, um, so maybe they're a bit more tired. Mm. Uh, KC did lose four to one. BDS lost two to four. Um, so it could be that uh, you know either BDS is more tired or KC isn't as warm. You never know. It's gonna be interesting to see what's gonna happen. But at the very least, it is gonna be KC versus BDS, and we're gonna head into the game really soon. If you just joined, this is the fifth game of the day. We've had four games so far. We've had Solary versus Sinners, where Solary won 4-0. We've had KC versus Big, where KC won 4-1. Sorry, uh, Big won 4-1, that's my bad. And BDS versus G1, 
where G1 won 4-2. And then finally, we just came back from a game where it was Alliance versus ITB. Alliance won 4-1. Right, so um, we're about to get into picks and bans now. This is gonna look a bit weird, but KC have a upper seed because this game was supposed to be played when they were at 0-0 zero, yeah. zero in the league. Now, at the current standings, BDS would be ahead and have upper seed, so yeah. they would have a favor in picking ban. But since it was scheduled for 0-0, zero, zero, KC do get upper seed and first pick and also second ban. It's, it is pretty It is pretty important to be able to pick the first map because uh, you pick the map that you think you're going to win and then you get early momentum into the games. Uh, and I think, and that, I think uh, that just mind, that mindset of getting a, a quick win uh, helps your team quite tremendously. And, and an overlooked advantage is also like you get second ban. Like, let's say your opponents ban the map you didn't want to play. Okay, fine. Yeah, then you don't have to ban it. I'm right? not going to waste my ban there. It's Are we going to see a sinuous ban again? Is the question. Oh, I mean, I mean, uh, come on. We've been here a long time today. Can we get another one? That would be great. I don't, Two I, sinuouses in one day? It's not, it's, I'm not complaining. Sin, it's a fun map. Sinuouses. Or sinew... Sinuai? Sinuai, yeah. Sinu... Sinuisuous. Like... Litlicious. Sinuisuous. Sin... 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 Singed? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> English stops making sense the more you talk it. And if you talk for five hours, the words, uh, they become... Uh, I mean, yeah, we we were also having a nice day, awesome. a long day. But, uh, you know, it is some fine track mania that's being played today. So we can't really complain at all. We've had a wonderful experience. We hope you guys at home are having one as well. I mean, honestly, my biggest complaint going into the day was waking up and realized Finland actually lost Eurovision. True. How did they? I don't know. Oh, we that have was a picks and bans. But picks and bans, band, speed, speed and breaking. And breaking. So Sinuous is... Um, it's open. It's open. I like the breaking ban. The uh, the breaking ban sounds like a series almost, but it's yeah, it does. to avoid Afi and Arel on that one. And they pool do pick pool. Pick, uh, Afi will be picking for oh team thank you Afi. we appreciate you for picking sinuous and giving us one more of this beautiful map now we will see map three so pool into sinuous what's the counter pick going to be i think they're just going to go for their grip like their i mean their control maybe just something they can control vortex okay. vortex i like no vortex. Ooh, picking vortex into Afi is scary i, I think uh I think BDS are going to pick it at anyways, so maybe they're just wasting a am... pick. Um, that there's been an update to the map or something? I mean, we wouldn't want an update, would we? Oh my god, okay. We, you... would, we would want the, the, the map to be... Because if you never update it, it's always perfect. That is untrue! <laughs> I don't know, I, I don't think that... I think okay, that if you never update something, it's always perfect. That's People you... never change. Anything, nothing ever changes. You are perfect just the way you are, is what I'm trying to say. To you and to chat. Okay, I think that's a. Uh, except, you're, you're, you're trying to reel it in. I I. Accept your preference of uh, Nutella and. I'm like, if you're if, uh, scrambled eggs. Is it is it really a healthy thing to say you're perfect just the way you are? If you're eating scrambled eggs with Nutella, no. I'm trying to help you. Well, see, so you're backing down on your statement. No, I'm saying you're perfect, except, like you're perfect, but oh, oh that's, a, that's a huge early early mistake on the very first part of the map that you can make a mistake on that's going to give afia and Aurel a nice early um lead 
well, both are leap. I, I was gonna say favoritism, not favoritism, like uh, benefit, I guess. Oh, make that two now. They're clearly in the lead. Oh, Otak clipping the edge of the checkpoint there. Offy jumping into the turn, catching the no slot, going down the hill. Aurel will be right there with him. They know the split. They know the deal. It's about just safing this one in and pool. Luckily, this map you can crash, but you cannot really fly off the map. No, Flying I off the map is one of the more costly things you have to respawn. But here, the worst thing that's going to happen is you hit a wall, maybe lose. Well, and chances uh, they only really do that if it is that they have to risk it. But you can you can slow down quite tremendously and make sure you don't slide out at all. And they have a set. Orel has a second to work with down to Otak, so you can see just how much he slows down. That is the safest identity <laughs> I've seen in a long time. Uh, but it worked out fine. Looked like he was scared of the temperature, like you and we uh, swim in the ice water. I I jumped in the water. You did, but I was hesitant if you were gonna. I'm done. Uh, we're talking about if we're perfect or not. I was scared. Oh, you were scared that I wouldn't jump in a lake. Yes. I've I've I mean I'd jump in a lake. Okay. I did that for you. And because you told me we wouldn't be friends if I didn't do so, because you you are just the I best. I seek my friendship. Emotional extortion is what just happened <laughs> at that point. Okay. <laughs> And sometimes you need to extort your friends emotionally <laughs> to make them join you in adventures they otherwise would say no to. Because nah, why would I? Well, I mean, I made you do it and you got happy about it. So Okay, you made me do it and I made you do it. Yeah, so we helped each other. And that's yeah. what it's all about. That's what the players are doing here as I well. They're pulling each team. other's uh, PBs uh, in... in <laughs> And they're pulling each other's paces up to increase PBs to, to, pl to play faster. And we're seeing Afi here tell his teammate, I'm in first. Can really you just pulling the PBs of one another here. Great stuff from the teammates. Good synergy. A crash though from Otak. Not going to PB this round. Afi still keeping that lead ahead of Brandon. And Aurel now not safe anymore as he skinny dips. And he skinny almost daps past Brandon, but not quite. But not quite. I. You can tell it's the fifth game of the day, can you? Why? Is it any different? I feel like it's no. We're, we're doing the exact same cast that we're usually doing. It's um, just a bit more podcast esque. Podcast esque. We gotta find a quiet round where we can start talking about crypto, about uh, unapproved oh, diets, yeah. about true, true, NFTs, true. We gotta about put our side hustles. Tinfoil hats have to go on. Oh, we have a huge mistake coming in from Ben Afi and Aurel now. All right, once again in a favorable position, um, KC, all right, five to one, and it is possible that BDS gets another ace Otak Ooh, trying to push him really hard though. And he might just pass off, but no, he actually clips a little bit, losing a lot of speed there. Arel coming up closer. Now next to Otak with that wide line, might have more speed in the uphill. Is that gonna be enough to pass? Otak not quite, still holding on to that second place before the identity. We've seen players crash this by going too late. Alfi and Otak both hit the perfect timing into the underwater turn, still getting that same line, that same gap remains, and it's going to be Alfi in first. Otak lucky in second place here. No ace to be had, but this is good for BDS. They'll take that. And seven to two. And even though it's late in the day, they're still driving really, really respectable times. So a point three eight uh, is great, like two point two away from world record. Um, good paces coming in from Afi Orel, a little bit in the back, but it's 7-2. to two. We've seen this exact scoreline earlier today. Wasn't it a big versus KC where KC was down 2-7 to seven and then they still came back? Yeah, they so, almost took that map away from so big. But KC was literally in this exact position earlier today and came back all the way from 2-7 up to like, was it 10-10? It was so, a great, great comeback here. Ooh, Afi shaky on the landing, still reserving enough speed to remain ahead. Um, plastic and the underwater turn to get wet wheels and this slide cancel is a lot harder than it looks it also feels very counterintuitive to drive yeah because you're steering towards the right in an upcoming left turn there's part of my brain when i play this map that told me don't don't just keep going left but fastest line and they all get it now ren is there up next to offy before the entity that's going to be a close battle bren with a great inside line looks like he gained towards offy in that turn who's going to get first place in this. Bren really needs it for his team right now if they're going to have a say on pool 
which was their pick, mind you. And right now, Uffy is making them regret that choice. But Bren will have the final say in this round and take first place. And Otax can get third, so they get a little closer to something. They, they do get a little bit closer, but BDS does not mind losing the rounds as long as they still get a point or two. And they did indeed get a little bit closer to those 10 points. BDS now needs to get a first, second, or a first and third, and they're closing out this first map. It's a very, very tough start, especially with that mistake from Bren in round one. That's part of what they're now trying to recover from. I drift there from Bren. Still getting that flick up to the dirt nicely though, the speed slide as well. But these stars from Muffy, he's always up in first before this water part. Yeah, he is playing incredibly fast. Aurel is up there with him though, consistently. Ooh, look at the exit speed here from Aurel. Should be catching up to Otak. Set up so widely there, even having to drift early to make it in time for the turn. And Bren taking advantage of that, getting past just barely. Sneaking up ahead, Otag but as well. Look at those three players, 0 0.05 away from each other. 500 separating those players on that checkpoint. And now as we enter the identity, Aurel is jumping up to second place, and this could be really dangerous for KC. They need to overtake one person. At oh, least oh, oh Afi with a huge this mistake. Could, be an ace. could this be a reverse ace? Yeah, Aurel needs to push it now. All of a oh, sudden, oh, everything has changed, but Bren is so slow, and <laughs> it's going to end up in a draw. A draw with Bren almost drowning there in the water. Going a bit wide, but a very nice attempt from Casey. They could have had that. 5 to 9 is still doable, but now you really get no second chances. Now it's ace or nothing. Yeah, Bren and Otak, first and second, or they give up the map. And then we go to Sinuous, Janik. Sinuous, the second map. You only get to see these four players on it. None of which really are full speed players, as you could call them, but good at. Uh, last uh, last season's maps too. The, um, what is it called? Uh, Agility Dash was the map with a lot of speed slides, and mm -hmm. Afi and Aurel love that one. So Sinuous, stylistically quite similar. Afi with a mistake this round, by oh, the way. Uh, Aurel they are doing pretty well here. They're trying to get that ace. They know that that's the only thing they can oh. do. So both of them also getting a Alarm. really good trip. Look at that breakaway that KC just did. Now they just need to get this final left hander and then get a good identity. There is an ace in the wait. It is only about 10 to 15 seconds away if they get this ending clean. But one small mistake and it will be BDS's map victory here. Last turn, they're still holding it together. Aurel's getting closer, but he's made a mistake. 0.7 behind. That's gonna be the ace. And they still have a shot at this. Great time. Eight to two. I mean, that is, is this not the exact same situation it, that it really happened is. versus Big? And like, I, they were they were down two to seven, and now all of a sudden I, it's eight to nine. I don't want to call it too soon, but as we talked about, if you are in this spot, I would rather be the team with eight points coming right off the ace. Yeah. Alfie and Aurel are under pressure here. They're like, okay, uh, let's not throw, though. We, we're doing so well, though. Like, what was happening? And then, Otak and Brand just beeping back up. We're going to have to see what's going to happen here. All of the players, once again... Very close to each other. Bren in the back. We need to see, at the very least, a win from Carmine Corp for them Ooh. to maintain any sort of presence on this map. But Afi and Aurel, they're trying to break away. This drift is where KC last round got a lot of speed, but Team BDS are not giving up just yet. Going into, once again, this final turnaround before the identity. So many players next to each other. Nothing is over quite yet. Is it going to be Afi or Aurel or oh Brennan Oltag? Final identity. Who's going to take it home? Afi is going to be in the lead. Aurel right Brent's behind. Trying. Bren trying to push here. Aurel with the outside line. Not getting all the speed. Oltag Bren trying one. to push over it. Afi, it's just barely enough. One... <laughs> The battle for first going in favor of Casey, but the battle for third, Aurel locks it down, secures it yeah. on, it goes 10 to 9. I mean, that was a great showing there from both teams for the final round. Uh, fortunately for Team uh, BDS. BDS, they were ahead of in the map for longer. They had more HP to work with, if you want to put it like that. And that made them uh, get the victory in the end. Such a close... Like, think about it, they were down 2 to 7. And then, you know, they somehow made that work, so... Casey, they didn't get the win on their own map, and now they have to face BDS on Sinuous, one of the only other teams that have opted into this map. It's the second time we will see it played. The world record, 101678 from Mime earlier. See if these guys are close to matching that pace. So, um, I want to ask you, all the other 
all the other um, maps, they're called like Frosty or Speed or Grip. Uh, something that definitely ties onto the map. Mm. Sinuous. Yeah, what's the meaning of sinuous? Well, I mean, why is this map called sinuous? Because it's a sin to play it. Well, <laughs> apparently it's a sin to play it. We never see it played. In my, in my mind, sinuous was close to uh, sine. Sine, cosine, right? Sine, the sine oh, wave. Oh, yeah. A sine wave is just a, a, a wave that has a predictable... Um, Oh no, uh, oh no, it's that time of right? day. It, so, you know, you oscillate, and I think that's why, I think sinuous means like a waveform or something. And that's- Chat, we're, lo we're losing, we're losing focus. We are talking about sine waves instead of the race. This is falling wow. out oh, of oh. control. Looks like a battle between RL and Brand being oh, won uh, by RL. Great, great ace for team BDS. I just sine wave, Danik. No, but I'm, I'm right. I'm right. I'm pretty... Because look... Okay, try to take a look at the map while we drive. Okay? And then think and about think waves. think about sine waves. No, not... Well, si you could be cosine waves. It doesn't matter. It's the, It looks the same. It's just offset by, uh, what, pi? It doesn't matter, though. Because it's... Just take a look at, at, at the wave... The waviness of the map here. Like, <laughs> okay. wave here. And then you go back and forth, back and forth. You do... Now... You do this loop, right? Here, here's my argument. And then look at these waves as well. Yeah, but here's my argument. If you build this this turn in the map, you're sinning. Okay, because well, what is this turn? You you slow down from 300 to 170 to get that turn. Okay, it's a little bit of a sin. If you build this uh, this this part right here, you might want to call the map spinuous because I360, <laughs> and then you go into this last part where, if you build this, you might want to call it spinuous. So maybe it's just a combination mm. of all the elements. As we see RL and Uffy on their own map choice, looking to ace right now. They have about a three-tenth lead, and RL is there with Uffy up the hill. They go waving back and forth, if you will. What That's a one. a back-to-back -back ace for Team BDS. Strong showing, strong showing. I still think I'm right. I'm just gonna... Um, Look to chat for your approval. Chat telling me he's wrong, so you can no, focus no, no. on the all game again. Chat, all of chat just, uh, just said I was right, and I'm very clever and handsome, so there you go. It's not the first time we're casting, and he just goes, wait, then what, was I right? Was virtual wrong? I need chat's approval. <laughs> I need to lock this in internally so I can tell him on the couch after the cast, damn, you know that one thing? You were wrong about that. Um, well, it's, it's important. But either way, we are still in the match here. Track number two, map number two, Team BDS versus Carmine Corp. This is the last match of the day. Team BDS has gotten back-to-back -back aces here on Sinuous. And KC are looking to try to bob back just a little bit, but Otak remains in the lead. Bren is not too far behind, about half a second. So Afi is here on a miss and to try to deny uh, oh, Carmine Coastline from out. getting their own ace. But Bren has made a mistake too. It's not an ace possible yet. Otak will have about a one second lead before that slalom uphill. And now we will see if he can hold this own lead. He looks like he will. And it will be a victory round for KC. Now, Janik, I have a, I have another thought. Mm -hmm. How do we know we we're pronouncing it correctly? It's one of the weirdest words. Sinuous? You think it's sinuous? No, it's because I'm. I just. Well, I just read the word as sinuous. I'm pretty confident I read it right. But you have words like Arkansas, which don't make any sense. Well, I, I mean, that's a name. It's well, okay. I would, uh, what's another word that makes no sense the way you say it? Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Okay, yeah. But that's also a name. Or like, okay. So apparently names just decided to be cursed with pronunciations. Uh, there are some words that are just uh, bad to pronounce. But, uh, I mean, you, you say mini for mini, so uh, it doesn't really matter. Well, wouldn't you say that's a very mean thing to say? You meanie? Uh, your argument was that Minnie Mouse is spelled different than Minnie Map. Yeah, it but is. But then you also say meanie is spelled different than Mini. Yeah, but that's the, that, that happens a lot in English. But no, but you can't just pick and choose of which words I are... can. Oh, this word supports my argument, so I'm going to pick that. Otag in the lead, Orel right behind. Wait, there's a game going on. Oh! oh! I, I was hoping he continued that for the finish. Did you notice we harmonized? We did, but he should have definitely backflipped. Oh, yeah. No, he should have backflipped into the finish. That was a clip waiting to happen, Braden, but a victory will do. 4-8. to eight. They're approaching that same scenario from map one. And now, we will see if they can they can make an ace happen and come all the way back like they did. They well. did really well, but 
um, Team BDS are truly uh, putting up a strong fight here. Like, back-to-back -back aces in the start, even though they're not winning the rounds anymore, they're still getting those points. So, Carmine Corp, they have to get an ace here soon. Otherwise, they're gonna lose a second map in a row. Now, this is indeed Team BDS's map choice, but you, you, gotta, you gotta fight back because you lost your own. Ooh, Otak keeping the gear, doing well, catching up to Afi, getting up to that second place. Arel also holding on, and here oh. a mistake is detrimental now. EDS, they only need a regular victory, and Bren needs to get past both to extend this map. But Afi is so far ahead, it's only really a speed slide left, and Afi's gonna go through this with a lot of momentum. Low line, catching the no drift, now just lining up for the slalom. Afi trying to lock it in, and Aurel even passed Bren to paint. Oh, almost a prettier picture. A nice time as well from Afi. That's yeah, a great time, and that's going to be Team BDS winning map two pretty dominantly, five to ten. So um, I predict they're going to keep picking this if it's open. They so newest? So yeah. So they did not. I would say they didn't play faster than um, G. What? No, sorry. ITB and Alliance. Yeah, but they did play pretty well. They did play pretty well. But I would, I would be worried picking this against Alliance or ITB. Oh yeah, no. You gotta, you know, <laughs> value and, the situation. And the, the question is, is it really worth um, training this map that much? Since most teams will not be liking it, and especially if you get into, let's say, the uh, the finals against Solary. It's gonna get banned anyway. So, yes, yeah, so, but so here's what I'm thinking, right? Is if you don't train Sinuous, then you are just leaving yourself vulnerable in pick and ban. Because either you you leave it open and suffer the consequences if someone trains it and picks it, or you always have to reserve your ban for that. And then let's say you can't ban breaking against Gwen, or you can't ban uh, control against Pack. Like you need yeah. targeted bans against your opponents. So always banning Sinuous only really works if you're Carl and Pack, I think. Because <laughs> they're so good at the game. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's definitely a strategy to just say, um, well, because you're effectively also, if you only, if you just remove one map and you only ban that, you're effectively also making sure that that can't be picked against you, right? You're, you're removing a full map from the roster. At, at, like, and that's a lot of training that you can spend on other maps. That's true indeed. But here we see KC, they have this tactic where they go wide here on this dirt turn to get a lot of speed, then go high on the apex here and then jump into a bug slide, land in a bug slide here and then shoot themselves ahead. Look at that. Ooh, they're making it work, getting more speed than off. Yeah, at least Brennis, Otak's getting caught up to, but the landing will be stable. He will be able to control it out the turn. And Arel is half a second behind, but apart from that, it's a very close fight here. For first place, Bren getting a lot of speed on the exit. Also, better setup than the others. Can't extend ahead of with this. If he can control that landing! Oh. Jumped very far, and that looked shaky. Now it's a battle of speed. Does Afi have enough to hold off Otag here? Take round one of Vortex. Looks like it, and the pace is fast too, Janik. We are looking at a point four, I believe, point forty-seven from Afi to take round Solid one. Solid pace here. So, Team BDS gonna get the first two points. KC getting a single point, and BDS is is starting to uh, dominate. Do you think it, it could result in a four-one? I mean, they uh, they might have to add an M to their name the way uh, they're just punishing KC right now. Anytime they make a mistake, it is points for BDS. Oh my god! So right now, That's doing really really seconds. well, and um, we'll see if they can keep it up. Yep. Um, yes. So. Moving past that, we see <laughs> KC. We <gotta> move on. <laughs> <laughs> we see KC setting up for the bug slide once again here. You can see yeah. Afi there was on second place, but look how close Otak got. Otak got a bad gear though in the uphill, so he lost a little bit of speed, and that's gonna let Afi come back up. He actually jumps all the way up to first now. Oh, but the pace is so fast. Point zero on the tag point from Afi is getting close to that world record pace. Now this landing that Bren struggles to control. Jump too far left here. You're gonna end up wide on the right towards the fence. Afi not leaving a lot of space available there, but the pace is still so fast and the speed as well. We could be looking at a new map record here from Afi trying to beat that point two from Bren set earlier today. It's not quite gonna get there, but a spectacular winning time regardless. Point 43 from Afi. Point 43 is a great time, about point two away from the world record set by Bren. Uh, so we have seen Bren drive incredible times here on this map. He just needs to find that pace and then put it back into play. 
but this is what we talked about in the first game from from KC. They they do drive great pace, but they also make a lot of mistakes. That's what cost them and made them lose that game to big. Mm. Now, Uffy on this map traditionally has almost never made a mistake. He will had a clean streak on this map going into the day. Six rounds, four wins, no crashes. Had a few crashes on this earlier today, but still now driving point fours on the regu, it seems. And that's very obnoxious to play against. Brand getting a bug slide, but still Uffy without it is going to remain ahead. Oltak made a mistake, it looks like, on the bug slide, so passed by RL. And this could be a good round for BDS once again. Uffy is very consistent without that bug slide, so that's really good. KC were hoping that the bug slide was going to give them the, uh, the advantage and make sure that they could win this good map. From Brand. But it's not going to be quite enough because Afi has to uh, is maintaining this lead without it at all. And Brand is not going to get enough speed out of that to overtake. So he's going to hope for Afi to make a mistake. Indeed, Afi actually has more speed and is getting further and further oh, away from Brand. Four. It's another point four. Afi just on the man. Point four, point four, point four. What are you going to do against this? Now, Aurel joins him to get their team a two-point lead. Yeah, two-point lead. Definitely a nice start. Uh, they actually they actually need Brand to get closest world X from earlier yep. to win the round. They do. Like, a point, low point four, point three would be really good. He doesn't have to drive the point two world record, but uh, definitely point four pace is what we got to see here from KC to get up to that first and second place. But I remember, this reminds me so much of the Uffy we saw on um, back and forth last season. It was a map that out of like 13 rounds, he won like nine of them in, in the earliest part of the season. Like he just found a map, just drove it consistently time and time again, and never really made mistakes. And he's, oh, oh, wow. Ah. Oh, wow. Afi made a mistake. That. Orel went flying. How is Afi still in Yeah, first? that was such a small mistake. He was able to control it. And he's still up there, still 0.2 checkpoint. Something that we don't even see uh, some teams get to. So one of the fastest starts is still oh, that mistake. <laughs> Big mistakes there, big respawn right after the checkpoint. He's gonna have to deal with that shaky respawn, but Aurel has it worse. So 1v1 up front, Otak versus Uffy. Uffy has more than enough speed to fend off Otak, so now he just has to remain on top of the pipe and he will manage Uffy with... I don't think it's a point four. I think it's a point five. So, uh, consistency is still there, but a little bit slower this time. A little bit slower, but still, still a good. great time. Yep. So that's gonna push BDS up to six, Carmen Cop up to four. BDS is getting ever closer to those seven points, which puts them into the position where they can ace. Now, we haven't seen an ace on this map yet. It's also a very difficult map to get an ace on because very often, like, one or the other player from a team is going to make some sort of slight mistake. Yeah, um, like, the pipes can catch you off guard. We saw the hole there almost making Offy lose control of the car. Well, also made a mistake in the start. Ooh, what a quarter pipe jump from Otak from third to first there with that one. Let's see how the KC players can do. Can they get past Offy now with... This bug slide setup. We saw Otak had a great start. He's gonna come flying through the check, but now with the bug slide and extend that lead. And Uffy will have a lot of speed to work with, but he's gonna be playing from behind this time. Oh, Otak. he's getting close. Oh, oh touch the bobsleigh. Bobsleigh. Oh no. That is so unfortunate. He had a great amount of speed though. And that ruins the streak of consistent point four point fives, and it's in a round where both KC players are driving great runs, and they could ace right now to take the lead of the map and try to fight back against BDS, try to get closer in the match. Oh, oh Zach, no! Missing the approach, has to respawn. He's going to be passed by Offy with that, but Bren will secure a draw. Oh, that's four missed points lost. Yeah, missed opportunity there. But three points lost at the very least. That's three points that, that they could have gained. Or not good at game, but they could have taken that one point from BDS and adding two points themselves. That is um, that is a rough mistake to make. Not what you need right now, especially when it's drawing so close to BDS winning the map. You don't really have a lot more space to work with. The start there was so promising with a low quarter pipe jump, and they again find it, but Alfie uh, will be ahead before they enter this middle part where... You have made your decision for your line, whether you bug slide or not, and you're sticking with it. Offy going for the low jump, getting it good this time. He's going to probably be ahead after the grass here. Gets the exit right onto the bobsleigh. About two well. tenths ahead of Brennan. About one tenth ahead of Otak. And Aurel is also there in the mix. Aurel is trying to push further ahead than Bren. 
If he can overtake Bren, they're gonna jump oh. up to nine points here. And if we see Otek make another mistake here on the identity, that could be the nail in the coffin here for Carmine Corp. But Orel is on fourth. Oh, first. That's a huge mistake from Bren. Now Otek has to get this identity without a single mistake. It gets the first, gets the second, gets the third crux there. And now Otag He's will faster. try He's to faster. overtake. Oh, 6,000. I actually got a very clean exit onto the grass and an immediate speed slide to catch up to Afi there. But Afi holds on. Good attempt on the snipe. That's going to push BDS up to nine points. We need to see a, well, KC are going to be looking for that ace because otherwise they, they they're going to lose. And but So this is a, a great round for them to use this bug slide. Like they've been doing it already, but this is a round where it's very good to bug slide because uh, it saves time. And if you both get it, you have the best possible chance Ooh. at an ace and they'll attack with the respawn. So now BDS will, will pay, like, pay notice to that very, very quickly. It is probably four and a half seconds. Here, yeah. So BDS knows we just full save this. There's no reason to worry about uh, Bren. It does not matter if he gets first. So just uh, get through the map. But the stats, Janik. You gotta, you gotta pad the stats. Offie's on a banger, actually. Uh, regardless of Otak's mistake, and he's probably feeling it. When you drive a good run and you get the lines clean, you really feel it, and you wanna complete that run at that rhythm mm -hmm. you're playing at. Point A checkpoint there is world class, and a low jump as well will leave Bren trailing. He's also had a mistake. Offie on clean run. It's gonna be around point four. If he uh, succeeds, RL, uh, we are not going to watch as we see Afi closing it out. Point 0.4, he's clapped. Point 0.49, yes, so close to a point 0.5, but yes, nicely done by Team BDS. That's three maps back to back to back, and we're going to jump into map four. Not to start KC1 and losing their first pick and their second pick, and now they're going to into BDS's map choice. Yeah, I mean, this is looking dangerous here, but let's take a look at some of these replays here. Afi with some great consistency, driving 105.4 paces and winning some rounds. It was just like a, like you could put on just, you know, just a, just an input script and it would just replay 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Yep. But it's a human with hands doing that live. It's crazy. Some great, great showing here from Team BDS. And I mean, from a loss earlier to like a 3-0 right now, BDS must be feeling very, very happy. Yeah, and then they're playing a very strong uh, Carmine Corp as well. Like, BDS, they lost to this team last season. They didn't beat them in a best of seven. KC were the only team to beat BDS in a best of seven last season. Oh, they were? Yeah. Uh, oh, before, yeah, that's in right. The regular season. Six to one, only losing two Brand and Otak. Well, but that time, that pack was different. And on these maps, it seems that Afi and RL have found an edge. And we're gonna have to see what happens here on Grip. Both of the teams, they're gonna go for this inside pillar line to push for more speed here in the exit. Ooh, Afi uh, getting a, a good start and RL pushing ahead as well. So BDS's streak looks to continue. Casey needs to find something in the end. Now they do tend to risk that balancing part. If you don't know Grip, it has this very interesting identity where if you go above 190 speed here, your car starts to balance on two wheels. Go above 200, it tends to fly off. So you need to really play with uh, caution and not go too fast. Close race, but Uffy inches out a lead against Brandon, takes a draw for his team there. That's going to be one to one. Now, BDS will happily take anything that isn't a an ace to, to uh, KC's name, because any points that BDS gets is going to be so much pressure on KC. Because, of course, they are on match point. Yeah, KC, we, we, KC needs to do something unprecedented, which is to get a reverse sweep. So far in the Trackmania World Tour, we have not ever seen a reverse nope. sweep game. Uh, only in the Challenger League by Sprout. So they need to do something we haven't yet to see any team do. And against BDS, against second place, from last season's playoffs, it is especially difficult, right? But oh, they have been the team before. got a lot of speed coming in here, jumping all the way up to dance with first place. Getting that dirt line correctly. We know the water entry can be tricky, though, when you have this much speed. M missed by Offie, I think, and Aurel goes... Sorry, uh, reverse rolls. Missed by Aurel. Offie goes up into first. 
now they have an opportunity, but Uffy is holding on in first. Bren pushing with a lot of speed down that hill. Early Ooh. line to catch up to Uffy. Up the hill now. He is actually getting the full car length, but going oh, too but wide. Oh, but Uffy getting such a good tight line. Bren going way too wide, and he gets back up to first, and it's going to be another draw. Another draw from PDS. <laughs> Barely holding on here. Uh, they equalized the score. This is their choice. They could close the game, but Casey, so far, also impressive by them. They're, they're, they're very level. I think what has happened is that KC and BDS are pretty equal in skill, but BDS has gotten some really good maps down this season that suit them as well. So I, I would say pick and Vortex was a mistake. I don't know what prep KC have with the bug slot. Obviously, it looks promising, but to me, that map was just Offy's domain. You picked Offy's map for Offy. So I now, think... but, but, but then again, if they pick Grip and it's this close, who knows, right? But I feel... Picks and Mans maybe is, uh, went really in the favor of, of BDS because yeah. they got a lot of what they wanted. I do think that KC, with the practice of that um, box slide, had good faith that they could win on Vortex. I think that's, what, that's the thought process. But right now, they cannot do anything about the past. They can only change the future and maybe Ooh. come back in this game, Bren. So close to slipping off the platform, but he holds on and he has two pink cars next to him, but now they're behind him as he passes both and secures a very important draw. I mean, that was a great showing by Bren. He pushed everything that he could to make sure he got that first place. For, for uh, a moment, I saw his car fall, but then it somehow yeah. kept full grip. It was ridiculous. No, no, he, he definitely drifted a small moment yeah. there. <laughs> Crazy save from Bren. 0.5 as well, a great sight with winning time. And uh, if he had a faster start to that round, could have even gotten close to the world record here. The Gwen record, 101.3, dropped earlier on. So the players are starting here. Round Bren. number four. Bren unfortunately making a big mistake here. Oh, Rel also making a big mistake. That's at least good for KC. KC, this is going to be another draw, I swear. We got draw city here. Uh, but this time, the splits actually line up in BDS's favor if the rolls remain where they're at. Afi with a 0.3 lead to work with. Otak just checking well, what's going to happen. You know, he doesn't need to push too much, but if Afi misses point, the line a little bit, it's possible. He's 0.3 ahead, so Otak is going to try to push. He knows he has four seconds to work with. Afi is just trying to defend that first place. Gain the 10th, but now less speed. Afi gaining about a 10th back, and the positions remain. Afi in first, Aurel in third. EDS, the first team to gain an edge here. One point ahead, five to four. Five to four. So that's the first uh, we've seen any of the teams gain an extra edge, and that's going to be Team BDS, which is, once again, they're trying to close out this game. They're trying to get that 4-0. <laughs> I'm sure they're tired after the previous game. They yeah. just want a quick, quick victory, but Carmine Corp, this is where you got to have that mental fortitude. If you know that you can win this map, if you see the pace of the opponents, you think, damn, I have way better times. Uh, offline that I drove in practice that I need to execute now. This is when you need the mental fortitude to think, okay, the three maps that have happened, they are, they are, they're, they're, they're gone, but let's focus on the new ones. It's not impossible to win four in a row. It's just very tough when you're this far behind to find that motivation to go for it. So far though, they're, they're level on this map and you gotta start somewhere. You gotta start round after round just thinking that you can do it. In Indeed. Afi and Aurel currently first and second place. They're, they're oh, no. showing some really good <laughs> no. pace. So Bren also got a very slow exit there. So this the transition was not fast. Now we're looking at something that could be a nail in the coffin. This could be BDS getting that ace they're looking for. But Bren trying to push on the inside Ooh. line. He gets the overtake of Aurel and luckily avoids the ace. Clutch from Bren. Otak also getting very close to passing. Five to seven is still doable. It's still doable. I don't want to present a false narrative, but it's still doable. Casey are not out yet. They they could maybe do something here. But it requires perfection from here on out because you have so many rounds to play, so many maps to play still if you want to make this come oh back Oh my happen. God, yeah. They have four maps to win and they're behind on the first one of them. So they gotta they gotta start pushing here. Afi and Aurel, they know they can smell the victory. They can see the light that is the 4-0 bop down, but they just need these last three points. Afi in the lead, Aurel right behind, jumping up to second place a little bit faster than Otak, 
Bren is still there, going for the outside turn line. They're, that's what they're looking for. They are gonna find it. Afi and Orel trying to get this ace that would lock down this final map. That would give them the match point and make them win the entire series here against KC with a 4-0 sweep. Is it gonna happen? It is so close. Otak here trying to take it away. Bren overtaking Orel. Bren might see that second place for his own. Otak Ooh. also overtaking. It's gonna end up in a draw. And what goes unnoticed here is the pace from Uffy. Like, he is, again, just like Vortex, steady point four, steady point, point five. He is not, like, he's unrelenting up in first. And the, the second that Aurel joins him now in a third place, or better, it's over. But that's not the only thing. If they keep drawing like this, and Aurel gets fourth place every time, it, they're still gonna win. Casey are gonna run out of HP, so it's like, you gotta drive 0.5 all of a sudden, every single time. That's that's not easy. It's not no, at all easy. Definitely not, but now KC, they're, they're, they, they at the very most has to get a, a second place. Like they have to get a second place. And Afi and Aurel currently occupying that first and second, but Bren, look at that speed, getting all the way up there, next to Aurel, fighting for second, trying to push ahead for first, going into the water section. Is anybody gonna slide out, bounce out, or touch a wall? Does not look like it. Everybody gets it clean, and now it's gonna be neck and neck, shoulder to shoulder, everybody driving on top of each other. Who's gonna be able to get this final section? Who's gonna risk Ooh, the most? Bren. There you go, Otak getting such a good right-hander, coming up to first place. Aurel and Afi right there behind him, but Bren is also right there. Ace. It's gonna be Otak and Bren getting the ace. Oh my God, what a clutch from Casey. I'm telling you, it's still not over. If they decide they want to keep fighting for this and they have made the choice, it's clear as day that they are not done yet. If they bring this to a new map and they can reset the scoreline, Carmine Corp can still make a win happen here. And it would be very annoying for BDS if they still have to play a new map here. They could close out the game on their own choice or they have to face KC on their next pick. So a lot going. It, there could be another map. True. Anything like so? Ooh, Arel with a small mistake and start. I mean, they only need one point here. They right? only need one point, but like, so a draw would give KC the win, and um, anything else keeps the game going. Yeah. Ace for BDS will also end it, but yeah. here, Brand takes charge in first place, passing both purple car pink cars as we go into the water part now. Otak also getting very close to passing Aurel, and traditionally he has been passing him off the crashing the identity. KC are looking to put it to map five at the very least. Brad makes a mistake, but Otak picks up where he left off. Aurel is trying to get past, but he will not have any chance of making this a BDS win yet. It goes to map five here with Carmine Corp defending. Just enough. Victory. Ah, that is gonna be another map. This is gonna be KC's map, if I remember correctly. Um, the next map will be Control, picked Carmine by Corp. Brennan Otak. And you see the replays here. It looked for a while like BDS would have it. A lot of draws came through early, but then we saw just that one ace, how powerful it is. Yeah. It negated the two wins that BDS had, because it's worth three wins. Yep. My voice is, is running out, Janik. We are running on fubes here. I mean, we are we're running on... just to get you the last game of the day, the five-game day. But I hope you're excited for it. At least the players are making, you know, everything they can to make it as understanding as possible here. Absolutely here, but they are not paying attention to how hard the casters are having it. Um, I feel like... Do you players, feel disrespected? I, I, feel I feel it's players, an honor to I, get I, the yeah, caster for games. I feel should, uh, should take the casters into Ooh. account when they play. Oh, Bren with another early mistake. This happened on pool as well, crashing the very first turns of the map. And this is maybe a problem with not getting enough warm up on it before it starts. Osak also almost bouncing out there, but keeping the car on the surface, though, losing a lot of time to Offy. And now he Offy has a point to lead to work with for the jump up here. This is one of the most important parts. Got to get good speed before the bobsleigh. Looks like Otak temporarily gains a lot to RL, but look at the speed before that next turn. They're going to be equal, and BDS have the chance of an ace here. If all goes well in the ending, Otak needs some great jumps. He also cannot miss a single turn here, but he's past the worst of it. Only the jumps remain. Only the jumps remain. And we have BDS looking to get that ace. Otak with a quick overtake. Is it gonna be enough to get up to second place? It is. Orel will be having less speed. It's gonna be down to this final jump. Is Otak gonna maintain that second? Orel going for the inside line. Might be able to overtake, Ooh. but not quite enough. They still get the two points though. Eight thousands in favor of KC. 
And these are the margins they need. Might not think it matters that much, but two to one is so much preferable to three to zero. You can, uh, you only lose one point, contrary to losing like a three point margin to your opponent. On to round two, BDS one round one. If you just joined, this is the final game of the day. Team BDS versus Kai Carmine Core. BDS is on three points. KC is on a single point. BDS trying to lock it out here, but it is KC's map choice. Track number five, round number two. Great start for KC as well. Passing both off the NRL. Before that jump up to the platform, the earlier you land, the more speed you can build. And if you keep gear five as well, it's just snowballing so much. Aurel makes a mistake. Off you now in between the two French players here, Otak and Bran. And now he's gonna be ahead actually before that icy wheels turn. Otak right by him though, willing to challenge for this. The splits are great, the pace is great as well. Could be a mid 110 here between these two players. They have to duke it out in the jumps. Otak getting to the jump first, but going very low, almost too low, but that's gonna gain him a lot of time against Offie, but Offie gets more speed and actually passes Otak before the last jump. Can Otak make anything happen here and put this round in KC's favor? Looks like Offie has it, but Otak's speed is barely enough by five, five thousandths of thousands a second. Five thousandths of a second. Incredible. I mean, the margins that the, these players are playing on, it's just so small. And that's three to three. They're, they're equalizing it. So how getting clutch as close. is Otak on this map, though? He denied the ace by eight thousands, and now he snipes the win by five thousands. Like, the stars are lighting for KC here, but it's only a three to three so far. They have seven more points to go to get to the 10. But if they make this three to two on maps, then if you're BDS, you're kind of getting scared. Like, what's happening? Could this be the reverse sweep? I mean, it is it is definitely possible. Oh, Brand, oh. a mistake there. Otak, you're going to have to clutch up once more. Bran not really finding the flow in the start here. But Otak has had two good rounds under his belt already. Looking for the third. But now, Afi is also in the mix. Uh, sorry, Aurel and Afi are in the mix. No, no, no mistakes from BDS. Oh, Otak with a beautiful turn there on the bobsleigh. That's going to push him ahead. Aurel getting a lot of Afi speed, mistake. though. Is this going to be enough? Afi with a mistake, that's gonna push Bren up to third place. And now Aurel is actually kind of worrying that if he makes a mistake, that's gonna be an ace for KC. So he's looking to at least maintain the second place. I think if I was- Oh, Tak missing the jump. That's gonna put him down to last probably with the time loss. Aurel will get first most likely here. Ooh. That could be the winning, uh, a winning round for EDS taking two points to the one of KC, five to four. And the map is again in their favor. But remember, this was picked by KC. And so far, Otak is displaying a lot of pace. Earlier today, he dropped a 110.37 and a 110.4. Yeah. So he has a lot of pace on this map that he showed earlier today. Looking to uh, to continue that. He is looking to continue that here. Five to four. Once again, it looks like their favor is towards Team BDS. But we've talked about this before. If you're very close to winning, sometimes the hardest part is just closing it out. We played a game of chess yesterday where it took Virtual a solid 15 minutes to... to, to <laughs> okay, that's get... over-exaggerating it. No, it is not. It took a solid 10 to 15 minutes to get a checkmate, even though I only had a king and a rook left. Yeah, but and I still got the checkmate. Thank you very much for adding that detail. Mm -hmm. Looks like I won the game of chess. I'm intellectually smarting. I'll pacing you <laughs> but so far in this round no team outpacing the other great segue as we go into the next part of the map here otak like once again displaying a lot of uh, pace on this map offy point two behind him just about and bren also getting very close to making this the ace 4k see the jumps will decide it offy has had some good lines here maybe able to overtake in the jump if he gets it good but bren gets it the best i think a lot of speed there Almost the ace still. Otak holding that first place. Offy going low, going early, landing early, but it's going to be a regular victory. And that's gonna equalize the score once again. Six to six. Otak has been a really uh, important piece for KC here on this map, huh? He's doing really well. He's doing extremely well on control and he's crashing less than in the previous game, which is what lost them the set too big. He's now more consistent. He still had, I think, one mistake earlier on, but. So far, very clean from Otak, and if he can keep that up, the balance is probably going to sway in KC's favor. More impressed with them than BDS in this map so far. Okay, picking sides is what the commentator is doing, as the other commentator is being professional and Im impartial, saying that KC There's and BDS no... are both of them playing incredible maps okay. here. Okay. There's no point being impartial. I want the reverse sweep. 
bring it, Casey. Let's put this to a game seven here and give us what we came to see. More Trackmania being played. Brad and Otak right now looking for the ace. If they go to nine to six, that could be so good for them. And I'm not partial when I'm saying this. I want more, Janik. You want more here. It does look like you're going to be able to get it because Otak and Bren are fighting for this ace, jumping up to nine points. Afi looks like he might be able to counter. He's jumping up to second place, trying to get over Bren here on first. Is it going to be another draw? It looks like it might be. Afi is maybe going to get first. Oh, that is so close. Otak and Bren getting second and third, but point one separating the top three players. Tension rises when you get to a 7-7 seven, seven score line. An ace ends the map on the spot. Either the entire game for BDS or for Carmine Corp to extend this potential of a reverse sweep. But a regular victory as well. Just, you know, you go to 8-9 to nine and anything can happen at that point. Anything could happen indeed. 7-7. Seven to seven. Any ace will lock down the match. KC, if they win, still have to win Ooh, two maps in a row. Look at that sort though. Otak gaining about two tenths, I think. Just right off, o Alfie the only one able to keep up, but that third place battle being fought between Bren and Aurel right now, going in the favor of Bren, getting more speed there. But oh, we can see that Alfie has overtaken Otak as well. So it's right about equal, all things considered. Now Bren losing important ground though, and that means Aurel is pushing closer to Otak. This is looking in BDS's favor at that score line. Afi and Aurel are actually looking like they are dangerous right now. Otak is the only thing standing between Team BDS and getting the victory here and closing off the match. If there's that's any mistake, jump. that's a very high jump. If Otak makes any mistake or if he does another high jump, Aurel could be pushing it. He does get a low jump. That looks beautiful. He maintains that Ooh. second place, almost getting overtaken in the end there. Aurel does keep third as well. So one point away is what Team BDS is. They're just one point away, but can Carmine Corp find anything here and extend the game? A respectable time from Offy there as well. That round of 59, really, really fast pace. And that puts some extra pressure on KC going into this, knowing they have to match that to win the round. Here we see the first jump, and this jump up the hill on control is so important. Otak had it beautiful. He went on land, tilting the car over the edge just like so, and Ooh. Alfie and him match equally there, equal on the split as well in that battle for first, and they both gain about 0.3 on one of their opponents. Here, Otak fighting with Afi. Bren is in the back. Ah, it's but, low. Oh, no, Otak. That can, could end the game. That could end the game. You need to see uh, a mistake from BDS here because there's yeah, because no other Yeah, because Bren has to come up to second place at the very, very least. And it looks like they know it. It looks like they know it at this point. Arel is driving safe lines here, trying to keep his car away from every wall. You can see he's not even going on the colored borders. He just wants to get these jumps clean and lock it in. You cannot lose three seconds. They have a surrender the five for first place here. They just want to get to the finish line and they, they will, will do it. it. The Cinderella story. The comeback will not happen, but Otak closing out in style with a new world record. A new world record from Otak, beating his old world record by almost point one. Impressive stuff from the French player. Otak, you know, he came in with the attack uh, and he tried to get the comeback, putting uh, his teammate in the backpack, but it did not quite, it did not quite work out for him. It did not quite work out on a stack, no cap. And now we're gonna see some replays, but guys, that was the fifth and final game for today. Long day of games, but I think it was a big, um, a big entertainment uh, to watch. I think nice. it was a great, great eSport day today. We saw five matches. We can take you guys through them once again, if you just tuned in or if you didn't catch them all. We had Solary playing versus Sinners. Solary won that match 4-2-0. Then KC played big, which was also a quite dominant game. I think it was 4-1 to one in favor of Big. It was. And then we had BDS playing against G1. So BDS and KC both played two t two times today. And BDS, their first game was against G1. And they lost that one 4-2 to two against G1. And then into the breach versus Alliance. Also a 4-1 to one victory. Yes. For Alliance. Yes. For Alliance against uh, ITB. And then we have KC, BDS, where we once again see a 4-1 to one in favor of BDS. But come on, the reverse sweep, Jaden. It should have happened. It, it would have been amazing. It would have been a Cinderella story, as you said. But unfortunately, BDS did hold it out. 
made sure that they could uh, get that final little clutch out, and they did it. A 9-10 to 10 in the ending, though, so it was very, very close. Um, but well played by BDS. Well played indeed. But guys, with that, we're gonna let our production take some rest. We're gonna take some rest ourselves. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow is console release. It's console release tomorrow! Okay, waking up the neighborhood. Console so, release tomorrow. Console release tomorrow. It's gotta be an extra special day, so... If you're a PlayStation player, Xbox player, you can get the game for yep. free. Or you can also immediately get standard access and play a couple today. I'm hoping it's a big one tomorrow. Couple today on console. So, it's gonna be fun. Of course, so both we'll your boys you are gonna there. be uh, be live. I'll be taking over the day uh, during the daytime. I'll be live from 10:30 a.m. throughout the day, and then Virtual will be taking you on a tour of the cup of the day tomorrow, which I think is gonna be some very interesting maps, specifically made for the new console Hopefully players. Hopefully, it's not that hard. You know, I don't want them to be playing like a crazy ice map or something. We'll so, see. But guys, thank you so much for watching today. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. is the console release, right? Yes, 10 a.m. is the console release. 10.30 a.m. is when I'm going to be there live with you guys. And then you're going to be here at 5, I think, around. Yeah, 5 to 6 around. We'll see you guys. So we'll see you guys then. Have a great day. Thank you for watching the eSport. Sleep well. Bye-bye, guys. Good night. Take care.